So hello everybody and welcome back to Silverstone and welcome back to the MSVR racing meeting here at uh, here at Silverstone. We've already seen a little bit of action this morning. That was the one hour qualifying session for the Enduro KA series. Um, out in a few moments time we'll see the uh, sec uh, the 10th race of the weekend. The uh, Bernie's V8 and Historic Outlaws come out on circuit and we've got some brilliant pictures showing the fabulous BRDC clubhouse. Of course Silverstone, the home of the BRDC. Joining uh, me in the commentary box this weekend we we have Ian Titchmarsh, we've got um, uh, Chris Dawes down in the pit lane, but Ian, how are you? I'm pretty good, thank you very much. Yes, uh, Jack, so we're looking forward to another great day's racing. Yesterday was really good. We've got some of the races uh, continuing, as it were, from yesterday. They're having their second or one or two cases, third races. Uh, we had some very good stuff racing in some nice weather as well. The rain seems to have kept away. And we'll yeah. hopefully do so for the rain whole of today. Yeah, hopefully the uh, the rain will stay away as we have been, as you say, in blessed with some uh, sunshine. Hopefully we will be able to hear from Chris Dawes uh, throughout this week, and I can see him with his uh, with his mic in hand. So, Chris, are you down there? I am. I am. Good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to what is a beautifully sunny day. But I have to tell you guys that tucked up safely in your commentary box up there, it's fresh down here. It is a biting wind that we've got out here. Uh, I know, I, I can sense the sympathy from the you there, Ian. <laughs> I'm glad, it's, obviously, it's very strong. But absolutely, yes, yeah, yes. yes. <laughs> uh, at least I won't lose any more hair in the, in the, in the strong wind. But, uh, yes, it's fresh, but it's going to be busy, isn't it? This morning, that yes. looks likely to be uh, the post-race interviews of the, uh, the sprint races that we've got. But this afternoon, for the five-hour Enduro KA, I'll be diving in and out and grabbing updates driver interviews, team boss interviews. I'll be presenting the Dagenham uh, Dustbin Award mid-race as well to uh, whoever the marshals pick for that particular award. And basically just enjoying the camaraderie down here. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it should be, uh, should be a good day. What we do have ready for out on circuit is the Bernie's V8 and the Historic Outlaws. So they're just working their way out of the assembly area onto the grid and they will line up as follows. Car number 33, Kevin Borland will be on pole position behind the wheel of his um, Chevrolet NASCAR. He has uh, Guy Carter alongside, so 33 and 761 on row one. Row two of the grid is made up of Chris Tilley and uh, Simeon uh, Chodosh, or Kodosh, uh, I think we decided on, which is actually Adam Kodosh, I think, this weekend. It, uh, is. it is now. It, it is was now. Simeon yesterday, yes. so car number 90 and treble nine on row number two. Clive Leatherby and Bill Thompson make up row number three, 58 and 25, and Matt Holborn has Peter Samuels for company on row number four, car number 56 and car number 87. Matty Smith is alongside uh, Stuart Robb on row number five of the grid, car 80 and car 177. And it's uh, on to row six of Chad Donner and Phil Walker, car 16 and car 83. Matt Snowball and Martin Reynolds are on row number seven, car 48 and car 27. Lining up in 15th place is Stephen Wiggins and 16th is Tom Brooks, so 99 and 77. On row number nine of the grid, we've got the 151 of Jason Andrews and car 47 of Grant Thompson, 151 and 47. And on row number 10 of the grid, we've got the 302 of Simon Roos and 74, Peter Carter. Row 11 of the grid is Gary Lapidus and Bruce Carter, car 11 and car 575. And on the 12th row of the grid, the 12th and final row, is 427, Darren Smith, and uh, car number 6, that being Bradley Jones Chapman. So we've got a, a, a fairly big grid, lots of power, and um, I think I was, I was trying to figure it out in the... Um, in, in the paddock yesterday evening we must be getting on towards what 24 cars and we average what anywhere between sort of 100 and maybe 500 horsepower yes. so we've got to be getting on 10,000 horsepower 12,000 horsepower on the grid now just to explain the grid comprises the top 10 finishers from yesterday reversed which means that Stuart Robb who was a dominant winner yesterday is the question really is how long is it going to take Stuart to get to the lead of this race because he's starting mid-grid because as I say the top 10 are reversed but Stuart Robb uh, down from Scotland in his TVR very very impressive performance yesterday he so, sort of all the other TVR Tuskers so there were some well-driven TVR Tuskers just weren't in the same league as this car so it's one to keep an eye on 177 starting on the fifth row with alongside him uh, is number 80 and that's Matthew Smith with another sort of uh, TVR not a Tusk but one of the Shamiras we've got three of those is it, or two, two of those entered but the, some of the other big American cars uh, that of course the TVR is being British built in Blackpool uh, we've got some MGs running in the class GB as well but in the uh, highly modified American V8s we've got some Chevrolet Corvettes in the 
a modified V8. So we've got the AMC Javelins, misspelled in the program. Javelin, like the normal thing that you throw at people. Uh, we've got a Boss Mustang, uh, a sh the Chevrolet NASCAR that's starting this race in pole position, a Ford Maverick, a P the Plymouth Cuda, a spectacular looking car, the Matt Snowball car. So uh, uh, quite a collection of TVRs as well. This, this series, which has been developed over the last few years by Bernie Kodosh, hence the Bernie Bernie's V8 and Historic Outlaws uh, and his son Simeon uh, and as Jack has told us it's uh, Adam uh, Kodosh who'll be driving car 999 today it's his brother Simeon who was driving the car yesterday so uh, it bodes well it's a rolling start isn't yes. it Jack so yeah, they'll be coming shortly into our site I think yeah we have already lost one as well I think it's oh. Tim Brooke in his Chevrolet Corvette already pushed behind the pit wall as right. that car stalled away from the line and the safety car is still out and presumably that's two warming up laps that we will be treated to so everybody goes rumbling by, uh, rumbling by me Kevin Holland still leading the, uh, the field through let's just have a quick look I think Yes, that looks like Tim Brook that we are potentially missing, unfortunately. Right. So the car is back in the pit lane, and the brilliant Silverstone Marshals and the Orange Army have got that car pushed behind the pit wall already. I think um, we've used one or two other cars for the back of the grid. Me, Grant Thompson that we've uh, missed. I didn't think... Uh, I thought he was slightly further up the order, um, but yeah, Grant Thompson, unfortunately, we've missed. So car number 47, starting on the uh, outside of row number 9, unfortunately, we're playing a part in this race. Now, Gary Lapidus in number 11, he was going really well at the start of yesterday's race, had some sort of problem that brought about his retirement before the end, hence he starts 21st on the grid on the 11th row. But it's a spectacular-looking Chevrolet call, that Corvette, that... I think one of my favourite cars in the race, uh, number 11, starting on row 11, and certainly one to keep an eye on. Yeah, and of course, um, the uh, AMC Javelin, I don't think it's gone out there, unfortunately, car number six. It, it. it says he was, um, uh, Bradley Jones Chapman was supposed to be starting on the back row of the grid, but having uh, spoken to Alex Savile, one of the uh, mechanics there, um, he said that that car, it's um, it's done its head gasket, but then also sort of right. torched the, the, the piston as well. So it's, it's potentially a full engine rebuild, unfortunately, for that car, which I'd imagine on an AMC Javelin um, is quite the job. Yeah, so there the used to be a cha David Howes, I think, was the guy who used to race one in the British Saloon Car Championship here uh, back in the 1970s. Uh, but you don't see many of them. The American Motors Corporation, they used to build the Nash car and the Hudson, uh, but uh, the AMC was the, almost the last attempt at building a car to rival Chevrolets and Fords, but uh, I'm afraid they didn't last very long, but it's a, it's a great car if it was out, but we won't be by the sound of things. No, lights out on the safety car, so we will be going racing this time. It's all eyes on Kevin Borland behind the wheel of his Chevrolet NASCAR, just working his way through Luffield, and he's got the quick right at Woodcuts, and then he can lead yeah. the field away. So everybody's being almost tightly congested up in the field. Now it's over to Kevin Borland to control that pace at the front of the order. His eyes will be on the red lights on the, the Silverstone gantry. So here they come through Woodcut now and everyone's eager to get going. The red lights are still on. Kevin Borland on the inside. Lights out. Blast off. We go racing for the first time here at Silverstone today. And who's going to arrive at turn one first? Will it be Kevin Borland? Will it be Guy Carter all the way around the outside? Kevin Borland remains in the lead, followed then by Guy Carter. Adam Kodosh has held on to, well, he's gone up a place. He's up to third place at the moment but he's got to watch his inside as Chris Tilly is trying to open the door on the run up towards Maggots and Beckett on the brakes they go Kevin Borland no longer in the lead Guy Carter brilliant start into the lead of the race Chris Tilly like I said he's got to watch his inside or Adam Kodosh has got to watch his inside yeah Chris Tilly later on the brakes up into third and uh, Gary Lapidus really made our commentary box tremble as he thundered past at the back of the grid uh, and so watch number 11 and see how many places he can gain in the uh, first few laps and also of course the one to keep an eye on number 177 Stuart Robb as the cars make their way uh, through Brooklands up to Luffield on their first lap it's a 20 minute race yesterday they got through 19 laps in their 20 minutes was there a safety car I'm sure there was so uh, hopefully there won't be but we've got one of the Chevrolet Corvettes getting away at the moment there's a great uh, sight as well the early Cor Corvette uh, number 90 of Chris Tilly. So as they come through at the end of the lap, Chris Tilly it is who leads from Guy Carter, Matt Holborn in third place, uh, and Stuart Robb is already up into seventh place, number 177. Yeah, he's really starting to uh, 
uh, push forward is Stewart. He was very quick yesterday. Such a character to chat to um, after the race as well. Yes. On the brakes goes Chris Tilly, and he's slowly trying to extend that margin. But at the moment, I think he's got a couple of cars starting to edge up behind him. I believe we've got Chris down in the pit lane. Yeah, just quickly bringing you an update on the uh, 47 Grant Thompson Chevrolet Corvette that's uh, in the pits here. Uh, it's an electrical issue. The kill switch is basically killed. Uh, so they're and they're looking very confused on working out they can unkill the engine. So that gives you the update on Grant. Thanks for that, Chris. Yes, we've got a shot of the uh, number 47 car there on the screen. Uh, and hopefully that car will be able to rejoin the race, albeit it'll be out of the running now, but we should have the leaders coming through, yes. And uh, a challenge being mounted for the lead there, the Gulf livery TBR, number 56, and Matt Holborn in second place, challenging for the lead. Uh, and Stuart Robb is now fourth in his TVR, so Stuart Robb in fourth place. In third place is number 25, which is the Bill Thompson TVR Tuscan, which yesterday started from the back and worked its way through to finish in the fifth place, worked its way through to the back and went to finish fifth. Can he do better than that today? No, Stuart Robb, having crossed the line in fourth uh -oh. place, has already managed to work his way through and past car number 25, that being Bill Thompson. He set the fastest lap of the race last time through with 1 minute 5.890. And now we're seeing um, Matt Holborn really apply that pressure onto Chris Tilly. He's looking to the inside, but to the inside of everybody is Stuart Robb late on the brakes, diving up the inside too for the price of one on the way to Brooklands. And he's back into the lead of the race. Brilliant move from Stuart Robb. Chris Tilly runs slightly deep on the brakes. That allows Matt Holborn to look all the way around the outside. And it's gone from bad to worse for Chris Tilly. He started this lap in the lead and he's right the way down to third and under pressure already. Stuart Robb just need a different lead really because he's picked his way through the pack through the what nine cars started ahead of him on the grid. He's now in the lead at the end of the third lap uh, and it's back to how it was yesterday. Absolutely so. Stuart Robb doing a brilliant job and having started in 10th place with this top 10 reverse grid in less than four minutes, he's into the lead of the race. So brilliant work from Stuart Robb. He will just try and extend that margin ever more. Chris Tilly on the run through Magnus and Beckett. He is coming under more and more pressure from Bill Thompson. He's all over the tail behind the wheel of his red TVR Tuscan. So he's starting to put up for the final step on the overall podium. Well, having taught Stuart Robb into the lead, the now the next one to be watching out for is Gary Lapid in the number 11 Corvette. So he started right at the back as he now is up into eighth place. How far can we get him up the order? Yeah, I fear there are still uh, a lot more positions to come for Gary Lapidus. Chris Tilly still under more and more pressure now from Bill Thompson. Underneath our commentary box in a few moments time should come Stuart Robb. Here he comes thundering on to the uh, old start finish straight over the line as well. Still giving chases. Matt Holborn, Chris Tilly, yes, under pressure from Bill Thompson. Where of uh, Gary Lapidus? He should break the beam in a few moments time. There he goes. Still in eighth place, but only, what, eight tenths of a second up the road is car number 80, that being in the hands of Matty Smith. Now, uh, 99, as he gained a place on that, that's Steve Williams with his TPR Shamira. Uh, so that's into ninth, into tenth place. But Stuart Robb's lead at the end of that fourth lap uh, already has gone up to nearly two seconds. Uh, Matt Holborn in second place in that uh, very attractively livery car. Those, uh, not because the car's got any connection with Gulf, but it's uh, in the old Gulf racing li livery, Gulf racing livery of the 1960s when the GT40s won Le Mans a couple of times amongst other races. So yes, Stuart Robb leading, completes his fifth lap. There's Matt Holborn in second place. He must feel frustrated. What can he do? Nothing. He can't stay with Stuart Robb. He's just so quick. And there is the Chris Tilly Chevrolet Camaro through number 90 in third place. Ted Lapidus, has he gained a place on that? No, he's kind of plateaued, hasn't he, in eighth place? He has indeed. He's got to that point where he's not exactly digging time away. Only, what, four tenths gained on the lap prior. And with all of the battling that's going on uh, into the pit lane, unfortunately, we've got car number 16. That's Chad Donner. We uh, saw Chad yesterday have issues with that car, and it's looking rather smoky indeed, unfortunately. So the mechanics from Unique Classics will be waiting to receive him. 
but with all of the battling that's going on, especially, specifically between Chris Tilley and Brad Thompson, that's just allowing the cars behind to slowly start to edge up. Namely, the 761 of Guy Carter, he's not far away, but he's also trying to run away from Matty Smith. Of course, he finished second yesterday behind the wheel of his uh, TBR Chimera, and we've got issues for Chris Tilley, unfortunately. He was going oh so, so well in third place. But working his way through Luffield now, he's dropping down the order very wide on the exit uh, for Luffield. Yes. This guy can't be set. We've got to keep an eye on him. But a small mistake like that, that's cost him a position. And then he's immediately back under pressure as well from the number 87 MGB V8 Roadster of Peter Samuels. Yeah, we used to call that Herbert. Oh, spin there for number 25. That's the TBR of Bill Thompson. So Bill Thompson's hard work all been undone. With the we didn't see the very beginning but we've seen the end result and then you may have made contact with the barrier Chris yeah I've got uh, Chad Donner down here in the number 16 Chad what, what's the problem that uh, looked quite smoky when you first arrived yeah sadly uh, it sprung a power steering fluid leak so uh, yeah no power steering and uh, slippery front tires so uh, in, in a big heavy car exactly yeah <laughs> it was it's a handful at best of time so um, yeah sadly had to retire because I was enjoying that yeah. I, I mean, obviously that's it for this weekend, but do you know if that's a, is that a big deal to get sorted? No, it should have been nothing uh, too dramatic. Uh, in worst case, a new power steering pump. So, yeah, just really disappointing. Thanks for the update, Chad. Appreciate it. Of course, a shame for that Ford Mustang. I was uh, reliably informed by the boss man of the uh, stream, Chris Moorcroft, that it is the 60th anniversary of the Mustang, and this Mustang has retired. Yeah, so, so unfortunate as well. Um, because the Unique Classics uh, team have had a lot of work to do throughout this uh, throughout this weekend. Obviously, with car number 25 coming off, that car has not been struck back into life because I can still see it perched up against the barrier, unfortunately. So I don't think we'll see anything more of Bill Thompson. He was going well. I think he inherited third place because, of course, we ended up yeah. with Chris Tilley in the pit lane. So I don't think we'll see anything further from that car and that means cops corner is covered by localized yellow flags the brilliant marshals are already there what of the lead um, it is still well and truly being led by Stuart Robb he still has the fastest lap of the race which he's improved upon since we last mentioned a 1 minute 2.105 and out of the car at turn number one is Bill Thompson so with yellow flags still being waved everyone's got to lift off um, on the run through turn one but what the, what has happened I'd say the lead's got to be closer turn one is cops what did I say turn one Turn one is Cops Corner, indeed. Um, so, um, car number 56, the driver in second place at the moment, Matt Holden, he's getting closer. 1.3 seconds now away from Stuart Robb, and of course, that might not rub the right way with race control if he is taking time out of the leader with, um, like you say, Cops Corner covered under localised yellows. Yeah, so the uh, gap has come down to 1.3 seconds between Stuart Robb and Matt Holden. Cars, therefore, having to ease their pace somewhat, although it's, it's only localised, as Jack is saying, it's only localised yellows. So there's Ted Lapidus through. He's now in fifth place. Helped by Bill Thompson's demise. There we are. That's uh, that uh, Corvette we've been going on about. Not that, though. That's the uh, TBR behind it, but the one just ahead, number 11, Ted Lapidus. It's a car that looks to be on the brink of uh, control all the time. It's a difficult car. Now, yeah, the lead, Jack, what have you spotted? Yeah, the lead gap's now within a second. It's uh, almost within three quarters of a second because Matt Holborn is really starting to close up on, uh, on Stuart Robb. Further down the order, we've got car number 11, the guy you were keeping an eye on, Gary Lapidus, behind the wheel of his Chevrolet Corvette. And who's that going over the line? Rather smoky. That looked like the number 83 of Phil Walker in his MGB yeah, Roadster. Yeah, I was going to say it's an MGB. Yeah, definitely. in his, uh, at his local circuit as well. He's only from down the road in Milton Keynes. Um, that car isn't looking too healthy indeed. The lead gap, we'd expect it to, uh, we expect to keep seeing it come down. But Gary Lapidus up to fourth place and only six tenths of a second behind car number 80, that being Matty Smith. We may see a podium on the cars here for Gary Lapid. She said keep an eye on him. Yeah. Well, he was going very well in the early stages of yesterday's race. He was the only one who, who could anywhere near Stuart Robb in the early stages. Then the car faded away and eventually retired. He started this race from the 11th row of the grid. So to be where he is is, is uh, a very impressive performance. There's uh, an early Ford Mustang, number 302 on screen. 
the lead margin has come down ever more and in the air now is Bill Thompson's car. Oh just getting very uh, undignified. Yeah, being uh, uh, carefully taken behind the Armco barrier into a, a place of safety. Over the line in a few moments time, we will see a rather less smoky, for, for lack of a better term, um, that being uh, Phil Maverick. Walker. Okay. Yeah, and so, the Maverick, Ford so Maverick just ahead of him. Ford Maverick, as you say, yeah, just, uh, just ahead of him, that being Bruce Carter. So uh, Phil Walker, not quite as smoky as we saw him last time through, but almost within three quarters of a second now, is kind of a 56 of Matt Holden. He's really starting to close up on Stuart Rom. We should see the pair of them appear yeah. on the exit of Tur on the exit of Woodcut. Now the lead gap's come out this time. I reckon it's over a second. I, I just think that Stuart Rob was uh, easing his pace really to look after the car, knowing that nothing much could change under the uh, localized yellows. He will begin to pull away again. He certainly has the pace, unless there's something not quite right with the car. But it's a beautifully turned out car, as most of these cars are. In fact, you could say all the cars are. They is lapping another car, going into Beckett's. And beginning, I think, Jack, to drive away now again from Matt Holborn. Yeah, that gap, the lead gap now almost up to 1.6 seconds. So a much quicker lap last time through from uh, Stuart Robb. Localised yellow still being covered at Cops Corner, hopefully. Um, they will be retrieved in a few moments time and smoking very slightly again unfortunately is phil walker so there may still be more twists in the say twists in the tail in terms of that car we did see the plymouth cuda being lapsed that's matt snowball fabulous looking car definitely yes. one of my favorites yes a an mgb uh, v8 smoking is not an unusual sight <laughs> no no it's not to, uh, f yeah, not necessarily something that you, uh, you you take by surprise as much anymore. Um, but Peter Carter, he's still going well as well. Car number 74, whereabouts is he? Just flashed up. Great, that B15. What, what did you spot there? Uh, don't, I just uh, on, talking about it on the screen. 151 Jason Andrews with the Ford Shelby Mustang GT350, uh, which is a, a rare car, but uh, a very special car. That another of Carol Shelby, the late Carol Shelby's creations after the Cobra. Uh, uh, Ford asked him to come up with another uh, supercar, and that was the result, the GT350 Mustang. You can see diving on the brakes there. That was uh, the number 58 machine of Clive, Clive Leatherby um, in his TV Tusk, and he hit the brakes so hard it was squirming, yeah. just trying to get the car straightened up on the running towards uh, Maggots and Beckett's. So what do we have? Gary Lafford is still P4, 1.3 seconds away from um, Matt Smith uh, to get on the, to the overall podium. He's got a bit of work to do. But there's all there's a load of 1.3 second gaps, aren't there, between uh, third and fourth, fourth and fifth, and fifth and sixth. Uh, so any of those could change before the end. But the end is just under six minutes away. It is indeed. We've seen Stuart Rob back over the line this time. It's almost three seconds clear of car number 56, Matt Holborn. And we get uh, car number 80 over the line, that's Matthew Smith. Still sat there in third place. He's being hunted down by Gary Lapidus. 2.2 seconds the margin now. Gary Lapidus, uh, in fact, he may start to come under pressure. That's from car number 58 in the hands of Clive Leatherby. We knew he was pushing hard yeah. because I said he was squirming away on the brakes. And clearly so, he's only four tenths away from working his way even further in towards that top five. Yeah, I just uh, hope that the, this, the way that this series has developed over the last few years, this can be sustained because it really is a spectacular. That, that it's difficult to think of a series that has so many spectacular looking cars that make not just looking, but sound great as well. Uh, and whether it's Silverstone, it brings more of them out. But it would be great to see these cars supporting British GT or British Touring Car Championship races. It would be fabulous, and I think, um, yeah, you, you definitely wouldn't be able to miss them with the noise that, that some of them make. I'm awaiting the arrival of Matthew Smith. He should just be working his way over the line in a few moments' time. Into the pit lane, unfortunately, we do have uh, car number 83. That's Phil Walker. We said the car was getting smokier yeah. and smokier as the race wears on, so hopefully Chris Dawes can shine some light on what's going on there. Gary Lapidus is indeed under pressure from car number 58, that being... Uh, Clive Leatherby, the gap is still under half a second. I've, I've got a feeling what P5, P4 will slowly start to change over the final four and a bit minutes still to go. There's Phil Walker's MTV we saw going down the pit lane uh, and uh, the smoke has stopped, as James Suntor used to say in his commentary, which when you start worrying when the smoking stops. <laughs> it means there's nothing left in it. it, it smoking, yeah. Exactly, yes. 
So the lead that Stuart Robb had last time through was going up again to four or five seconds. He's just done a new fastest lap, Jack spotted. What's that? One minute, 2.098. At the moment, nobody's even in the 103. So to be in the 102, Stuart Robb has clearly decided yeah. he's, he's He's given up looking after the tyres. It's the last race of the weekend for him. He's got three and a half minutes, so he's just going as quick as he can at the moment. And 1 minute 2.098 has extended that lead margin out to eight seconds now. Stuart Robb is clear of Matt Holden. Matthew Smith has indeed got in front, uh, or Matthew Smith in third place is indeed uh, pulling away from Gary Lapidus, yes. who in turn is falling into the clutches ever more now of Clive Leatherby. The gap within four tenths of a second, three and three quarter tenths of a second now on screen heading in towards Maggots and Beckers. We've got a brilliant battle uh, showcasing. Yeah. One of those being Clive Leatherby, desperate to try and pick his way through the traffic, and it's just not quite worked for him. I'd say he's lost a bit of time on this lap. That fastest lap by Stuart Robb is quicker than his fastest lap yesterday, which was done on the second lap when he was obviously the lead of the race and had nobody in front of him, but now he's in traffic most of the time. Uh, yesterday he did a 12.528. Today that lap is a 12.166, his fastest lap. Yeah, so going quicker evermore is Stuart Robb over the line in a few moments time we will see the battle that we've been watching on so closely and it's closer than ever at the moment because Gary Lapidus is indeed under pressure from Clive Leatherby and they go over the line nose to tail it was three and three quarter seconds last time through they break the beam this time it's three and a quarter tenths of a second pardon me so three and a quarter tenths of a second separate um, Clive Leatherby from Gary Lapidus unfortunately we've got a car pointing towards the barrier that's the number 99 of Steve Wiggins the man from Suffolk in his TVR Chimera I don't think that will play any further part in this race it didn't look like a, a mistake that got him there it looked like a mechanical issue so there that glorious mighty muscular stingray Corvette in the hands of Gary Lapidus still hanging on in front of the traditional British TVR sports car as another one of them is pulled and pushed uh, out of harm's way behind the barriers. So Stuart Robb's lead was something like 11 seconds, I think. We, we were concerned whilst we had that uh, localised yellow flag that his lead had been eroded totally and he was in trouble, but he wasn't at all. He's just uh, now 13.2 seconds clear. We've got one and a half minutes to go, so the lap he started plus one more, I would say. Yeah, and the battle we've been watching is getting closer and closer. This time it may have come out just a, a small... A small while as they had more localized yellows heading down the Wellington straight and yes it's almost back up to half a second now which isn't exactly a massive amount that could all be closed up in the braking zone at the moment but uh, Clive Leatherby he's getting closer he's getting closer he's picking his way through traffic but I just don't think he's got enough to work his way through and past uh, Gary Lapidus because in turn he's now coming under pressure is um, Clive Leatherby that's from the car behind car number 87 Peter Samuels he finished third yesterday he might not make his way onto the podium today but now we might start to see the positions change working down the Wellington straight one car going one side one car going the other Sam Every just holds the car level in the middle he's the lapped car between the two of them but Clive Leatherby was on what would be the outside it will be um, Gary Lapidus on what would be the inside we've got 30 seconds remaining so Stuart Robb has gone on to what will be his final lap of the race as but he's getting super Matt close Holden. as has Matt Holden now 14.7 seconds behind the, uh, the dominant winner of both races well he's not taking the checkered flag yet in this one but he was dominant yesterday and that Jack it's, it's, you've been talking about it that great battle that, that, that Chevrolet Corvette is a wonder machine it really is, and it's just about uh, keeping Clive Leatherby behind at the moment. But for the final time through Brooklands in towards Luffield goes Stuart Robb. Another dominating performance yeah. from him. He, he had his lead whittled down to pretty much absolutely nothing. But since the localised yellows cleared themselves up, he got his head down and will come across the line to take another win here at Silverstone. What a brilliant race it's been from Stuart yeah. Robb. He really knows how to handle that car and chased for a short while, but unfortunately just slightly lost touch towards the tail end of the race. Will be Matt Holben. He should appear coming out of Woodcut in a few moments' time. But Stuart Robb, he's got a lot to be proud of this weekend and it will make the long drive slightly shorter, I fear, on his way back up to Scotland. Yes, uh, really delighted with that, acknowledging the marshals and spectators as well as he uh, goes down round on his slowing down lap and shortly we'll have a chance to uh, hear from him via Chris Dawes in the pit lane and across the line there go the go on 
Go on, Jack. Yeah, so Gary Lapidus on the final lap. I said he looked like he had enough to keep Clive Leatherby behind, but unfortunately not. Clive Leatherby has worked his way up into fourth place. Gary Lapidus, after what was a brilliant performance from him, yeah. unfortunately, he has to settle for the final spot in the top five. So it was super, super close. Stuart Robb crossed the line and took the win here at Silverstone. It was car number 56 that ended up finishing in second place. That, of course, being Matt Holborn. Matt Smith finished in third place. Clive Leatherby crossed the line to finish in fourth. And it was Gary Lapidus uh, breaking the beam at the end of the race to finish in fourth. Fifth, Car number 87, Peter Samuels finished in sixth place, followed then by the 761. That's uh, Guy Carter. We saw little bits of him dotted throughout the race, finishing in seventh place. The uh, treble nine of Adam Chodosh, or Adam Kodosh, pardon me, finished in what was eighth place. And it was the 48th, I think, um, a joint favourite of both of us. Ian Matt Snowball in his Plymouth Cuda finished in ninth place and rounding out the top ten was car number 77, that being Tim Brooks. So another brilliant race from the Bernies V8s. And unfortunately, that's the last we're going to see of them this weekend. Yeah, G uh, Gary Lapidus did, although he lost a place overall on, the, on that last lap, he still won the class, the uh, Class M for the modified American, or as it says in the programme, American-American V8s, as opposed to <laughs> <laughs> yeah. European-American v <laughs> yeah. uh, Anyway, Stuart Robb w wins by 17.6 seconds from Matt Holden, Holborn uh, and... Jack gave you the rundown of the, the top 10 overall, but that uh, class win for, well, which is your favorite car? Um, I'm gonna have to give it to the Plymouth Cuda of my snowball. Yeah, it's a, it's a close run thing, but I I'm, no, I'd go to Gary Lapidus' car. Uh, I, I just think those cars are brilliant and, and reminiscent of, uh, of Le Mans, as indeed of the Chevrolet Corvettes, but uh, the uh, later yellow Chevrolet Corvettes. Anyway, Chris is down there. Uh, with successful drivers gathering around him. Lurking in the background there is the Gary Lapidus car. Yeah, and I think joined down there. Another one of my favourites is car number 80. You can see it in the background there. That's Matthew Smith in, with his uh, TVR Chimera. It, it looks, it, it's almost like the um, uh, one, uh, an old VW Polo. I think they did it in a, in a multicolored livery. It did have a it did have a name. I can't exactly remember the colour scheme, but it sounds fabulous. It almost sounds reminiscent of a um, an Australian V8 supercar. I think I can see Chris down there working his way towards the drivers, mic in hand. So hopefully we can hear from some of our uh, winning drivers. Chris. Uh, yeah, not what I was expecting. I was expecting top three, but we don't have uh, the the full top three because uh, Matt Holborn's carried on down. But we do have the uh, the outright winner, Stuart Rob. Stuart, <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> we both have that smirk going, that was not quite as straightforward as we've seen so far yesterday. No, it wasn't. It was um, yellow flags for the main issue. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was, uh, there was a car went off in the cops there, so we had to sort of hold the speed going past it and it got a wee bit exciting for a stage there. I did, I did wonder if Matt was going to catch me, but uh, fortunately I was able to hold him. I mean, uh, amazing, amazing performance. I mean, you seem to be at, at one with this car. I mean, back in the day, these TBR Tuscan Challenge cars were brute and, and, and hard to control. What's different about them today? Not much. <laughs> the, these times that this car does is more or less what they were doing. Really? Yeah. No, on slicks. This, these are on road tyres, but we would be doing maybe 158, 159s on slicks here. Wow. No, no uh, 58, 59 uh, in slicks. But uh, the cars are, this is almost an identical, well, it is one. This was Phil Keane's car in period. Oh, wow. wow. So Phil uh, did all right. Yeah, yes, he's, he's kind of got a career now, hasn't he? He's done, he's done all right. Are they still as much fun to drive? Oh, yes. Um, the, the Tuscan gave the impression of being lurid, and it was because it was the way they were, the drivers drove them. But inside the car, it doesn't feel lurid. You feel really? as though, you know, no, it looks lurid, yeah. but it doesn't feel it in the car. Because Absolutely. I think it's to do with the balance. It's almost 50-50 weight, believe it or not, front to back. Yeah. And they're 850 kilo, so they're going to go. <laughs> <laughs> they certainly do. They still, I mean, keep bringing them out. We love it. Listen, well done. It's been a, a good opening weekend. Yeah, thank you very much. Well done. So there you go. Uh, we'll just uh, pause for a minute because Matt Smith, who's there here in this uh, number 80, TV Camara, third overall, but it means he does win the uh, the GB class. Matt, I mean, yeah. yeah, congratulations. I mean, it's it's difficult to miss your car, isn't it? Yeah, I couldn't decide what colour to go for, so 
you just whatever's there. It's synonymous, though. It's synonymous. I mean, congratulations. Uh, it, you know, a little bit different to obviously the Tuscan Challenge. I mean, speak to us about that car. What's that like to drive? It's a TVR Chimera road car. I brought it off eBay and built it into a race car. Wow! And it punches a little bit above its weight. It does, which, I mean, you have to take credit for that one then. I mean, it, it, it's been a good weekend for you. How was that race? It was just brilliant. It's the same as yesterday. I, I got to where I believed I should be on the grid and then just had to keep pushing, but not so hard that I lost the car. And it was just, I just so wanted to, to be on the podium again. So, yes. Hence the big smile. Absolutely. Um, but I would like to say Bernie's V8s, uh, Bernie, Simeon, and Adam, they put on a great weekend. Barbecues, they really look after us. It's so much fun. You can see, we all, we're all mates. I mean, most of us are just middle-aged guys, massaging a racing ego, and we just come and have some fun. But a big shout out to Bernie's. If anybody's got a V8, come and join us. It's such a laugh. I, I agree. I'll be back with you at the American Speed Fest leading the comms team down there, so I look forward to it. Well done, Matt. Thank you. Uh, very quickly, because what have we got here? We've got the, uh, the 58 car. I've lost, that. I've lost track, so uh, Clive Leatherby, Clive, I've lost where you finished, if I'm honest, because it's got disappeared. Have I. <laughs> so let's just go. How did that feel out there in Third. this brute of a car? Listen, I, I packed... That's a bit loud, that squeaker. I packed it in last year, uh, had enough. Uh, and Jason Andrews and Bernie and his team come back, come back, and brilliant. Thank them. Fantastic job. Well done, Clive. Congratulations. Uh, guys, back to you in the commentary Can box. Can you get a word with Ted Lappett? With, uh, oh. Yeah. Gary Lappet or something with his... Uh, Garrett, where's he gone? The car's here, but I can't see a driver. Did you see get where's he's where's... Oh, he's gone up, so the answer's okay. no. <laughs> uh, okay, right. Okay, we move on then to just... Uh, great to hear from Stuart Robb about his car and its history. So, Jack, we've got a grid lined up, ready. Off they go on their green flag lap. Over to you for the Clubman Sports Prototypes. Yeah, Clubman Sports Prototypes out on circuit, on, heading onto their green flag warming up lap. So it'll be Ben Mallet lining up on pole position with Clive Wood alongside, 55 and 50 on row number one. Stephen Collier lines up alongside Steve Dickens on row number two, 32 and seven. The 66 of Adrian Lester has the 24 of Mike Lane for company on row three. Row four is made up of the 53 of Will Freeman and the number 12 of Tom Cabanda. Car number 15 of Adrian Holy has Maurice Hart for company on row 5, 15 and 76. Car 5 of Neil Chapman lines up alongside Tom Muirhead, car number 58. Uh, Lee Parks and Roger Watson make up row 7, 74 and 52. Then it's Barry Webb and Mike Upton on row 8, it was a grid 54 and 40. Pippa Tanner Wood, hopefully that car's back running again, uh, will line up in 17th place with Peter Begley lining up alongside 42 and 22. The driver I'm going to keep my eye on, Jared Lester, we saw that car Unfortunately, four foul of some mechanical issues in the early stages of this weekend. Car number 68 starting in 19th place. Keep an eye on Jared for carving his way up through the order. Alan Davenport lines up alongside him. Car 68 and 11 on row number 10 of the grid. Um, and the 11th and final row of the grid is made up of car 17, Alan Cook, and the 47 of Graham Wilson. But for me, Jared Lester, he's the guy we need to be keeping an eye on. He's been very quick uh, in uh, seasons previous. Hopefully that car's all rebuilt and mechanical woes have been sort of ironed out. I think he could be carving his way up through the order. 17, Alan Cook is the other one to watch from the back because he's driving the X-Works Malik. And, uh, sorry, not the X-Works, the X-Works Phantom that James Clark won the championship with last year and he had mechanical problems yesterday. So two to watch from the back, uh, one behind the other, 68, Jared Lester, that uh, Jack has mentioned, and Alan Cook, uh, number 17, behind him. But yesterday's second race was, I think Chris and I both agree, the race of the weekend so far, the race of the day, certainly between Ben Malik and Clive Wood. Uh, for this race, the positions are reversed from how the result was yesterday when the race was won uh, by Clive Wood the second race uh, from Ben Mallard, but Ben Mallard it is who starts from uh, pole position. Uh, and if those two lock horns, joined by the two Steve, Steve Collier and Steve Dickens, former champion, Adrian Lester is no slouch, but I don't think he'd be quite up there with those first four, plus the ones coming through from the back. So it should be an action-packed, just 15 minutes, the Clubman Sports Prototype Brigade light. They don't want the 20 minutes, uh, 15 is the right time. Yeah, green flag has been waved at the tail end of the order, so we 
wait for the red lights, which go on now. Who gets the best start at the front? Lights out, blast off for the second time today. A poor start, unfortunately, from Jared Lester. He immediately gets humbled by Alan Cook. He said, keep an eye on him. He's trying to draw himself alongside three wide as we go underneath the gantry. The leader's already in towards turn one. Steve Dickens has held on to what is third place. I think the front three have remained as they are. Steve Dickens, I think, is actually up into, into third at the moment. From fourth place, they disappear over the crest, up towards Maggots and Beckett's for the first time on the brakes, and it's Clive Wood in the lead of the race. Yes, Clive Wood then from the second place on the grid, got ahead of the blue car, Ben Malloch, very distinctive livery, that car, uh, as they work their way through Beckett's and now onto the Wellington Strait for the first time. And in the lead then, Clive Wood, he had to work hard to get the lead yesterday. Ben Malik is coming back at him though, and they're going side by side nearly as they turn through Brooklands, but uh, perhaps a little bit of over-enthusiasm, over-ambition on the part uh, of Ben Malik. He ran wide uh, over the curb, he's lost momentum, and as they come out of the corner, he's got to, is it Steve Collier right behind him, so through they come. Uh, a clutch of three cars, Jack, for second place. Yeah, absolutely nice to tell stuff. Over the line, it was um, Clive Wood in the lead of the race, and then it got back to that three-car battle that we saw Ben Malik followed then by Steve Dickens as they broke the beam, and Steve Collier uh, made up the rest of the top four. And there's been lots of chopping and changing, namely Jared Lester, up, what, nine places from where he started. Yes, Alan Cook, not quite so much progress. He's made out some places. He's 15th. So he's made up six places, so uh, good progress by those two quick drivers from the back of the grid. But meanwhile, up front, focusing on what's going on for second place, or is it going to be a challenge for the lead with former champion Clive Wood? Still in number 50, in number 50 still leading the way, but uh, Ben Malik is close. Ben, no uh, relation of the Malik family. Created the almost self single handed created the sports prototype championship as it used to be called the Clubman's Formula. Yeah, it's getting closer and closer as well because Clive Wood leading the race under pressure from Ben Malik. We've then got Steve Dickens desperately trying to keep Steve Collier behind. The pair of those two are absolutely nose to tail in towards Maggots and Beckett's once again. Clive Wood has extended that margin. Steve Dickens remains in front of Steve Collier at the moment, but they're absolutely nose to tail as yeah. they work their way on towards um, the uh, on towards the straight. So they're absolutely nose to tail. You can't fit anything between them. And now we may see a change for the lead as Ben Malik is jinked out towards the left hand side on the brakes on the running towards Brooklyn dives up the inside of Clive Wood can he hold on to the lead yes he can so Ben Malik into the lead of the race Clive Wood he's I don't think he's going to settle for second but he's stuck there at the moment with that small battle that they had that's allowed Steve Dickens to close up and we've now got four yeah. cars all fighting for the lead yes it's four for the lead that's right and uh, Ben Malik is having one of his best weekends of his career I think he really is driving very strongly and he way he took the lead there very neatly done and Clive Wood vastly experienced driver in second place also races Formula, sorry, Formula 2 single seaters Clive Wood so uh, he's got a lot of experience in potent cars these cars are uh, the quickest we're seeing this weekend so down they come into through maggots into Beckett's and a shuffling of the order of the Steve's we've got 32 Steve Collier ahead of seven Steve Dickens third and fourth at the moment yeah, Jared Lester up what, one more place now uh, up into the top five is uh, Jared Lester. He's worked his way through and past uh, Adrian Lester, so just continuing to work his way up through the order. On the brakes, Clive Wood, oh, sorry, Steve Dickens, I think, is going to lose that place to Steve Collier, but it, the outside converts back to the inside, but finding the grip all the way around the outside uh, is uh, Steve Collier. So Steve Collier up into third place, Clive Wood, uh, Steve Dickens down into fourth. He's starting to pull away. And uh, Alan Cook also progressing up from the back up to 11th place, number 17, with uh, more to go for him, I would have thought. Yeah, fastest lap of the race last time through from our race leader. That's Ben Mallet with a 58.282. So continuing to extend that margin over Clive Wood at the moment. There's been some brilliant battles up and down the order, just breaking the beam as they uh, went through. That will have been Tom Commander under pressure from the number 47 of Graham Wilson. That's much further down the order. There's been a car dropping down the order quite substantially. Unfortunately, I think we've lost car 76, Morris Hart. Right, well, Graham Wilson, you just mentioned, making progress. He started on the absolute back of the grid, behind even Alan Cook uh, and Jared Lester. Where, where have you got Jared Lester up to? Uh, Jared Lester's up to P5, yeah, fifth yeah. place at the moment. And we haven't lost the 76 of Morris Hart. I think his transponder just sort of missed it as it broke the beam. Uh, but over the line go our 
sort of lead quartet, so to speak. I'd say this is um, all eyes on Steve Dickens because he's now on the brakes of the inside at Cops Corner. Didn't work for him that time, but Steve Dickens, he's desperate to get back on that overall podium. Well, whatever magic dust uh, Ben Mallock sprinkled on his car overnight, it's certainly done the, had the desired effect because now he's beginning to pull away uh, from Clive Wood. The gap at the end of the previous lap was 0.921 of a second. He's got, as uh, Jack's already mentioned, the fastest lap to his credit, Ben Mallock, and uh, he's looking a likely winner, not as close racing as there was in their battle for the lead yesterday in the second race. You say that, but I think oh, on right, this lap, okay. Clive Wood has got a bit closer. I'm no, I don't know whether, because obviously traffic is slowly starting to come into play. I don't know whether no, it's you're slightly, right. no, slightly right. better managed by Clive Wood, but much, much closer now is Clive for the lead of the race. Ben Mallock is still in the lead, but with nine minutes and 10 seconds of this race still to go, the margin is getting and going down and down and down as they broke the beam last time. They were, what, zero point 0.921 of a second this time 0.354 aided by Clive Wood's fastest lap of the race of 57.496 the only driver in this race to break into the 57 barrier yes traffic may play a part in all this but nonetheless uh, yes this is as uh, Jack's described different from how I was seeing it a lap earlier uh, and so Ben Mallock no longer can relax in the lead if he was able to relax in the lead at all a couple of laps ago because Clive Wood is absolutely on his case. It seems Collier and Dickens went over the line in that order. Jared Lester, how far, he's, he's some way back, isn't he? 6.7 seconds in the rears uh, of the second Steve. Yeah, I think Clive Wood has just made a big dive up the inside for the lead. Yes, he has in towards Brooklyn's change for the lead. Clive Wood back into the lead of the race. We said he was getting closer. Yeah. Ben Mallock, unfortunately, losing out there, and he's not really too far away from Steve Collier, who's just sat behind. I would say Steve Dickens is falling over. Falling away quite substantially. He was in fourth, challenging for third, and he's really started to fall away now as he yeah. just goes in front of us. Clive Wood, fastest lap of the race last time through with that 57.496. This time he can't quite match it, but uh, another lap under the belt of Clive Wood. This time, it's a lap in the lead. And a lap in the lead by not very much at all, but in, in the lead he is. Let's look at the progress of others. 17, Alan Cook now up into seventh place. Jammer Lester, we've already said, is fifth. And who was the other one? Graham Wilson coming up from the back. He's now made his way, number 47, into the top 10. He's now 10th. He is indeed. And another position now gained. Now ninth, actually. Another yeah. position gain, like you say, from Alan Cook up into uh, the top six now. Not quite lapping as quick as the cars up the road. Jared Lester, I think that's what she wrote for him because he's not going quicker than the cars up the road. So that gap will slowly start to fall away. We saw Ben Mallock lose the lead just a lap ago. This time he's under pressure from losing second place because Steve Collier is well and truly there. They went their way through the final corner of Woodcut on towards a start finish straight. And Ben Mallock, well and truly under pressure now from Steve Collier. All it takes is one small mistake if they continue to battle. Steve Dickens, we said he'd fall away that margin will very quickly disappear now the fastest lap yesterday was set in the, the first race by Clive Wood at 56.850 he's not quite down to that yet is he but we got their new fastest lap from Steve Dickens so just as we think he's falling back <laughs> and uh, he set the fastest lap of this race but not as quick as Clive Wood was in the first race of the two yesterday uh, 57.405 set by Steve Dickens uh, on the lap prior, but with Clive Wood in the lead of the race, he meets all the traffic first and has the opportunity to build a margin because he can get that car in between uh, himself and the cars behind. Now we're seeing through um, at Luffield, Ben Malik still under pressure from Steve Collier, but Steve Collier gets a full run coming out of Luffield. That allows Steve Dickens to carve his way up through the inside through Woodcut. The gap was one, and as they break the beam, Steve Dickens up into third place, now onto the overall podium. And if you compare that with the recent speed that he's all of a sudden discovered in the latter stages of this race, we could see Steve Dickens work his way onto the coattails of Ben Malik and maybe onto second place as well. Five, just under six minutes of this race to go. Now, last time around, Ben Malik set his personal best lap of the race, not as quick uh, as the fastest lap, which uh, has gone for the moment uh, to the credit of Steve Dickens. I say for the moment because Ben Malik may have a say in all this at the moment. He is 0.96 of a second behind leader Clive Wood and they're on their tenth and about to come to the end of. Shortly come to the end of their 10th lap. Just on the brakes in towards uh, Brooklyn, they have gone. Then it's a quick flick right through Luffield. The 55 of Ben Malik still sat there in what is second place, but Steve Dickens not far away. So we await the arrival of Clive Wood. He appears first, then it is uh, Ben Malik. 
uh, Steve Dickens and then Steve Collier, who's somewhat fallen away. He was looking good for second yes. place at one point in this race, but he's sat there in fourth and slowly starting to fall away. If anything, it's the clutches of Jared Lester, because Jared Lester has previously been setting 57s and has been getting closer, but Clive Wood's still leading the way and just about managing that gap between himself and Ben Malik. I think all eyes on Steve Dickens and what he can do about closing up onto the tail of uh, Ben Malik. I think you're right about managing the gap. It looks to me as though Clive Wood is the most consistent. He's out in front, yes, so that's easy to be consistent, but that uh, Clive Wood led over the line for the tenth time by point, point 0.69 of a second uh, over Ben Malik as they went on to lap 11. And so the laps are continuing to tick by four minutes and 15 seconds of the race remaining. Back over the line go our race leaders. They've They've spread out somewhat now, I would say, as well, because whilst Clive Wood is still leading, Ben Malik is seven tenths away. However, now we've got to look back on Steve Collier. Steve Collier yeah. with the fastest lap of the race, 57.040. Yeah. I just said he was falling away. Maybe he's listening. Well, well I, th I think, because I was saying that about Ben Malik, wasn't I? So, or, or Clive Wood even earlier. So uh, I think as soon as you accuse somebody of dropping away, you know, they come back and do a faster lap and possibly even gain a place. It's Wood, Malik, Dickens, Collier at the moment, with Jared Lester in fifth place in kind of no man's land. He's too far behind the head, cars ahead to catch them. And he's some safely ahead of Alan Cook in sixth place. Tom Yorehead instead leads the Formula Ford engine class, class of CSPB in car 58 in 16th place. Traffic becoming more of an issue because that top four have really started to close up once again. Over the line goes Clive Wood, still with Ben Malik giving chase. What of laps this time? They've all fallen away. They've all previously been in the 57s. This time, they're all in the 58s. So maybe tyres are slowly starting yeah. to feel the pinch now. And it is Steve Dickens sat there in third place. Who got the fastest lap out of them all? It was Ben Malik uh, with a 58.176. So two tenths found and two tenths closer to Clive Wood. He looks like the stick, doesn't he, with his all-white helmet. So, <laughs> perhaps he is the stick. Who knows? Anyway, uh, the first four cars, we had a good view of them head-on, looking back from Pops Corner towards the start-finish line. There we've got the number 47 car, still picking up place. He's in eighth place now. Graham Wilson, and I think about to relieve Mike Lane, is he, of sixth, seventh place. Yeah, and that did work for him on the run through Pops Corner, dived his way up the inside, and like you say, another position gain. The leader's coming back through and past us, still with Clive Wood leading. Ben Malik in second place, then it's uh, number seven of Steve Dickens and Steve Collier, who set the fastest lap out of them all that time. It was Steve Dickens with a 57.207, his personal fastest That's lap nice, of the race. Yeah. That's right. So it's, it's kind of settled down, hasn't it? Uh, as though they're not far apart from each other, but they're kind of looking as though they can't get on terms with the car ahead of them. Apart from the lead, of course, who's just got to defend his lead. Clive Wood, for the remainder of the race, 0.656 of a second was the lead that he had over Ben Malik last time through the end of 13 laps. They're now on their 14th lap. Yeah, we've in won just this race, they got 15, uh, 16 laps, so they should do that today as well, shouldn't they? Yeah, it will be fairly close. Of course, they are uh, currently on their 14th lap, and now we're seeing Ben Malik come under big, big pressure from Steve Dickens. I think that may have been a mistake from Ben Malik because he's fallen away from Clive Wood as well, so Clive Wood goes through. And then we get the arrival of Ben mm. Malik and Steve Dickens yeah. absolutely as one. Let's see what the lap time was. I don't think it was a mistake. However, somebody that's going quicker, Clive Wood, fastest lap of the race again at 56.942. So a brilliant lap there from Clive Wood. But Ben Malik, he's got to worry about defending over the next couple of laps because there's two laps remaining in this race. The lap there on plus one more. Traffic is playing a part once again. Clive Wood having set the fastest lap of the race, I would say. All of a sudden, I accused Ben Malik of going slow. He's back <laughs> onto the coattails of the leader, Steve Dickens, starting to lose touch with Ben Malik. And then we've still got Steve Collier, who's more or less just been waiting in the wings for something to happen. He's got front row seats to what's going on on the road. I'm guessing he just wants to be part of it all. Well, Clive Wood yesterday, fastest lap 56.850, on his way to finishing third from the back from a spin on the opening lap. Actually, didn't he? Spun at Buffield on the opening lap. Kate Clark pulled his way back up to third place in the process, doing a 56.850 today. What's he done? 56.942. 
just slightly slower than yesterday's best lap. Yeah, back over the line go our lead quartet to go on to what will be their final lap of the race. Clive Woods still leading to the tune of six tenths of a second over Ben Malik. Steve Dickens is only four tenths away from the tail of Ben Malik. Then Steve Collier is only, what, another four and a half tenths away from Steve Dickens. So he's super, super close up the road. And if anything, Clive Wood is the safest out of all four of them because yes. his lead has extended. And then it's all three cars all fighting over the final couple of steps on the Clubman Sports Prototype Championship podium. Him. Not quite as quick in a straight line as Steve Collier. Now we're starting to see Steve Dickens get closer and closer to the tail end of Ben Malik. We had a late corner into the pit lane, unfortunately. I don't think they will see the chequered flag. But we look out of our left window and we await the arrival of Clive Wood in the lead of the race. Through goes Pippa Tannerwood. And they have swapped around, yes. So Steve Dickens up into second place. Clive Wood should appear in a few moments time. But you saw the overtake. Steve Dickens up into second. Yes, yeah, going into Luffield on the inside line. Steve Dickens took second place away from Ben Malik, who left the door open. It was there for to, to walk through, really. But the win goes to Clive Wood. So Clive Wood is the winner by 1.3 seconds from Steve Dickens, who just pipped Ben Malik on the uh, final corner of the race. And in fourth place was Steve Collier. Jared Lester takes fifth. Alan Cook takes sixth. Both of them coming up from the... Uh, back of the very back of the grid and also from the back of the grid up into seventh place number 47 Graham Wilson Mike Lane takes eighth place number 24 Adrian Holy number 15 is ninth and tenth uh, is Will Freeman in number 53 and in the CSP Bieber class the Formula Ford engine class Tom Muirhead has taken the flag already finishing in 14th place uh, 14 no 15th place car 58 15th place overall well as ever at silverstone the clubman's formula clubman sports prototype championship uh, has put on a great show uh, two wins of, over the weekend to clive wood uh, and this means this championship its first rounds taking place this weekend here at silverstone promises to be another cracker last year it was a bit dominated by uh, James Clark, young James Clark, in, in the car that now Alan Cook has brought through to finish in sixth place, the uh, number 17 Phantom PR22. Yeah, and we've got uh, into the pit lane first is Steve Dickens. So he's beaten everybody around on the in lap. But again, another brilliant race from uh, Steve Dickens. That move made on the final quarter mm. of the final lap of the race. Brilliant move from Steve Dickens to uh, promote himself onto the second step of the podium. So hopefully um, we've got Chris Dawes just working his way down to the... Uh, uh, down to the pit lane area so we can have a chat with our top three but um we're gonna uh, i'm hoping we end up picking up steve collier he might carry on as of course he finished in fourth place but ben malik you said keep an eye on him throughout that race he's finished second second and third this weekend what an opening yes. start to his 2024 year very good start to his year uh well, well in fact very good start to the year for the club as drivers generally the uh club and sports prototype championship bodes very well with the strong entry of beautifully turned out ca very quick cars don't forget these cars are extremely rapid i'm hoping that uh, clive wood hasn't just stopped on his in lap because he's not reappeared he's just coming into the pit lane now ah, that's you. okay yeah. then that's all right you can't see the wood for the trees it's, <laughs> that's trees. the one that's the one well I feel like I should wait for him, but let's see as the other two are here. Let's grab uh, a, a word with uh, with the others. Steve Dickens, uh, second place. I'm trying to remember now. Is that a full house for the weekend? I can't remember now. Full podiums, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah podiums, everyone. I got Ben on the last corner. He left the door open. I was like, I'm yeah. having that. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I just managed to get him. And, um, yeah, it was a great race. That was flat out the whole way from the, from the lights out to the end. That was absolutely flat as it would go. I mean, it certainly sounded incredibly exciting, that sort of snatch it at the end there. And uh, as I was expecting you to say you weren't going to wait for a second invite and go for it. I mean, we were saying yesterday that we thought the club ones were the most exciting race. You've delivered it yet again. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know it was the last lap, to be honest, but I just saw the, I just saw the gap, then left the gap, and I'm having that. And I went through it, so um, yeah, it was great. Can I kind of say a shout-out to my son, Zach? I promised if I get a podium, I'd say um, hello to him. So there you go. Good man.
Congratulations, Isaac. Uh, well done to that uh, second place. Let's jump over to our race winner now. Completely wrong order, but we'll do it anyway. Clive, two wins out of this weekend. That's uh, not bad. That's really good. Bit embarrassing that I didn't see the flag, <laughs> but never mind. Right. I wondered where you were. Yes. <laughs> no, great, great. Now that was really good. It was a lovely day today. The circuit was a bit slippery, but um, no, it went really well. Went a little trouble from Ben at the start, but I could, you know, it, I, I'm not very good at wear, warming my tyres up, so I'm, I'm a bit of a disadvantage for a couple of laps, but once I get in the groove, I'm, I'm all right. I was going to ask that because it did look like you made hard work for yourself in the start, but it's where you are at the end that counts. Yeah, I'm, I'm, it, it's been all my racing career or uh, hobby. I can't get the tyres hot. That is a real problem. But once I just wait a couple of laps and then don't worry about anybody else, and, and then I can go for it. But the back markers, I got I got the, the worst deal because Ben was catching me every time I got the right back marker. I thought, oh, this is hard work. No, it's really good, really good. The bad news is we enjoy it when that happens because it makes it even more exciting. It, it does, yeah, it does, it does. It's an excellent weekend, thank you. Congratulations, well done. So two victories uh, over the course of this weekend for Clive Wood. And in third place, Ben Malik. Ben, I mean, genuinely such an exciting weekend watching you here. And, and you've got to be pleased with the results, but you could have also had, uh, had the victories. I'm over the moon with it. It's my first weekend of being properly competitive. So I just, yeah, fantastic. And uh, yeah, unfortunately today I went, went backwards, but I thoroughly enjoyed the racing. It was brilliant. And the, um, the back markers were great. They kept out of the way and it was, yeah, a really good day. So, so I'm just a bit crossing myself for letting Steve in. But there, you, <laughs> but there you go, you know, live and learn. Yeah, that's the opposite to what he was saying, yeah, to be yeah. fair. Yeah, I'm sure, yeah. yeah. Well done. Congratulations. A great third. Yeah, thanks very much. That's great. So, gents, back to you two. That's a happy top three down here. Uh, we enjoyed the entertainment. It looks like they enjoyed it in the helmet visor as well. Thanks, Chris. So, Jack, what do we have next? The cars are ready on the grid, and it's Sports 2000, which is a kind of similar category, but the engine's behind the driver, to what we've just been seeing with front engine cars. Yeah, absolutely. It's the SRCC Sports 2000 Duratec and Historic Championships. Um, so these are split into, uh, again, your, your two sort of basic classes, your Duratec and your uh, Historic classes, but then uh, thereafter they are, are split once again in terms of um, their sort of chassis and, and what it may be from there. So the DA class Duratec A, that's for Duratec engine, MCRs and guns. Uh, sort of overall race win contenders in DB class, so Duratec B, that's for your Duratec engine cars built before 2006. That could be a Lola, an MCR, a gun, a Van Diemen, uh, a Carver, anything more than that. Uh, Duratec DB, so that's Duratec Derek Bell, so that's any Duratec engine car with a driver who is um, of an age, let's go with any driver that's over 60, and your um, class H, that's for historic Pinto uh, engine, uh, the original sort of Sports 2000 cars with no aerodynamics, um, cars in completely different classes depending on, uh, on when they were built, so we can run you through how they will line up. Car number one lines up in first place, that's Michael Gibbons with Ben Cater alongside car number 82. Keep an eye on Michael Gibbons um, and potentially his rearview mirror as well because he's got the 117 of Colin Peach behind, but then also uh, the 91 of Josh Law, who yesterday showcased some fabulous pace and was starting to close up on Michael Gibbons. They spent pretty much all season last season side by side. Timothy Tudor and Tony Barwell line up on row number three. That's car 14, car 77. Joshua Needham has Peter Williams for company on row four, 25 and 88. The 48 of Andy Chittenden and Ashley Law line up on row five. That's 48 and 73. Roger Doden and Clive Hayes make up row 6, 34 and 8. John Eiley has Grant Gibson for company on row 7, 44 and treble 1. Uh, John Owen has Mike Turner alongside on row 8 of the grid, that's 28 and 7. Uh, Bryn Tootle and Andrew Butler line up on row 9, 54 and 9. Richard Cook and um, Rolo Tomasi line up on row number 10, that's 16 and 36, followed then by Rafa Higson and uh, Steve O, 55 and 50. Uh, Tom Stoughton lines up on row 12 with Andrew Ridge alongside. That's 26 and 14. That's the last row on the Duratec grid before we then move past the 10 second delay onto the historic grid, which is the 67 of Gavin Wills and uh, the 37 of William Shriver. Mike Dodd has Clive Steeper alongside on row 16. That's 13 and 17. Car number 27 of John Harmer has Mike Fry for company on row 17. That's 27 and 33. And on the 18th and final row of the grid, it's the 57 of Simon Alderworth. And or Oldworth, pardon me, and David Muse, 57 and 2 on the final row of the grid. So for me, 
and I'm keeping an eye on Joshua Law and I'm keeping an eye on Michael Gibbons because both drivers have had mechanical issues throughout this weekend but this time they're only starting a couple of places apart and Joshua Law yesterday showcased what he can do in a chassis that maybe he's not 100% used to because of course that car had to come from Essex yesterday during the afternoon once they realised that his car was no good. That, that's right, Jack. So those two, certainly Michael Gibbons and Joshua Law, 1 and 91, wants to keep an eye on. Coming from the very back, after also having problems yesterday, uh, number 26, Tom Stoughton, is one to keep an eye on. And Steve O, oh, he was certainly competitive yesterday, number 50, starting on the penultimate row of the first grid, the uh, heritage car starting after a 10-second delay uh, further back. The other winner yesterday, winner of the first of the two races yesterday, was Colin Peach. He starts on the second row in car number 117. So th there's, uh, again, as was with the club and sports prototype cars it's uh, all very competitive it is we also have unfortunately Rollo Tomasi at the very tail end of the order he's supposed to be up with the Juratec uh, uh, grid but unfortunately he isn't there so we'll wait and see what comes of that we wait for the red lights they go on now who will get the best start in the Juratec grid we go racing here at Silverstone for the Sports 2000 uh, race number three of the weekend it looked like a good start from Michael Gibbons I don't think he'll fall foul of Ben Cater we'll keep an eye on Joshua Law the historic pass gets away it's a very equal start all the way through the order the Juratec cars already working their way up towards uh, uh, Maggots and Beckett's so we'll wait and see what comes of that and in the lead it remains Michael Gibbons the historic cars just working their way through Cops Corner I'm still going to keep an eye on Josh Law yes I think Michael Gibbons uh, must start as favorite the reigning champion won the championship last year has been a front runner in this series for quite a few years now and he leads the cars into Beckett's for the first time uh, we're watching now the heritage 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 back uh, historic group but back with the, the leading cars now, turning through Luffield for the first time, Jack. Yeah, that's, that's Joshua Law already up from fourth place, up into second and already being the thorn in the side of Michael Gibbons. So the pair of those two barely knows the tail. They break the beam with everybody else uh, thereafter. That is Colin Peach, who's having a good opening weekend yeah. to his Sports 2000 campaign and is uh, remaining in fourth place at the moment, having lost two places, or you know, having lost just the one place on the opening lap. But what a brilliant start it has been uh, for Joshua Law. Further down the order as well, car number 48, that being, being Andy Chitton, that he started in ninth place. He's up into seventh, up two places. A good start from him, up eight places. We spoke to him yesterday, that's Steve O. He's doing brilliantly well. Yes, yeah, Steve O, as you say, has uh, made progress up into 14th place at the end of the opening lap. Uh, Tom Stoughton up into 17th place, number 26 on the opening lap. So he's gained a few places. Uh, and in the historic classes, uh, we've got Will Scriver, number 37, a winner yesterday. He's currently running in 24th place, leading that group. Yeah, he is indeed the second of the laws. That's Ashley Law. He's fighting away uh, further down the order as well. Whereabouts was he when he broke the beam? He was in 10th last time, so he was fighting away with uh, car number 88. That will be uh, Peter Williams. Michael Gibbons with the fastest lap of the race with a 57.83, compared to Josh Law's 59.028. So over a second back now he's Josh Law. 1.8 seconds to lead margin for Michael Gibbons. It seemed like uh, Michael Gibbons has just got his tyres maybe up to temperature and obviously he was running that car very successfully yesterday. Maybe he's just got the bit between his teeth and he's trying to pull away and now we've got Josh Law going or uh, Ashley Law going all the way around the outside. I don't even think that's a bit of lap traffic. That is uh, potentially Andy Chittenden that he's worked his way through and passed a brilliant move from Ashley Law. Yeah, a bit early for lap, uh, lap traffic but uh, out front then Michael Gibbons uh, led by nearly two seconds at the end of that second lap. Now we're on the third lap in, again, a 20-minute race, as they had yesterday, two 20-minute races. So coming through with an ever-extending lead, it's going to, I'm afraid this one's going to look, well, I say I'm afraid from the point of view of watching a close battle, it's not going to be a close battle. This Michael Gibbons, unless he has mechanical problems, is on his way to success. 2.6 seconds is his lead. Yeah, another fastest lap of the race from Michael Gibbons with a 57.601. Brilliant move, uh, uh, or brilliant lap there from uh, Michael Gibbons. And Colin Peach has worked his way back onto the provisional podium, sat there in third place. He's done brilliantly well throughout this weekend as uh, Colin Peach. We'll have to keep an eye on him behind the wheel of, um, of his Van Diemen uh, RF94. Further down the order, we've still got more battles raging on. One of those, I think, is um, Ashley Law, the second of the Lords. He's yes. still hunting down.
Andy Chittenden haven't, hasn't quite been able to uh, close up as much as he would want, but he's also got a bit of attention from behind, that being by way of Joshua Needham, who is looking all the way around the outside. It's not going to work for him, but Ashley Law, he's doing everything he can to hold on to what is seventh place on the exit of Luffield. The leaders have gone back through, and the lead margin has come out come out ever more because Joshua Law with a 57.8, Michael Gibbons, our race leader, with another fastest lap of the race at 57.433. What a brilliant start it has been for Michael Gibbons. Yeah, Colin Peach I was noticeably chirpy and happy when you spoke to him yesterday after his win, wasn't he? He, he really had uh, enjoyed the results of yes of the, the two races yesterday. Now he's running in third place again, a podium position in prospect for him. I think we're fighting a losing battle with some of the screens I'm wanting to, uh, to turn off. But Michael Gibbons um, just continuing to pull away. Colin Peach, yeah, such a character um, during the interviews yesterday. If we're going to speak to him again, he's going to have to fend off any attentions he's got yeah. from Ben Cater. Of course, Ben Cater started on the front row of the grid uh, alongside Michael Gibbons. A pair of them lost out to Joshua Law on the opening lap of the race. Back through and past us in the commentary box goes Michael Gibbons. Then goes Joshua Law. Is it going to be Colin Peach that arrives first? Yes, it is. Followed then by Ben Cater. The top four will go through, and then there's a bit of a wave before the arrival. Car number 40, that's Timothy Tudor. And Ashley Law, he's still under pressure now from Joshua Needham. However, the pair of those two are really starting to close up onto the tail end of car number 48, that being Andy Chittenden. So Andy Chittenden, the uh, gap that he's got is slowly starting to fall away. When we look at the historic class, yeah. that's really starting to close up, isn't it? There's three of them, yes, running nose to tail. With At the moment, uh, it, it is the... Uh, the change we've got uh, Gavin Wills has moved ahead of Will Scriver, and with them as well is uh, the third car in that group, number 27. John, John Harmer today who's driving it. Yeah, I would I'd make you right with John Harmer driving yes, it. Of course, he's, he's leading historic C. This isn't uh, this is a battle in theory for the leading overall class in terms Sorry, of historic, yes. yes. But in terms of the classes within historic, historic A is currently being led by car number 67, that being Gavin Wills, and it's uh, car number 37 in the hands, was it Will Shriver that you uh, that you mentioned at the time? Yeah, yes. Will Shriver. He's leading historic B, leading historic C is car number 27, that being John Harmer that you mentioned just a few moments ago. So um, it's a brilliant battle starting to heat up in the yep. historic aspect of things. Go on. Yeah, uh, Gavin Wills being the only car in historic A, actually, yeah. so it helps him to lead it for that reason. Meanwhile, up at the front, we've got a new uh, best lap for Josh Law, haven't we? So he's closed the gap a little. Yeah, 57.184, really starting to close up. 2.9 seconds now. He's broken back within that three-second margin. I would say Josh Law, if he can keep on this current trend of closing up and now traffic's becoming an issue, by the looks of it, yeah. Michael Gibbons had to be very aggressive through traffic this time. What can he do in response to Joshua Law's fastest lap of the race? Breaks the beam now and posts a 57.436. What about Joshua Law? 57.234. So another four tenths gain from Josh Law. He's closing up on our race leader here. Well, perhaps we ought to say about him as we were saying about some of the club and sports prototype drivers. Oh, it looks as though he's uh, out of it now. And they come charging back and he's closing the gap for two successive laps, albeit only by fractions of a second. But nonetheless, the gap has come down to over three, from over three seconds to 2.7. Yeah, he's really starting to uh, close up now. I think what makes it more impressive uh, back in the historic class, we've got car number 67, that being Gavin Mills. He's just, uh, Gavin Wills, pardon me. He's just about in front of Will Shriver. So he's looking at the inside and now traffic's becoming an issue because Ashley Law is losing out to Joshua Needham. He's potentially losing out to the 88 of uh, Peter Williams. He's almost three abreast heading down the way. To yeah, brilliant on. racing going on there. Three or four of them. Couldn't get four abreast, we got close to it. Uh, and the uh, leader, Michael Gibbons, by over three seconds again now. He's done a three, he's got the gap up to 3.031 seconds. No change in the order, despite all the close racing that's going on. Well, perhaps there will be this next group through. Here they come. Look at the stream of cars coming through Woodcut. Fabulous sight they make, these attractive sports prototype cars. Uh, and we have, yes, yeah, Steve O. Now, Steve O from the back of the grid 
has come up in car number 50 into the top 10. He's now in ninth place. I mean, just on that lap past Peter Williams, number 88. I know he started in 22nd position up into the top 10. So doing a brilliant job. Back to the historics. We've still got a brilliant battle going on. That's the number 47, uh, 67, pardon me, of Gavin Wills. Still trying just to build a gap between himself and uh, Will Shriver. Just behind Will Shriver is the 27 machine, that being uh, John Harmer. Back over the line goes our race leader, that being Michael Gibbons. Josh Lawry's caught a bit, a bit of traffic. What of the lead margin comes down ever more by another four tenths of a second. 58-4 from Michael Gibbons, 58 flat from Josh Law. 2.6 seconds, 11 minutes still to go. It's anyone's guess. Yeah, we're not yet halfway through this race. And uh, don't think you can yet say that Michael Gibbons is uh, safe and secure in the lead. He's still got to think about one poor lap by him or one lap where he gets boxed in really seriously behind back markers he could lose the lead well, that was very close to an incident there through cops corner joshua needham lost the, the rear end of the car on the way in i think that just washed him wide um, and that just got him onto sort of the dirty parts of the circuit rotated the car through 90 degrees somehow got the car straight again and it was avoided by everyone so brilliant driving but that will drop him uh, down through the order unfortunately we're getting a black and white track limits warning flag Steve that's going, way, going the way of Steve-O of course he's been fighting hard yes. and now we've got on the running towards Brooklyn's corner that was Ashley Law late on the brakes picked up one place picked up another yes brilliant move from him he was up the inside of Timothy Tudor and Patrick Sherrington who was also up the inside of Andy Chittenden so what a move from Ashley Law he's trying to follow um, Joshua Law's lead at the moment but Josh Law he's dropped way back last time we saw 2.6 seconds yeah. the lead gap 4.1 to Michael Gibbons well, there's some magnificent racing going on here between these uh, very attractive cars. Who's that into the pits? Couldn't quite pick out exactly who that was at first glance. I wouldn't know. I'm just having a look down through my colours. Tom pick Stoughton. Out. Tom Stoughton into the pit lane, unfortunately. You'll have to try and pick up exactly why that is. Thanks, Chris. So, uh, yes, Tom Stoughton, who we thought he had problems yesterday, one of the front running former champion. Pack. Also into the pit lane as well. We've got car number 54. Well, that's Bryn Tootle. So whatever's going on, Ian, it's becoming rather attritional just at the halfway point. Well, we're losing two or three quick cars. So shame about Tom Stoughton's problems that he had towards the end of the race yesterday. And uh, as you pointed out, Josh Law dropping away from the leader, Michael Gibbons now 4.3 seconds clear of Josh Law. Colin Peach still third, Ben Cater still fourth. Ash Law in the fifth place, number 73. In sixth place, uh, number 40, Tim Tudor. No, what's happened? Steve O, it is, isn't it? He's uh, stuck his ball in there uh, and is now in eighth place. Ah, so into the pit lane, you said, what's happened to Timothy Tudor? He's into the pit lane. Of course, that's one of the cars run by the University of Wales. I've got a feeling maybe not the way they wanted to uh, end off their weekend either. No, not at all. Right, so Gibbons, Josh Law, Peach, Cater, A Law, and Chitterton are the top six. He did say that it might be actually Patrick Sherrington in Tim Tudor's car. I thought it would be um, Patrick Sherrington. Yeah, that was what we were suggested it would be. Yeah, so um, into the pit lane that car has come. Yeah. Ashley Law, we've been keeping an eye on him. He's been closing up. What has happened to Colin Beach? Because he's lost out now. Oh, yeah to uh, car number 82 of Ben Cater. So Ben Cater up into third place. Colin Peach will undoubtedly fight back. He's still leading Duratec B class um, at the moment. Michael Gibbons lead is still floating around about that four second mark over Joshua Law. Ashley Law having worked his way through past Chittenden He's holding on to the final stop, a final spot in the top five. We've still got seven and three-quarter minutes of this race to go. And it's anyone's guess who's going to finish on the final step of the podium. We've got another caller into the pit lane. That's car number 13 of Mike Dodd, the car that uh, you seem to quite like yesterday, Chris, the, in his uh, Tiger Delivery, SC79. Yeah. So into the pit lane he goes. Tiger. Tiger, uh, Tiger pardon me. Yeah, of course, Tiger. Um, I would say the battle from fifth down to about ninth place is definitely one we need to be watching, just heading its way into Brooklyn's now. Yeah, and lower down, we've got uh, in the heritage class, historic class, number 27 still is, uh, sorry, 67 still leads, but uh, Harper is now ahead of Scriber. So that battle continues between 67, 27 and 37. Yeah, so continuing to just work its way away. Ashley Law over the line, Chittenden over the line, Steve O as well. Steve O has worked his way through and past car number 88. 
uh, that being Peter Williams. So he's still really starting to uh, warm up from fifth right the way down to what ninth, maybe even tenth and eleventh now as well. The gaps are very, very small indeed. Joshua Law falling away ever more now from. Um, our race leader Michael Gibbons and uh, having got in front of Colin Peach on number 82 that being Ben Cater he's pulled away to the tune of almost half a second did you say this Steve-O is up into seventh place yes yeah so he's got mm -hmm. another place gained and he's not that far behind Andy Chitterton is he so six can he make the podium I think it's that's too much to ask in the available time left six and a quarter minutes just under time will be enough unfortunately we wait for the arrival of Ashley Law there goes Ashley Law having fought his way to the front of that little battle um, namely he's trying to run away now from Andy Chittenden got uh, more messages popping up from race control car number 26 uh, that's Tom Stoughton he's going to worry about his transponder now as well what has happened to Steve-O maybe his transponder is slightly faulty no into the pit lane for steve-o he's been fighting so oh so hard dear. started in 22nd place got right the way up to seventh unfortunately into the pit lane and potentially into retirement with only five and a half minutes remaining and having finished second in the first of the two races yesterday steve for steve-o so uh, big disappointment retired from the, towards the end of the second race and has retired towards the end of this race now because we've got five minutes and 20 seconds remaining so not uh, that long the gap the first to second gap has gone up to 4.4 seconds Ben Cater how far ahead has he got of Colin Peach not a lot yeah, well. taken that third place a couple of laps ago as Jack said and all it takes is one small mistake really doesn't it because Colin Peach is still well and truly there only six tenths of a second away they've got 17 and a half seconds um, margin between themselves and Ashley York still sat there in fifth place and running away from Andy Chitton and the gap's up to just over half a second now they've just worked their way through and broken the beam uh, once again but um, the lead margin has come out ever more now Michael Gibbons has pulled away from Joshua Law up to 4.4 seconds this time they break the beam and is it remaining around about 4.4 yes it is so still lapping very equally the pair of those two but what of what the car number 82 that being Ben Cater is he still fighting away no, he's, for, he's uh, pulled away from um, uh, Colin Peach at the moment. You spotted something on the screen. Well, yes, I spotted something on the screen that was puzzling me. It was showing a gap of 50 seconds. I was trying to work out where that gap of 50 seconds might be, um, unless you start taking some sort of uh, not terribly relevant gap. But anyway, uh, the gap first to second is going up gradually, four and a half seconds it was last time through. We've got just under four minutes remaining amongst the historic cars where do we have we've got wills scriver harmer the current order who's that another car into the pit lane that's car number 55 so rafa hickson into the pit lane unfortunately back over the line goes our race leader michael gibbons still joshua law giving chase that time the gap's come down to 3.1 seconds we've still got three and a half minutes of the race to go again i think that's just traffic management is slowly starting to ebb and flow this battle between our top two yeah such is the strength of sports 2000 these days that you have these large entries but it does mean there is uh, traffic for the leaders to have to contend with the gap first to second now shown more yeah gibbons to law uh, is what we expect 3.133 seconds so Michael Gibbons I think has things nicely under control considering he's got all the experience of uh, winning championships in these cars most of which these days are MCRs but there are still a few guns involved but one of them you've just heard is a retirement or into the pits anyway Rafe Hicks uh, in car number 55 and uh, the Adrian Wayne Ridge car also a gun number 14 I think that's uh, problems as well yes it's down 27th place yeah we've got coming back through michael gibbons he's cleared a, a, a chunk of traffic joshua law is trapped behind it the gap's down to 2.7 seconds now but of course josh law has still got to negotiate all of those cars up the road what of ben cater there goes ben cater there goes colin peach in front of our commentary box window the gap is almost a second now so i don't think colin peach no. will be able to make it three from three josh law being so so decisive through traffic just letting them 
not even letting them know, just throwing the car up the inside, trying to force that gap. Ashley Law, has he pulled away from Andy Chittenden? Last time they broke the beam, they were six tenths apart. I would say they're a bit closer this time, so through goes Ashley Law, through goes Andy Chittenden, and yes, down to three tenths of a second. We've still got life left in this little fight for the final spot inside the top five. I agree, yes, I think that's building up nicely to a, a real Silverstone-type finish, but for the lead, uh, well, the gap's come down, it was over three seconds. Well, it's over four. It's four and a half seconds. It's now 2.7 seconds. Last time through between Gibbons and Josh Law. But that may be traffic. Fastest lap stands to the credit of Josh Law, incidentally. At 57 point, not on the last lap he did, but 57.184. Yeah, the lead gap's come back out that time. Oh. We said Josh Law had traffic to deal with. 3.8 seconds back around that four second mark. Sounded like somebody missed a gear as they crossed the line. Colin Peach has closed back up onto oh. the tail end of Ben Cater. 0.384 of a second. And Ashley Law is now potentially losing out to Andy Chittenden. Andy Ch Chittenden on the inside of Luffield has indeed worked his way up the inside of Ashley Law on what will be the final couple of laps of this race. We've still got two laps remaining, potentially three, depending on where the leader is. But Ashley Law, having stayed in fifth for such a long time, yeah. seems that traffic has just been the thorn in his side and he's dropped down into sixth place now. Yeah, it was a bit nuzzly, that, wasn't it, between Andy Chittenden and uh, Ashley Law. So, with Steve-O gone from that, that group, the leader goes through Michael Gibbons onto his last lap, Josh Law, 3.7 seconds so although the gap may have come down as i think jack was right to say it was traffic that caused that to happen it's going up again michael gibbons able to control his destiny just uh, coming up to lap there car number 111 that's the grant gibson van diemen rf94 yeah just got sort of bottlenecked behind a bit of traffic but he's got the time in hand just to lift off and give the traffic some time to sort itself out colin peach he's still there or thereabouts mm. now we've got pictures of them heading through maggots and beckett's and they're super super close as they broke the beam it was three tenths of a second this time colin peach waving out of the window somebody sounded very flat with potentially an engine failure there that's car number 44 that's the second of the two university of wales car that's john eiley as he broke the beam it sounded very flat indeed but into the final couple of corners and out of woodcut for the final time comes michael gibbons to get another win in the sports 2000s what a brilliant job it has been from michael gibbons after the mechanical gremlins that car faced earlier on this week and over the line goes joshua law to finish in second place of course that car not necessarily the car he expected to race but the car he did to finish in second place so just waiting for the timing screen to update joshua law is saying he hasn't taken the chequered flag but i'm convinced i saw him go I'm through sure he was there i was going to say i'm convinced i saw him go through as well so that should yes put, he's there fourth yeah that should put uh, ben cater but he's, he's saying he's not taking the chequered flag and i'm convinced he took the chequered flag in second place that's my point so yeah. we'll wait and see what happens in regards to that one um it should be ben cater in uh, third place colin peach in fourth um, and then andy chittenden in fifth and ashley law um, recovering back. Where is Joshua Law? I'm convinced I saw him come through, but now I'm second guessing myself as <laughs> such is the delay for him to get put back up into uh, what should be second place. Did he really go missing on that? I'm sure he was in that group. There's a tight group over the line. I thought he was in that group as well. We've got yellow flags at turn one, but I'm assuming that's for John Eiley's car. The which, Cops. Yeah, at Cops, pardon me. Um, which I'm assuming is for John Eiley's car, but with the. Uh, mechanical issue he had which sounded suspiciously like a, an engine blow up but this is how they finished Michael Gibbons in uh, took the win once again Ben Cater in second Colin Peach in third followed then by Andy Chittenden um, Peter Williams and Ashley Law we're going to call it as we see it Joshua Needham finished in seventh place ahead of uh, Roger Donan and Clive Hayes Joshua Law rounds out your top 10 Colin Peach run Juratech B as well uh, we'll have to keep an eye out for Joshua Law to see if he comes into the pit lane it's uh, then we've got those top 10 just jumping back up on screen. I can't see Joshua Law. I think we may have actually lost him on that final lap of the race, Ian. Well, he may be the reason for the yellow flags at Cops. I thought that would be John Eiley's car because we heard so it almost yeah, blow yeah, up. Yeah, but so, well. wherever he's gone missing, he's not here, which means Colin Peach has made that three podiums from three and we get to have another chat with him. So into the pit lane come the field and Chris Dawes will be waiting down there eagerly to have a chat to our top three and potentially the, the top three in Juratech and then the top three in the historic uh, class um, as well. But uh, Josh Law, a fairly sad weekend for him. It's not gone his way, but in terms of uh, um, 
Michael Gibbons. He's had a fabulous weekend. Chris, down to you. Yeah, I agree. He hasn't appeared, uh, Josh Law, and even I was waiting, uh, not sure that that was the case, but sadly it does appear that way. So we'll start off with, uh, with Michael Gibbons. Michael, congratulations. Uh, another great victory. Was this one trouble-free? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Because <laughs> obviously we didn't see you race one with, what was that issue again? Uh, an issue on the, the uh, gear change came and I couldn't change gear, it was second, third. And then you lost the clutch towards the end of the race yesterday, second well, race. Towards the beginning of the race, but um, that one was more manageable because you can, as long as you're careful, you can go through up and down without the clutch. But it was nice to have one where it's run nice yeah. <laughs> and the pace was really good. We had a little bit left in reserve from yesterday because um, I knew Josh would be coming today and he was quick and we were quick as well and it was, it was nice to have a... Trouble free race. Absolutely. I mean, he was putting that pressure that you were expecting, though, but it looked like you sort of had enough in the tank to be able to fend that one off. Yeah, I, I got a good gap early on, and I don't know if um, I don't know if Josh's tyres just came in a little bit slower or, or what it was, but because he got sort of three seconds and stabilised, but that was enough that to have in the tank that um, when you're coming through the traffic, it's not nice having someone right behind you because someone does something unexpected. It's easy to pounce, and it's a nice gap to have just to, so you can manage that and not take any silly risks in the traffic and um yeah all right and it was busy for traffic wasn't it yeah it is and um there's not like nice big braking zones in a straight line where it's really easy to just like <laughs> and um so getting through the the pintos aren't so bad because you can just drive past them in a straight line or get them under power but the the going past the, the back end of the jury takes it actually more difficult because you can't just drive around them in a straight line uh, so those ones have to be set up a little bit more but it was busy but i i, I enjoy that element of this racing um yeah, I'm just really pleased. Well done. Cracking job. Much. Thank you. So, well done. Two wins out of two. Let's go. Oh, go this way. Save you walking between the cars. Get us in trouble for damaging them. Ben Cater. Ben, congratulations. Right. Now, I'm pleased to say I was correct in the commentary yesterday when I said that this was a new car to you. We caught up earlier this morning, and this is what you've had it for about one month, I think you said. Yeah, I've had it for a month. I mean, I've driven a couple of Sports 2000s over the last 10 years, like once or twice. And it's a great championship, and... I've been doing a bit of historic racing, but it's lovely to get back into something of the formula where you've got evenly matched cars battling it out. Absolutely, and I mean, you've taken to it like a duck to water. You were frustrated with the, the spin on oil yesterday, but today, another podium, that's got to put all that into history. Yeah, I mean, if you're a racer, you want to win, but to be honest, on the first weekend out, I'll take a second, and bad luck to Josh, who I think had a coming together, but I had a cracking battle uh, all race long, so I really couldn't relax. Well, and talking about not being able to relax is that Colin Peach was coming back at you at the end there. Were you aware of that? Uh, well, yeah, I was aware of it. I've got mirrors. Yeah, <laughs> I can yeah. see this horrible orange dot <laughs> getting bigger and bigger. And every time I think, oh, I've got that corner great. And uh, he'd then pull something out of the bag and the instruments packed up. So I did uh, miss a couple of shifts So because I couldn't really work out. I mean, I know you're supposed to know when to shift and mostly you do. But occasionally I did red line, red line it a bit. Wow. And that's when he got his overtake in because I... Anyway, it was a great, great battle, and I really enjoyed it. Well done to Colin as well for keeping him on my toes. And it was some good learning experience, we'll call that then. Yeah. Come back and uh, do even better, hopefully. Absolutely. Well done to Ben Cater. Where's Colin? Where is he? Oh, here he is. <laughs> Dude, I mean, I was saying in the commentary yesterday that you were not a happy bunny Friday night and into the early hours of Saturday uh, morning. I I'm starting to question whether you were teasing us with that now. <laughs> I... I it's a total surprise. I've never even been on a podium before, let alone the, f the first win last yesterday and coming home two thirds. Um, it's just been a brilliant weekend. Um, the bait racing with Ben was just so brilliant, you know, just with the, either a second in front or a second behind the whole way around for the whole race. Um, I got caught with a back marker and I missed a gear because I got a H pattern gearbox compared to their sequentials. So I missed a gear going down, he got back past me. Um, and I was just about to make a lunge on the last lap and I saw, I think it was um, Josh Law pull off. And I was like, yes, I don't need to do anything dodgy. <laughs> I was like, I don't have to push so hard now. So um, really credit has to go to the championship though, letting these old cars like mine still be as competitive as these brand new ones. You know, the rules are so good that it just shows how good sports 2000s are and the whole championship as a whole. Agreed. Listen, I know your comment uh, after your win yesterday is you were shaking yeah. and you couldn't stop. I mean, how do, are you still sort of feeling that disbelief? 
Yeah, absolutely. Last night I actually slept worse than Friday night because I was so excited. I kept looking back at the YouTube videos and, and just looking at the timing and where can I improve. Uh, we made some more changes to the car last night. So, yeah, I just had a brilliant weekend overall and thank you, everybody. Well, congratulations, Colin Peach. You got three podiums, Cheers, including man. a win. And a win. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chris. Well done, mate. Great to see the human element there that it really does uh, matter to them. Right, in terms of the historic, Gavin, Gavin. Oh, sorry, Gavin Wills in the uh, the number, which one is it? The 67 car, that one's your, uh, a victory. I mean, it's been a busy race between uh, the two of you in particular, hasn't it? A busy weekend, I mean, sorry. Yeah, um, and that race was uh, pl plenty competitive, so <laughs> it certainly had to work for that one. I mean, it's got to be an interesting one for the historics because you've got your own really tight battles that, are, that sort of capture our attention, but you've then got these pesky, quick, Duratex coming through as well that you've got to keep an eye on in your mirrors. Yeah, I mean, they've got their race, but uh, they carry such pace that uh, you really have to watch out for them. And they, if they catch you at the wrong moment, then uh, not only does it slow them, it can really slow you as well. And if you're battling for a, for a lead, then uh, that, that can be something that really screws things up. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But overall, it looks like it's been a rather good opening weekend. It has been superb. I'm absolutely delighted. Um, you know, my crew put a lot of hard work in. I'm very grateful to them. Uh, and to come here for, with the car for the first time, um, we just uh, we came here with the attitude that we were just going to see, see what we've got and uh, work out what, what we needed to do and to be competitive straight off the bat. I'm absolutely delighted and, and very grateful. Well, that answered the question I was going to go next. Were you expecting it? Congratulations, a great job. Thank you very much. So, Gavin Wills uh, in second place was Will Shriver. Where is he? Is Will around here? He's disappeared. If he was here, Gavin, do you know where Will? Gavin, do you know where William is? He's gone off to get somebody. That's different. Well, in which case, we'll jump to third. It's John Harmer. It was Mark Noir yesterday, but they've done the switcheroo, and it's John Harmer. I did it, mate. I did it. Uh, <laughs> John Harmer. I mean, it was uh, clearly very busy for Mark in that car yesterday. You managed to avoid any of the contact that you had to suffer on it uh, yesterday, and you bring it home with a podium. Yeah, no, it was good. Um, yeah, excellent race. Right, really nice, clean race, but uh, those strikes are so slippy around here. You know, it's... Uh, two or three long straights and um, uh, there's no staying with Gavin and obviously he's pedaling it really well but uh, Will and I had a good race in fact um, it was just really a tiny mistake out of cops in fact we'd, we'd agreed going up the back straight waving at each other right let's <laughs> let's try and work together and see if we can catch Gavin so I said yeah let's do, okay, right, we'll do that for two or three laps and then made a slight mistake at cops and thought right I'm going to try now and then got hung out to drive our back marker so we swapped places but neither of us were making progress on Gavin so I'm questioning whether there's that many words in those hand gestures, though. No, no, well, the camera can't see those, can they? Yeah. It's all about the gestures. Well, I, like it. I like the interpretation, mate. That was a good job. But listen, a great way to round out the weekend with a podium. Fantastic. Yeah, and the car behaved. We've had a busy weekend, actually, with uh, uh, repairs and maintenance and various issues. So uh, it was good that it just stuck together. And it's just an epic car to drive, actually. This circuit in some cars can be a bit dull, but in these cars, it just brings it alive. It's mega. Imagine. Well done, John Harmer. Third place in the historics. Watch your back. We've got one more to do because he's come back. Well, uh, apparently there was a lot of words in those hand gestures that you were working together for a little while, but it's been a very busy weekend for you, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. And a lot of use of the uh, racing driver um, sign language, I think. You know, pretty much hurry up, go, 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 things like that. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been great. And that was a great fun race. You know, being able to race wheel to wheel with these guys, swap places, all good clean racing. And, you know, there was very little interruptions from yellow flags, safety cars, anything like that. So... It was fun, just a flat out sprint and, you know, good good effort and well done to Gavin for staying in the lead. Yeah, well, well done. Uh, so overall, happy with your opening weekend here? Yes, very, because mainly because this is the first time I've ever run a car by myself and I've been doing it all with my son, Freddie, who without him couldn't have done any of this. So for us, it's just been mega, just wow. as a nice little family thing, just to get a result and, you know, have a great weekend. A nice bit of dad and lad racing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Congratulations. Well done, Well. So that was nice. As we're going into the lunch, I had the time to be able to grab all six interviews, top three in both the Duratec and the Historics, which is a nice chance to catch up with them. That takes us into our lunch break before we go for the Enduro KA race. Five hours, Ian and, uh, and yeah. Jack. So uh, I'll go and grab my lunch, and I'll head back to you to wrap us into that break. I just whether we could have granddad and lad. Because that would be good, course, wouldn't it? Uh, uh, yeah, Will Scriver's father is Michael Scriver, who's had a huge amount of success in historic racing, particularly over the years. Uh, but anyway, Will has certainly uh, gone well today, gone well today and yesterday. Right, Jack, so we can have lunchtime, I think, now. 
Yeah, yeah. Early. It's a sort of 11s's job. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, we were supposed to get lunch underway at sort of 11.35, which is theoretically is, is when it started, when the on-track action um, uh, ceased. But we should be getting everything back underway for around about 12.35. I believe we're going uh, sort of back to sort of live pictures, and um, and you'll be able to um, hear us again if you're watching on the live stream at around about half past 12. So please uh, do hang around for that one. Go get yourself some lunch. If you're here at the circuit, we do have the Pit Stop Cafe as well as the coffee box as well. So if you're looking for any refreshments and you've not brought your own, you've got um, opportunities uh, there as well. It is getting warmer out, so make sure you can grab some shade um, if, if you feel yourself getting a little bit too hot. But um, at least from us up in the commentary box and, of course, Chris down in the pit lane, enjoy your lunch break. We should be seeing you uh, once again in around about 50 minutes' time as we can get ready for the Enduro KA 5-hour, the main event here this weekend at Silverstone. <laughs>
and welcome back to the MSVR meeting here at Silverstone. We've only got one more piece of racing action today and it is the five hour race for the Enduro KA series. We've got the cars currently out on circuit at the moment. Of course, this being a rolling start, I will very briefly run you through the way that they line up. We were due to have car number 96, the, um, uh, that was the Porsche Carrera motorsport car. Um, unfortunately, that's been found to have a non-compliant exhaust fitted, hence why that car will be starting in the pit lane. So on pole position is GM Performance, after posting their 1 minute 19.394, uh, what's 6 tenths, 7 tenths quicker than last year's pole position time. Alongside them will be car number 46, that's Milner Racing. Shine Automotive line up um, on row 3 of the grid with 11 tenths racing alongside car number 180 and car number 11. KM Racing line up in fifth with Pro-Am Racing alongside. That's car 115 and one, uh, car 12. Catastrophe have wing gap racing for company on row 4, one, uh, 12 and car number 3. On row 5 of the grid we've got Graves Motorsport and Auto Tech 2. That's car number 95 and car number 65. Subaru Racing last year's winners line up in 11th place with car number 8, the second of the Pro-Am Racing entrance lining up in 12th place. AFK Racing have three Amigos for company on uh, row 7, that's car 22 and car 125. KNF Racing have LDR Performance Tuning alongside them on row 8 of the grid, that's 21 and 49. Treble 8 Boston Racing has Treble 3 Kahuna's Racing Team um, alongside them on row 9 of the grid, Treble 8 and Treble 3. On row 10 of the grid we've got car number 7, GMB Finch Racing with Cash Strapped Racing uh, alongside car 7 and car 55. On row 11 of the grid we've got the um, somewhat troubled qualifier of La Motorsport, car 747 with MJ, NJM Racing Limited alongside them, car 747 and car 6. On row 12 of the grid we've got Glorica and Burton Power Racing, that's 127 and uh, car number one, followed then by original Checkers Racing and Team Lifeline, that's car 67 and 275. Row 14 of the grid, uh, we've got car 121, that's Calamity, and Orca Sport, car 74 alongside them. Starting in 29th place on row 15, we've got car number 60, that's Tang Tango and Crash, with car number 14 alongside Usher Motorsport, 16, 14. Grapes Motorsport, the second of their entries, lines up in 31st place with the second of the Autotech cars lining up alongside in, car in uh, 32nd place, 44 and 64. And on the 17th and final row of the grid, it's car number 27. Semprini Racing and car number two NJM's PDCs uh, on the back row of the grid. Joining me in the commentary box is Ian Titchmarsh. We do have, um, of course, uh, Chris Dawes down in the pit lane and we'll hear from him later on. But Ian, we're in for five hours of fun, I think. Well, we, uh, five hours of fun is a very good way of putting it because I'm sure we are. And it's going to be, uh, it's the second time that the uh, race has been taking place at Silverstone. The opening round of the championship, the track days Enduro KA series came to Silverstone for the first time last year on the national circuit uh, with, how many cars did you give out? 34 cars altogether is uh, large grid for a rolling start, which is going to be taking place very shortly. The cars currently negotiating the Luffield Loop. Predicting a winner, absolutely impossible. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It could, we saw uh, a couple of years ago, the car that finished in eighth ended up winning. I think we've seen cars coming back from the 30th places right the way up. And of course, we've got a car in the pit lane, car number 96, Porsche Carrera Motorsport, after their violation of the uh, non-compliance exhaust being fitted throughout qualifying. They're starting in the pit lane. Do not rule them out for potentially no. winning this race. Um, it, it, it is all uh, going to be revealed come at the end of five hours time but controlling the field is GM performance if you're watching the stream there on the extreme left hand side of your screen on the right is the yellow and uh, blue machine that's car number 46 mil there racing but the field is working its way through Woodcut now and the red lights are on so as soon as they go out we will be able to get this five hour race underway so it's all eyes on GM performance we will try and bring starting drivers to you as and when we get them but looking at GM performance, looking at Milner racing, the pair of those two have already started to pull away from the field behind. The lights go out, and with the very little speed difference between them from uh, the, the pace they were rolling to flat out, we get this race underway. There's, what, three, maybe four wide, but GM performance hold the lead. It is Darren Stapleton uh, behind the wheel of that car leading the way, followed then uh, by, uh, that being John Milner, I believe. Is it John Milner? Yes, I think it is. Um, working his way through in second place. Leaving the pit lane now is car number 96. That is uh, Porsche Carrera Motorsport, but in towards Maggots and Beckett's for the first time. Good start from GM Performance. Yeah, I'm just wondering whether it would be helpful to go, so we can tell who the driver is from the timing stream now. The cars have all gone through the timing beam. Uh, and so the, uh, oh dear, one in the gravel already. So yeah, you don't win the race on the first lap. Six. Number six is already six, yes. Yeah, that's uh, David Murphy, unfortunately. Or Peter Simmons. I'd it? imagine it's David Murphy looking at the timing screen. 
very well driven, Mr. Murphy. He's got that car out of the gravel and um, sort of minimised that yellow flag period. Right, so uh, in the lead is 81, or was over the line, and that is at the moment Darren Stapleton. And Johnny Milner is in number 46. In number 180, uh, we have Adrian Wood. And then in number 11, it is to come through for the first time uh, Brian Crawford Brian Crawford but let's just see where that's still the order who have we got now leading here Stapleton and Milner are in the first two places up into third place number 12 and that's the uh, driver change of driver there Richard Jepp is the driver of number 12 and he's in third in fourth place is number three and that is Liam Bidgeway and is that somebody in the pit? Yeah, that's the car number six. That is uh, David Murphy into the uh, into the pit later for that for the first lap. All right. And then in sixth place we have 66. Is it? Oh no, 65. It has to be. Uh, and we don't have a 66. Uh, and that is T Owen. Yeah, that's Toby Owen. We no longer have GM performance in the lead of the race. I think no. they've dropped right the way down to fourth place at the moment. So on the brakes in towards Brooklands go the field. And the thing is, we could call them as we see them now, but by the time they've worked yeah, their right. way out of Luffield and behind the BRDC clubhouse, they'll be in a completely different order. Yes. There was a very committed move there from Leon Bidway. He very nearly won it wide. Hopefully in back out on circuit. Now we will see David Murphy after his slightly gravelly moments on the opening lap of the race. Unfortunately, I think we've got another issue Ooh. there. That is for car number 67, original Checkers Racing, that almost Correct me if I'm wrong, it had contact with the Porsche was. Carrera motorsport car. Of course, that's the car that started in the pit lane. It is. Where is it now? We will have a quick look. So they, that's how they came seconds. through. They were 30 seconds. I think they've picked up a few more places. Here they okay. come to break the beam. And do they move off, a, off our right screen to our left? We wait for them to go through. Yes, they do. So they, they're up to 30th place. Right, so into the lead, meanwhile, has gone number 12. So that's Richard Jepp, who leads the way and leads it by half a second from Johnny Milner. Darren Stapleton is third, fourth, number three. Leon Bitchway in fifth place is 65. And that is 65 at the moment is Toby Owen. And then behind him in sixth place, Number 180, who is, which one have you got in number 180 at the moment? Yeah, one Adrian Wood. Adrian Wood, yeah. So Toby Owen, I said keep an eye on him. He's been racing KAs for a long, long time now, and he's just been getting quicker and quicker and quicker. And at the moment, he's carved his way, what it says on the screen, up into fifth place. Whether that is still the case, I think he may have lost a few positions on the, uh, on the lap prior. But here comes Richard Jepp. So he breaks the beam and remains in the lead of the race. I think Toby Owen will indeed drop down. So Richard Jepp uh, crosses the line in the lead, followed then by Darren Stapleton for GM Performance. Leon Bidgeway is sat there in third place in car number three. Then Johnny Milner's down two places, but remains in fourth place. Adrian Wood up a place at the demise of Toby Owen. So they're fifth and sixth respectively. Gordy Butch, one of the only ones to remain exactly where he was in seventh. That's right. Now, you may have said this or, or, already, Jack, but uh, no driver can drive a stint that is longer than two hours, 20 minutes. And at the moment, we have no other driver with the car that the leading car uh, currently is in the hands of Richard Jepp. Uh, obviously, there will be others. We assume that they it's will be. Will Hillyard and uh, well, oh, Yes, yeah. it's just on the screen. Yeah, it's, it's not, not popped up. All we've seen all, all morning is Jepp. So hopefully yeah. it's not Richard trying to uh, pull the long haul. The fastest lap of the race. Yeah, at the moment is going the way of the car down in 17th place that is the treble eight machine in the hands of andrew fells um with his one minute 21.281 but it shows you may be the quickest on circuit but you can still be quite a way down and that's when you see the pack racing really start to form so back over the line goes car number six that's njm racing with david murphy behind the wheel of course recovering from the first lap incident he had richard jepp is now under pressure from our pole position car that's car number 81 in the hands of Darren Stapleton, so they're getting closer and closer and closer as they go down the straight, but we'll slowly start to see drivers work together. What of Marcus Clutton's car, of course, is um, from, uh, uh, of course, British GT fame, so the WKD Motorsport car number 95, where about today, they're a fair way down the order at the moment, down in 25th place, currently in the hands of Ross Falls, so it 
it, it, it will all change we've cause still got four hours and 54 <laughs> minutes remaining and this this order will almost flip itself completely on its head come what five minutes time never mind four hours and 53 of them i think you safely say that plenty will happen uh, in the next few minutes let alone the next few hours uh so a lot of close dicing going on it's, it's fun just to be involved in the battle uh, even if it's uh, a long way away from the final outcome so richard jepp led by yes less than he did on the previous lap and coming into the picture then in second place at the end of the previous lap number 81 the car that started the race from pole position the uh, gm performance car in the hands of darren stapleton Are you keeping copious notes here, I am, Jack? Yeah, I'm doing little green circles reminding me on who started the car. So I know exactly who's there. I've just noted down as well, Andrew Fells. He's in a good little battle, just heading towards turn one at the moment. He's trying to pick his way through and past uh, car number 21, but that being in the hands of Simon Top. So he's just... He wants to work with them. We've got a brilliant picture of it get heading through Pop's corner. I think, he, if anything, he ended up losing a place, unfortunately, through that one. And that allowed um, uh, the 747 car that we saw recovered in the pit lane in the hands of Jordan Bannon at the moment work his way up through the inside. And we're seeing firsthand on the running towards Maggots and Beckys, the treble three car in the hand of Costa Creatis. Big, big lockup. These cars have, they do have ABS, but it's very, um, uh, very light and occasionally it can be rather intrusive but every now and then you find that spot in the ABS which is rather blank and you can have some rather big moments but for the moment it's all looking um, rather rather congested you'd be yeah. hard pushed to find a bit of track for your for your own and GM performance still fighting away with Richard Jepp Darren Stapleton remains in the lead of this race in the number 81 GM performance car but Richard Jepp is still r well and truly there Leon Bidgeway isn't really letting them run away and then no. uh, car number 180 in the hands of Adrian Wood he's just about sticking with them we're slowly starting to see the top three yes. work away and Johnny Milner and Gordy Much are the next two along. Johnny Milner in car 46, former British Rally champion. Gordy Much races these days in British GT. He's moved, he's moved ahead of Johnny Milner, so Gordy Much now into fifth place at number eight. And in seventh place is 65, Toby Owen. In eighth place, number 114, is uh, Christian Kelly. In ninth place, number 125, is David Drinkwater. Uh, and in 10th place, number 27, uh, is Nick Creed. So that's your top 10 and with the drivers. And then in 11th place, number 333, uh, is Costa Kiritis. And in 12th place, driver number 112 at the moment. That's a change of number, isn't it? Yes, from 131 becomes 112. Yeah. And that, who do we have on the screen? Thomas driving that, driving that car, but uh, Robert Thomas. So, yeah. Yeah, as we come through the top four were very well behaved so too were the top eight they remain in the order that they are top 10 it's calmed down rather substantially what are we down to now the top 13 remained where they are before we started to see changes andrew fells has uh, picked his way up two places on the lap prior one through and past simon top and also after i'm guessing the other car that dropped down was car number 11 that being in the hands of brian crawford so up two places which in a pack as close as this can be very very valuable indeed we're already starting to see a potential issue for darren stapleton he's in the lead of the race but of course car number six david murphy the njm racing car with that mistake on turn one uh, or on lap one pardon me is effectively becoming lapped traffic already yes he is isn't he that's right so that's uh, just up on the road ahead of them as the cars come into Brooklands. Still 81 leads. Darren Stapleton from Richard Richard Jepp. And it is making his way out of so 81 in the lead. Numbers of course, race numbers in the top left hand corner of the windscreen and on the rear side windows. 
Yeah, so as they cross the line, <laughs> trying to get out of the way as much as possible is David Murphy. He's just there or thereabouts. And what was that? What, 10 in the lead pack? But of course, one of those may be that uh, lap star of David Murphy. Uh, it, it, it does. I, I was aware that I was including that in the counting. Uh, fastest lap has just been set by number 114. Yeah, 114, and that's Christian Kelly. He's in the fastest lap at 120.068. Best lap in qualifying, incidentally, was a 119.394 by the Ian Mitchell down Stapleton car. So down the Wellington straight they go, and you can hear the tyres sort of squealing it's, away yes. for any sort of rest bite as they all dive down. They fan out almost, what, three, four wide on the way in, and Richard Jepp is still fighting away with Leon Bidgeway. Leon Bidgeway is on the inside now. All the way through Luffield they go. It will yep. be um, the number 12 Pro-Am racing car of Richard Jepp that may get the superior momentum on the exit because he might be able to pick up the throttle slightly earlier, but they will still be side by side. It's the shorter line on the run towards turn one that will go the way of Leon Bidgeway. Whilst all that's going on, Darren Stapleton is trying to run away. If they carry on fighting the way they are, there is Adrian Wood that's just sat behind watching it all unfold. Not, no longer behind. We're three wide down towards turn one. Darren Stapleton will be the first to arrive. And Adrian Wood, he arrived in fourth. He leaves in second place. What a brilliant move there from Adrian. Adrian Wood and Richard Jebb he's gone from second right the way down to fourth place in terms of Leon Bidgeway he'll be thinking what happened there I was going for a move I was under attack and I'm still exactly where I was that was Cops Corner they've just been through yes, yes. Cops Corner of course <laughs> yeah. uh, so Darren Stapleton leads the way in number 81 what's going on lower down the top 10 up to 10th place that's uh, 333 here it is number 333 comes up into the top 10 for the time being dropping several places actually down to 13th has fallen number 22 Nick Creed so the uh, leader number 81 but the pack of about four or five cars jostling for position just behind uh, which one's that that's just gone through? That's uh, some way back. The orange car just over the line. It's fallen off the back of the pack. There's the leader. Number 81, Darren Stapleton. And his lead is now, is this the largest lead we've seen so far? I think it is 1.349 seconds over 180 up into second place. Adrian Wood. Leon Bidgeway down to third. And down to fourth has fallen number 12, Richard Jepp. But this is just telling you how it is. It's not as if it's going to have any great meaning. Oh, that's uh, getting out of shape there into Beckett's. Yeah, that's Adrian Wood from second place. I think he was helped by Leon Bidgeway. Uh, yeah, well yeah. and truly, you can see the dent in the rear bumper. So I think Leon Bidgeway may be just... Um, just letting um, Leon Adrian, Bargeway. Uh, Leon Bargeway, absolutely. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, just letting Adrian Wood know that he's there. Whilst all that was going on, the car in 10th place, the treble three, the one I said keep an eye on, mainly because of who's in it at the moment, uh, Costa Kritzis, he's just posted a 1 minute 20.047. Yes. So by far and away the quickest car out there at the moment because the closest time I can see is a 1 minute 20.582. So he's over half a second quicker than absolutely everybody. Almost everyone is in the 1 minute 21s and the that's 1 minute right. uh, 22s further down the order. So that's a brilliant lap from Costa. And uh, Kahuna's race team are really starting to push forward in their treble three machine, so much so that they're in this lead pack. And he's now trying to dive his way up the inside of car number 16. That's the Autotech Motorsport 2 car in the hands of Toby Owen. I think he's got an issue. Who, you think Toby Owen's got an issue? Yeah, because he's pulled right. over to the left-hand side and going very, very slowly indeed. Oh, well, yes. Right, so dropping places. Dropped a couple of places on that lap down to 10th to place, but he's probably worse than that now. Yeah, and of course, um, Adrian Wood, after being um, thrown out of the ray, more than likely, it's probably the best way I could put it by Leon uh, Bidgeway. Really started to uh, 
it's pushed forward. Of course, Adrian Wood, he's lost seven places on that lap, which um, put Costa Kriatsis up a further three. So he's up into um, uh, seventh place now, and he's only going to close up on those cars up the road. We're seeing a few more green times being posted, sort of denoting yes. driver's personal best, or in this case, that's car's personal best. Um, but Richard Jepp remains in second place, 1.7 seconds away now from Darren Stapleton. So Darren Stapleton's lead continuing to uh, extend ever further. And it's Johnny Milner now under pressure from, I'm guessing that's Gordy Much that's just sat behind, or is Johnny Milner falling away? Gordy Much was ahead of, of Johnny Milner, I thought, but anyway, they've now swapped back, have they? I think they have. I think Gordy Much may have lost a place or two on that lap, so we wait for it to come through. No, Gordy Much remains that's as he is. Uh, still sat behind Johnny Milner, but Leon Bidgeway is there or thereabouts. The lead gap back within a second. It shows how important that aerodynamic systems and working together is because Darren Stapleton's lead has come down by almost a full second. Another fastest lap of the race. I think it's just picking up the previous one uh, by way of Costa Critsis with that uh, 1 yes. minute 20 point zero four seven. So we're still seeing a bit of sort of movers and shakers up and down the order. Brian Crawford up two for 11 tenths racing up into 17th place. Down two was Toby Owen. I haven't seen him come into the pit lane, but there goes, that's the, the first of the two cars with Adam Nakar behind the wall for Autotech Motorsport going past us. But Toby Owen, it just didn't look right. Maybe he missed a gear yeah. or something. Well, he's shown his uh, last time through in 12th place, so that's another place lost. Head of, running ahead of Nick Creed, number 22 in 13th place. And in 14th place is 747 in the hands of... Now, that's got a change of driver. To, um, Neil J becoming Mike Collins, but I think it's Jordan Barron at the moment at the wheel of that car. Yes, it is. In 14th place. Side by side stuff going on here. Eight and three running side by side in fighting over fourth and fifth places. Gordy Much now into fourth place ahead of Johnny Milner. Uh, and in sixth place is 125. That's David Drinkwater. You say Gordy Butch into fourth place. He, but not he, really. I was going to say he stayed in fourth place, but Leon Bidgeway managed to work his way through and past yeah. Gordy Much and Johnny Milner. So Johnny Milner then ended up dropping through uh, through um, behind Gordy Much. So the two cars either side of Gordy have swapped, but Gordy's remained exactly where he is. So um, clearly a, maybe a bit of damage limitation, but he's so, so close heading on to the Wellington Strait. The treble three of Costa Cris is still pushing forward now. I'd say that's potentially another position gained up into... Uh, what is now uh, sixth place because he's got three Amigos yes. just sat behind him. He's got one of the Shine Automotive cars not too far away um, either. So he's really starting to close up in that top 10 at the moment. And then we see the pack racing uh, come into play because the top, what, 10, maybe even 11 have slowly started to build a gap away. And then everybody else thereafter, you've got a bit of a wait before you can get to the rest of the field. But we're side by side for the lead of the race. Car number 81 with Darren Stapleton behind the wheel. He's under pressure from Richard Jepp, which is now corrected on the timing. So Richard Jepp is up the inside of uh, Darren Stapleton. He's got his teammate just behind by way of Gordy Much. <laughs> Gordy Much is up into third place. We've then got Leon Bidgeway just sat behind. Costa Kritzis did indeed pick up a place on the final on the lap prior ahead of David Drinkwater. In towards Cops they will go. And Richard Jepp into the lead of the race. Darren Stapleton down to second place. Unable to follow his teammate through his Gordy Much. A bit of a wobble on the exit there from Costa Kritzis. But bear in mind we've got four hours and 40 minutes remaining. You'd think it's the last lap, Ian. Well, it is a bit like that, isn't it? That yeah. leading pass they look at it one two three four five six seven eight. yes as uh, jack suggested 10 cars in that leading group three abreast they are now the three amigos run out of amigos go wide uh, and comes back onto the track we're ha not having news it'll happen so we're not tempting fate and suggesting it uh, hasn't happened yet but there will be some uh, not respecting track limits, penalties yeah. before we've done. Car into the pit lane. That's car number 27. That's the Samprini car into the pit lane. He's currently got Phil Hart behind the wheel. Um, he obviously teammates with James Hart and David Evans. So um, if you are down that way, Chris, it'd be great to figure out exactly why they've made an early call into the pit lane. We're currently seeing Costa Kritzis work his way through Luffield and then onto the start finish straight. Once again, he's slowly applying that pressure onto the tail end of the Three Amigos car, desperate to try and work his way through and pass, but they remain as they are as they head back onto another lap. 15 laps completed, onto lap 16, but Richard Jepp with his newly inherited lead, he's not exactly pulling away. I've got a feeling that's going to be a hard task in these cars. Notice 
Pardon, but Chris. down here with the 27 yeah, and it them. looks like a routine stop they're, they're changing drivers uh, and they're not looking at anything else now obviously they need to manage this they're only allowed three people maximum to be working on the car and uh, they haven't they've got two people working on the car so they're absolutely fine and happy they're belting the second driver in so I can only assume that this was a fully planned thing. I'll try and find out when they finish doing this, but uh, there's no cause for alarm by the looks of it. Yeah, David Evans jumping in for Phil Hart, and David Evans knows what he's doing behind the wheel of a, uh, uh, an Enduro car, so we'll see what uh, David can do as and when he returns to the circuit. But last time they went through, it was Richard Jepp in the lead, heading in towards Brooklands now. Richard Jepp is still in the lead. Darren Stapleton, however, under pressure from Leon Bidgeway, who's worked his way up through the inside. A bit of damage on the front of Leon's car. In towards Luffield, they will go. Still absolutely side by side. It's super, super close in this lead back. Well, the front, the, the damage to the front of Leon Bidgeway's car is what he when he ran yeah. to the back of, who was it? Um, it was... The, Gordy, uh, no, it wasn't Gordy much, was it? But it was in that leading it pack. It was uh, Adrian Wood. That's right, Adrian Wood. Uh, put the dent in the back, so cause and effect there. So Richard Jepp goes through, number 12. Darren Stapleton in second place, number 81. Johnny Milner is third, Leon Bidgeway is fourth. Watch you back, Johnny. Uh, and in fifth place is Gordy Much. In sixth place, Adrian Wood, completely dent. Up into seventh place has come 3.33, Foster Kiraitis. Can I jump in, guys? Because I've got Phil Hart that's just jumped out of the 27 car. You caught us by surprise then, quite an early stop. Yes, uh, part of our strategy. We were hoping for a safety car quite early in, but uh, remarkably, everyone seems yeah, to be behaving themselves, behaving themselves today. today. So, so uh, yeah, yeah, we've, uh, we've, got we've got three, three drivers, drivers. We need to do the pit, pit stop. So, so we thought we might as well get one out early in the race and just see how we get on. Fair enough. How, how is the circuit out there? Uh, the circuit's lovely. Um, I love love it here. Um, love every single layout. Doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, it's really good. It's, it's not, not slippy. They've not dumped fluids, fluids out there in earlier races or anything. No, no. This, um, you know, these things slide around anyway, which is part of the attraction. So, no, it was it was fine out there. Yeah. Uh, and busy as well. Uh, yeah, we started at the back. I think we were second to last from the back. So I made up a few places. Um, but yeah, half feels a little bit underpowered today, so yeah. So, but it's it's not about winning; it's about taking part. That's what I, I agree with that. That's that's legitimate in this yeah. race, and to be fair, isn't it? It is. It's just good fun. I get to race with my son. Um, so yeah, it's all good. Fantastic. Thanks, Phil. Good luck later. So there you go. That gives you a, a bit of an insight. Is that you could still see that smile was not forced on his face there at all, was it? No. Absolutely not. No. Uh, and that's the renumbered car. Incidentally, it was turns 37 in the program. He's number 27. Yeah. Semprini Racing. That was Phil Hart, father. James Hart, his son at the wheel. Or was it David Evans? It's David Evans. David Evans. Now, isn't it? Yes. So still working their way through. Previous race leader. Um, Darren Stapleton has really fallen away now. I think he's sat down into fifth, maybe even sixth place he's just been demoted to. Um, so, no, I think I think fifth place, looking at that. Under the bridge go uh, race leaders on the Wellington Strait. It's still Richard Jepp leading the way. And then is it Johnny Milner that's potentially there? Or have we just seen a massive move up the inside? No, it's all changed at the front. So Johnny Milner's now leading the race ahead of Richard Jepp, just sat behind is um, Leon Bidgeway. We've still got a brilliant battle going on. That's from Adrian Wood, who is, of course, still recovering from that big old moment that was aided by Leon Bidgeway. So um, he's doing very, very well indeed. I heard a lot of tyres squeal on the way into Brooklyn's, but they all appear on the other side by the look of it. So over the line go Johnny Milner. He's still being hunted down by Richard Jepp. There's Leon Bidgeway. Then it is Gordy Murch, Adrian Wood, and Darren Stapleton, who went from what was I think the third place right the way down to sixth in the space of one lap and everybody else thereafter has kind of remained where they are but inside the top six every single one of them either lost or gained a position indeed yes that's right so a lot of shuffling going on but it hasn't actually affected the cars that are there at the front in the leading group of is it still 10 do we reckon 10 11 thereabouts yeah, I'd imagine so, looking at the uh, the gaps between cars. The top five, top six have started to pull away a little bit. I think Darren Stapleton yeah. is really 
um, starting to bridge that gap really back to Costa Fritzis. Um, but yeah, 100%, I would say it's around about uh, the top 10 before you then get to a 2.1 second gap back to um, the treble five machine, of course, last year's winners, Tristan Judge in the Sukari racing machine. Then it's a 3.2 second gap back to AFK racing and Nick Creed. Nick Creed's done a lot of sim work with the Jordan K series. So it just shows that when you're running around on your own, as soon as you fall into that trap, you just can't really work with that back up the road. So, uh, great. Pack Dyson picked up here, 747, which is Jordan Bannon at the moment. In 16th place. Or thereabouts, it has to be all thereabouts because uh, Triple Eight is coming up on the inside. Who's in Triple Eight at the moment? A Fells, that's uh, Andrew Fells. The Boston Racing entry. So Richard Jett back in front, ahead of Johnny Milner. Leon Bidgeway third, Gordy Much fourth, Adrian Wood fifth, Darren Stapleton sixth. And seventh, number 333, Costa Caritis. And a new fastest lap that time around to Adrian Wood. Yeah, despite the dent, 115, sorry, not 115, 119.845 is the fastest lap of the race. The fastest lap in qualifying was by the number 81 car at 119.394. Fastest lap last year was 119.684. So what are we on at the moment? We're in a 19.845, so only yeah. one two tenths away. Yeah. And Richard Jepp, having got in the lead, is uh, not exactly breaking away, but there's no point doing it at this stage. If you can all work together, that's the ideal. Yes. Um, yeah, the ideal strategy but for the first time I think all race the top 10 top 13 now we'll wait as more cars cross the line top 14 top 15 <laughs> we get going. to top 16 no we get all the way to top 20 before we see any changes so the top 20 anyone inside that top 20 remained in the position they started the lap that's the first time we've seen it all race and we're already half an hour in that's right well everybody trying to keep a good position fast <laughs> at the same time not defending the track limits or running into somebody uh, Johnny Builders doesn't really it doesn't really know where to go because he's got uh, Leon Bidgeway on yeah. what will be his inside he's got um, uh, what I'm guessing is Gordy much on what will be his outside they dive their way towards Brooklyn's the inside rear wheel in the air on Leon, on uh, Johnny Milner's car there's a bit of traffic that's the Semperini car makes small contact with Johnny Milner so David Evans just having returned from the pit lane having got behind the wheel of that car gets caught up into the lead pack and he's struggling on where to go diving into the pit lane was Leon Bidgeway such a late call but dives straight in and we will see a change of driver presumably flying into the pit lane before he jumps on the brakes and then Hopefully we can hear from Chris Dawes as to whether this is, again, just another uh, another stop and who it is that's getting in. Will it be Matthew Weymouth or will it be uh, Mike Morais? I guess all will be revealed. I, I think it's a, it's a stop-go it's penalty. It's a penalty stop, it? yes. I didn't see anything pop up on, on our timing screen. No, but, it, um, it didn't, but uh, that's what's happening. The car yeah. being held in the area outside race control for cars to pay penalties at. Uh, and... I'm wondering whether it's got any connection with that fish in the rear. Uh, I think when, yeah, when he went into the tail end of the uh, 180 Shine automotive car and um, uh, Adrian Wood, I think, yeah, the, uh, uh, the race control have looked at that and uh, determined it was um, it was pretty much a push to pass. Um, it's quite a long hold. I was just thinking that. The leaders are already working their way in towards um, uh, in towards Luffield now. They've already worked their way through Brooklands. And still stationary is Leon Bidgeway. He'll be desperate to get going. Seems like an age. This. Out of Luffield now come our race leaders. He's still sat there. And of course, now he's got to rumble all the way to the end of the pit lane on um, or at yeah. the pit limit. So here come the leaders. He's going to be put a lap down, unfortunately. And Richard Jepp goes thundering by. And I'm not sure whether thundering is the correct adjective <laughs> to use when it's a Ford KA. But um, Richard Jepp remains in the lead. The top four remain as they are. However, Adrian Wood, bearing in mind uh, the aggressor in his previous transgression has just been uh, seen to, that being Leon Bidgeway. He's lost three places, unfortunately, has Adrian Wood on the lap prior. Um, 
Go on. I can tell you what that was, guys, because I just caught up with uh, with from the team. A little bit frustrated, to be honest, they are. It was uh, it, it was contact, as you say, into the back, but he, the driver, was very frustrated because saying that that car actually braked a heck of a lot earlier than anybody else was, and they had previously, but they deemed that it was uh, unavoidable. Oh, sorry, avoidable contact, and it was a one-minute stop go that they got. Yeah, that, it, well, it's, it felt like rather more than your ten seconds, yeah. or even your. 20 or 30 seconds it was a minute then thanks so Richard Jett continues to lead Johnny Milner and Gordy Much then Darren Stapleton in fourth place up to fifth place has come number 112 which is Robert Thomas at the wheel at the moment that's the renumbered 131 and after that in eighth place we have number 180 Adrian Wood in ninth place Number 114, Christian Kelly. And in 10th place, number 555, five, five, Tristan Judge. I've just noticed as well, Toby Owen seems to be back on a charge as well. That car's back to running on song and running at fairly competitive race pace because last time through, he posted a 1 minute 20.888, mm -hmm. one of the fastest cars we've got out there. but. Johnny Milner having gotten into the lead of the race, he's already having to start defending. In towards turn one, we've got a good little battle pack at the moment. That's um, got the car number 21 involved. So that will be Simon Top fighting away with all of the cars around him, namely one of the cars we saw have, have an issue in qualifying. That's the 747 La Motorsport with Jordan Bannon behind the wheel. So they're having a great little battle, but the lead pack working its way in towards uh, Brooklyn's once again. We may see Richard Jeb dive on the brakes up the inside for the lead of the race. Yes, the car pitches its way in as he jumps on the brakes, gets the rotation in the car. So both the Pro Am cars are on are inside the top three at the moment. We've got Richard Jepp in the lead car, then we've got Johnny Milner just sat behind, and then we get to the second of the Pro Am cars, Gordy Much. So it seems like they prepare a, a, a fairly quick um, race spec in your AKA. Yes, indeed. So the leading pack coming through Woodcut to complete its 24th lap. I reckon the leading pack is being slimmed down slightly. It's now down to about eight cars. Yeah, of course, we did lose yeah. um, uh, Leon Bidgeway because of that. Go on, uh, Chris. Uh, yeah, just to let you guys know, the uh, 275 uh, Team Lifeline car that will be receiving a black and orange flag imminently. We're not sure what the reason is. We've just sort of like got the uh, instruction to hang the black and orange out. So it'll have to come in. Hopefully I will find out because they'll get sent down to the team area uh, to, to sort of have a look and try and resolve whatever the mechanical malady is for that car. Yeah, I was going to say the, the usual offender is maybe an exhaust falling off or something like that, but you can hear that. And we can't really say I've heard anything too astray from, from any of the cars. I will look specifically at, at 275 Team Lifeline. Uh, next time through and that's the last thing they needed because they just fought their way into yes. the top 15 hadn't they so um, uh, Scott McIntyre will be um, far from impressed I fear but of course the, it, it might be an issue that he's unaware of that the marshals and race control have spotted so naturally he will have to come into the pit lane and get that attended to or just carrying on hoping that nobody will notice but they have <laughs> so you've got to respond to the flag but I'm just thinking back to that penalty that Leon Bidgeway was given a one minute stop go uh, that's, I think, probably making it clear to everybody else that if you do get into a bit, a bit of pushing and shoving, you could end up with a significant loss of, of uh, position. Yeah, it's really setting the precedent yeah. early, isn't it? That's right. So Johnny Milner then continues to lead the way in the number 46 car, Milner Racing. Ah, into the pit lane, we've got last year's winners. That's Sukaru Racing, Tristan Judge flying into the pit lane. Also into mm -hmm. the pit lane, we do have the 275 Team Lifeline car, Scott McIntyre, presumably responding to the black and orange flag. But if we've got cars coming into the pit lane anyway for driver changes, he can dive in, do a driver change, and attend to that um, the transgression, whatever yes. it is that's caused the black and orange flag. So it might somewhat work in his favour, or more or less damage the potential. So 275 then into the pits. It is uh, right in front of me here. They're having a look under because uh, they're not, no one seemed to be really too sure what the problem was. And I'm now going to flick towards the back and pick up. Is it they were concerned that it was fuel brought in by Scott McIntyre, incidentally? Yeah, I don't think he, get, he has to take a full blade, but uh, uh, they're, they're having a look at it. I got a feeling it may be uh, leaking some, uh, some fuel. 
and they're trying desperately. The driver's staying sat in there so that they can hopefully have a go uh, and sort that. And I also noted the uh, the Sukaru racing has been in and uh, yes. changed drivers as well. Oh, that's a change of driver, is it? Yeah. yeah. So that's 555 last year's winner, Tristan Judge, brought in. You either Peter Dickman or Chris Gibson is taking it over. So just to add to this 275, yes, it would appear that it is fuel that is coming out. And, and, and I remember seeing this here last year, actually, is that they go through the very fast corners here at Silverstone, uh, lean on the uh, the side, so I, yeah, the, the car's left-hand side, and the fuel starts coming out. So they're, they're actually just doing the simple one at the moment. They're trying to replace the, uh, the fuel cap so that it's not leaking out through that. So still some basics there, but they are looking underneath to make sure it's not coming from there. So they're kind of trying to eliminate the easiest option, I would suggest, to start with. He obviously wasn't there at the start of the race, otherwise it would have been picked up. I mean, we're half an hour into the race, over half an hour into the race now. So is it something that's been caused, for example, by running over a curb and dislodged something underneath? Certainly there's people Groveling around underneath number 275 now, which of course is uh, as a result of dropping down the order. But we've still got lots of cars that have yet to make a stop, so a pit stop at this stage is going to drop you a long way down the order. So Johnny Milner continues to lead in car 46 from In second place, number 81, Darren Stapleton. In third place, 12, Richard Jepp. Gordy Much, number eight, is fourth. And fifth is number 112, Robert Thomas. That's the leading group. Trying to keep out of each other's hair. Oh, uh, and, and I'd missed the fact, actually. I assumed it had gone back out, though. I'm sorry to say, the triple five car is in the garage up on front jacks. Oh, dear. Uh, Last so, year's winner. Yeah, they're looking at that, and uh, I will try. I'm going to try and grab a word, but uh, whilst I do that, oh, there's a lot of fluid all over the, uh, the garage floor, I'm afraid to report as well. Let me just uh, try and grab a word, but when I go in the garage, I'm pretty sure you lose me, so I'll bring them back to the front as soon as I can. Okay, thanks, Chris. So Johnny Milner leads for in car 46 from 81, Darren Stapleton. Number 17 dropped to third place for the moment, Richard Jett, but showing himself well able to lead the race. Uh, lower down, up into eighth place has come number 114, Christian Kelly. That's a two-driver car. Uh, and. Yeah, so Christian Kelly up into uh, eighth place. Chris? Yeah, I've, uh, I've managed to grab uh, God's gift, uh, as, as I was told to call him. Tristan, <laughs> I just got a dig to the rib there. Uh, Tristan Judge, uh, who was out in that triple five. Uh, you were just explaining to me that, sadly, you having to scream round in a low gear, which has then damaged the engine as well. Well, no, I think, I think the engine's probably OK, but... I just came onto the straight, third to fourth, but there was no way there was any fourth. There was no fourth, and there wasn't really anything. It was like a big wobbly stick. And I've just done the last lap in third gear, poor thing. Um, I don't know if it's linkage or gear box itself, but it ain't going to go very far. Clutch is working. <laughs> but in fairness, they're all over it, so they are trying to get it repaired and out. Oh, absolutely. We've still got a chance of the win. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. You know, so, we're home. We've got a chance to just you know, ca carry on the winning retreat. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But I mean, obviously, I saw the fluid all over, so that's literally from where the engine's yeah, overheated. For some reason, for some reason, the fan didn't kick in just then, but I've just done that last lap at 6,000 revs yeah. in third, and so, so the ball is a thing. thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but, but the, the fan, fan didn't, didn't kick in, which was a bit of a bizarre one, because that was doing it this morning, because we tested it. <laughs> there we go. Okay. There we go. So I think the. Uh, uh, Probably, hopefully, the overheating is trivial, but the uh, a lack of being able to go forward might be a little more permanent. It's probably limiting. Yes, I'll give you that. Yes, <laughs> yes. Can we go backwards? Uh, yeah. Well, fingers crossed, Tristan. Fingers. Well, we, you, like you say, you want to pick up a, another good result here. Well, it was going well. I was just about holding on to the back of the front pack. I was desperately trying to find another uh, tiny bit of uh, half a second to get back on the toe of the front pack, but. 
That How? Is I mean, you had a grandstand seat. That front pack was quite incredible to watch. I was there going, do they know it's five hours? I was quite happy for them to do that, because yeah. that could keep me in touch. And if I could just get that half second, I'd be right on the back of them. Oh, they, they're willing to play. They're very welcome to play. Because it would break their car, wouldn't it? It would have no problem to mine. <laughs> no, exactly. You are keep, keep it out of harm's way. I mean, what, what is it like, though, if you are uh, driving along and you've, you've lost the toe, can you get it back again? If you're lucky. If, if, if they were to be so kind in front and slow down a bit, yes. that, was, and that was why I was hoping they were dicing, so that they could just slow each other down a tiny bit. But we had a good toe go in, but then one of the other cars, ironically, I think from this team, I think was losing power on the straight once or twice, the auto tech car, just suddenly lost 100 yards. And then, because he got in my way, I lost the toe. But there we go, that's life, that's life, that's racing. Um, but it's it also is, why you enjoy this racing because it's fun, isn't it? Exactly, and it was it was just tiny, tiny little things like that that can yeah turn the race. Um, just I mean, at the end of the day, it was what 50 yards, and it'd be unlikely that position is 50 yards strong at the end of this race. But how does the the mentality now work? I mean, they're clearly busy trying to get this one sorted. It's a five-hour race, and yeah, okay, your point being is that the wind's probably gone, but you still want to get the car back out and, and take part. Yeah, there's some beer in the fridge. I, I don't think I'm, I, I don't know how long this will take, but I know they did at Anglesey a clutch change, which is similar, in 40 minutes. So this might well be not dissimilar. And, um, and that actually does give me a chance to go back out and play again. But I, I, the, 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 otherwise, the beer is in the fridge. <laughs> I'll be back there later then. <laughs> Thanks, Tristan. Uh, Chris, Take care. whilst you're there, could yeah. you uh, ask what the uh, next driver, who the next driver will be? Oh, OK, was, hang on. Assuming it won't be Tristan. No, you'd imagine it, it would be... Probably Chris is the yeah, answer. I say, you'd imagine it would right. be Chris Hilson. So Chris, Chris Hilson, Hilson yeah. probably will be next um, uh, in that car. And I've just... I've been, whilst I've been sat here, I've been watching Gordy Much scrap away with Costa Critsis. And you've got to think as well, Costa, he started in 18th place and he's now fighting away in the top five. That's a Impressive. brilliant, yeah. brilliant start to his race. Yeah. And I said at the start of the day, you've got to keep an eye on him because he's very quick. He can be quite aggressive, but a very quick driver. And he's standing him in good stead because he's uh, yeah, in that top five at the moment. And um, there's been a number of occasions you can see just if the sun's at the right angle or the camera's at the right angle, you can see the driver soaring away at the wheel, just trying to get them straight out of the corner because you almost back them in. You drive them like a go-kart and you steer with that rear axle. It's all the power through the front. Oh, it's, yeah, monumental power figures, enough to spin the world the other way, as some have said. So, um, <laughs> With uh, Johnny Milner still leading the way, still giving chase is Richard Jeff, and then you get back to Darren Stapleton. And then there's a bit of a gap back to what was Gordy Butch, but Costa Critz is now up into fourth place. So the top three have worked away. They will appear uh, heading into Woodcut now. So there are the top three. And then we've got one of the auto tech cars. That's car number 64 that I believe is a lap down now. Um, and then we get back to Costa Critz's Cordy Much, David Drinkwater, and um, among others, we've got the um, uh, 112 with Robert Thomas that's in there as well. Then just over the line, we get Christine Kelly and Toby Owen was the car um, that uh, it was that was slowing down that Tristan Judge was referring to one of the auto tech cars. Yeah. Um, and we noticed that at the time, it, it, Toby Owen just seemed to lose a bit of power yeah, in a straight line. It, it's back running on song now, um, sat in ninth place, but whatever it was, it, it can always come back. Right, so our leading group is gradually being reduced in numbers, but uh, Kyrit is, is staying in, well, keeping in touch, has caught them up. He's got ahead of Gordy Much, as Jack has said. He's just got three more to work his way through, and he could be in the lead from a long way. What, what did you say he was on the grid? Uh, 18th place. 18th, yes. Might throw. Uh, and could be a leader before we've worked our way through the first stint or the first hour. So uh, most cars, most drivers have got uh, some playmates. There we've got 333 coming through on screen. Oh, that was a missed gear there, I think, for car number 44. So Graves Motorsport with David Ward behind the wheel. And of course, the addition to that car, he's a lap down. And it's going from bad to worse. He's currently down in 31st, pl 31st place. A missed gear. You could hear the revs really spike <laughs> as he went for that gear. And he's since then, that, if anything, that's helped him let the, uh, the the faster cars go through. But Costa Critzis, I think that the main thing now is 
he's no longer towing onto the back of people. He's punching the hole yeah, in the air right. and needs to try and overcome the three-second margin that he's got up to Darren Stapleton all on his own, punching that hole in the air. This is when you could see him using a bit of traffic, but he's also got Gordy Much, who still wants to now get back in front and get to fourth place. He may be waving or gesturing out of the windscreen to say, go on, let's work together, let's push each other. And you do see that fairly often. Now it's all go for the lead as well, because Johnny Milner on the outside, he started this lap in the lead. We cut back as they dive their way in towards Brooklands, and Johnny Milner's, whilst he's got his lights ablaze, it's not making him go any faster at the moment. <laughs> because he's down into what is third place. Richard Jeff in the lead, Darren Stapleton uh, sat there in second place. And uh, there's a few tricks that you can do. It's recommended that you keep your lights off for as long as you can. You turn the fan all the way up on all the way hot because it takes the hot air out of the engine and you can gain an entire one or two horsepower, which doesn't sound like much, but in these, it, it is a noticeable difference. That's the turbo boost, is it? That's the turbo boost, yeah, absolutely. That's the nitro boost. Chris? Uh, yeah, just to bring you, I've been having a wonderful uh, catch-up with uh, uh, the, the very well-known Lawrence Davey uh, of LDR Racing. Mm. Um, sadly, he's running the car rather than, the, than out there in his team, and they're having a really, really good laugh. And uh, they, he jumped on the radio to his driver, and he said, uh, go faster, go faster, because they're getting near to the pit stop. And he said, we need to, you to pull out a second on this lap. Can you do it? And then he went and did it and went, yeah, what do you want me to do next, was the message back again. And they're having so much fun down here. It is just brilliant to see. Which car is that? That will be the uh, so the LDR Number 49. 49, 49 yeah. right. and, and to answer your question, if it came next, David Bywater is going to be jumping in that one next. Uh, and so they're just trying to pull out as much as a gap as possible. Uh, but honestly, the fun, the banter that is going on where they're just having a riot down there. Uh, and uh, it's, it's what this is really about, the Enduro KA. Absolutely. You're supposed to enjoy it as well, aren't you? Yes, absolutely. You're never going to become a Formula 1 driver on the basis of what you're doing. This. Don't right. tell Lawrence that, though. Oh, he still has aspirations, has he? <laughs> well, come on, Lawrence Davey, has got aspirations for everything. He's, uh, but it's, it's just a shame we don't see him behind the wheel as much these days, where he's running well, he's the He's a cars. legend in legends, wasn't he? Yeah, and minis as well, of course. Yeah, indeed. So, uh, top three back towards Cops Corner and they remain in the order that they are so too does the rest of the top eight at the moment Costa Crixis he's taken two tenths out of Johnny Milner and I think with the, that lead trio just continuing yeah. to battle that's just allowing Costa Crixis just to get a slight bit closer further back the 11 tenths racing car um, that being in the hands of Brian Crawford He's got the treble eight of Andrew Fells just sat behind just behind him is the one two six that's um, Michael McCullum just sat behind as well he's so so close in in some of these packs we said it at the start of the day you will see packs starting to form and three amigos being edged off the circuit very slightly that's by all the catastrophe car of robert thomas it almost was a catastrophe at that point because in a straight line fighting each other onto the grass i think that's referred to as suboptimal is it i think so okay dr racing on the grass doesn't tend to work not no unless it's rally cross i suppose but you have to go on the grass occasionally more than that so up to 13th place has risen number 11 for uh, Byron Crawford in that car at the moment. It's not, that's uh, a yet to stop car. So who's the leading pit stopper at the moment? I would say Leon Bidgeway, but of course he came in and served a penalty. So um, David Murphy started the NGM car. I would be... Down there. There we are. Yeah. That David Murphy started that car. So too did Leon Bidgeway. I would say the, it's got to be... David Evans, he's the, that's the only team to have done a driver swap, to, to my knowledge. Um, Sabrini Racing, car number 27. They're currently sat 30 second place. Chris? To, uh, the uh, 275 car has come back in again. I think you were possibly reporting that, and it's gone yes. straight into the garage, so they're still looking to sort that. In also is the 95 car. That we had a note that said, although it said in the program Graves Motorsport, it had that change to what did it say, WKD Motorsport. Yeah, WKD, yeah. It still has Graves Motorsport on it, so I'd imagine that there is still quite a link between those guys. In fact, is that yeah, Sam Strong's down there running that one, but it's got a big old dint in the uh, the right hand side. They are. This is an interesting one. We haven't seen this yet. They are refueling guys. So these ones have got the uh, the tough jug dropping fuel into it. Um, for 95. So naturally, uh, I'm assuming that the way it'll work is Ross will jump out of the car, jump onto the fire extinguisher whilst it's being refuelled, and then is it going to be, is that Marcus Clutton getting in or Lee Taylor? Do you know? Right, so the answer is no, the driver isn't doing the fire extinguisher. They've got someone else all uh, uh, properly 
suited and booted up, including a, a slightly different helmet and goggles to, to protect them. So the driver's back behind the line, making sure they're far enough away from it. It isn't Marcus Clutton because he's in his jeans and trainers, so it looks like he's not planning to go out just yet. In fact, there's no one looking <laughs> particularly so ready. Maybe jumping back in. I, I've got a feeling as well, uh, you can't recognise him with a helmet and goggles on, but I'm pretty sure that uh, it is actually David Graves himself that is doing the refuelling. So he's got his uh, race overalls on because it's the most obvious fireproof suit to throw on. They've done, they've finished that in their Stormtrooper goggles and helmet. And in, it's possibly the same driver actually. No, no the driver's walked away, my apologies. Who's jumping in, Marcus? Lee Taylor, sorry. Lee Taylor. <laughs> he had to look then. He, he couldn't remember. <laughs> He's in the zone. He's in the zone. But uh, Lee Taylor's jumping into the 95 car now. Real. So Lee Taylor in to the WKD Motorsport car. As far as what's been going on further back, you can see Pro-Am Racing, or one of the drivers of Pro-Am Racing gear, still working away. They have an issue. I think they're having an issue now with the... Uh, with the filler neck and the, the fuel filler cap on the 275 Team Lifeline car, it's all going wrong for them. I think somebody needs to throw them a lifeline in this race. Indeed. So also, the 49 car is in as well, and that just looks like a, a, a routine stop. So that is LDR that we knew was uh, sort of trying to pull out a bit of a gap on that stint, and then David Bywater will be jumping into that one. Right, we've got the leading cars on view at the moment as they turn through Cops Corner. Uh, in fact, the first three making uh, a bit of a break now. That's uh, Richard Jett, Dan Stapleton and Johnny Milner. And next one along, having got ahead of Gordy Much, of course, is number 333 with uh, Costa Kiretis at the wheel. And behind him, he's made great progress on a well down the grid position. Gordy Much is in fifth place. Robert Thomas, sixth in number 112. 275 is going back out onto circuit again, so fingers crossed they've got that sorted. Good stuff. And also we noticed that the LDR Performance Student car is back out on circuit after David Bywater's just jumped behind the wheel. And Costa Crixis, obviously he's come from a long way back, 18th on the grid, and worked his way right the way up to fourth, including past Gordy Much. But more importantly, when he got past Gordy, he had 3.1 seconds to try and overcome. That's now down to 2.6 away from the, the tail of that top three. So Costa Crixis, he's getting closer <laughs> and closer. Down to you, Chris. Yeah, I've uh, I have been summoned, as, uh, as Lawrence said there, is that I uh, uh, got at uh, I've got to make sure I get this right. Andy Greer Hardy. That's the one. Uh, we were watch I was stood with, uh, with Lawrence for a little while when you were getting the very helpful advice that was go quicker. Yes, uh, much the same as normal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the ba bad news is, is that apparently you were then doing it. Exactly, yeah. I listened and uh, got my foot to the floor. I, I mean, I love that, that there's so much to play. Is that I think they, he's, he made a message that he needed a second's gap and, and you did it. Yes, yeah, yeah. But a terrible start. There was cars all over the place, and that was just avoidance. And I dropped so many places back, and that was just battling back from there on. I mean, and that that sort of lead pack of about what what was it? I think it was ten cars that were just going at it like it was a sprint race. I know, I know, it's crazy out there at different points. <laughs> but it's just nice to have a breather, a gap, you know. I, I guess that's the, that's the thing with this racing is that although we can sit here going it's a five hour race for you as a driver you're like going no 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 i've just been out there i don't know how long has gone now half an hour or whatever it might be 45 minutes maybe i feel like feels like an hour and a half <laughs> <laughs> but that is kind of your your bit there even if you go back in that's a, a long work a lot further down the road so you're not racing five hours so you're kind of still going for it i should go back in probably next it's the plan uh, if there's no safety cars and uh, any accidents or anything like that, hopefully not, cross fingers, and uh, I'll be back in. And, and that's a key, uh, another thing that I find interesting, you guys genuinely have tactics, don't you, for this, but you also have to be flexible if things happen that change them. Yeah, we have a plan at the start, but that's flexible. If there's a safety car, say there'd have been a uh, safety car 10 minutes ago, I'd have been under the safety car. So, you know, get one of the pit stops and out of the way in the safety car, that is uh, definitely good. Absolutely, good to see you, Andy. Thanks very much. So that's uh, Andy from the 49 uh, car there. Uh, a bit of an insight into that it's more than just foot to the floor. There are tactics of who does what and when. And hence we're seeing that we had the odd driver change. We've also had, I think, one future uh, f refuel as well. So a few things at play here. Yes, the leading pit stopper then. Uh, oh, what have we seen here? Car number 11. What's it doing? 
spinning. Yeah, 11 centimetres forward in towards Cops Corner, I think, spun through um, 180 degrees. They've got it back going again, but um, yeah, it's, it's one of those where as soon as Andrew Greer Hardy mentioned a safety car, and he uh, <laughs> almost, <laughs> almost brought one upon us, but uh, not the case this time. Um, but yeah, as you, as you say, looking at, at the, the top nine, it remains as it is. But it's those little little changes in the mid-pack yeah. that may slowly start to take effect. What if Costa crits this? He should start to appear out of Woodkid at any moment now. Should. He's already gone through, in fact. And 2.4 seconds now, the gap, up to the tail end of Johnny Milton. He's, down. he's getting yeah. closer. Yeah, it is uh, being chipped away at. It's three seconds only that uh, car 333 we're talking about is away from the leading car, which is uh, number 12. Yeah, indeed. We've got a good little battle going on. This is further back. This is between Jordan Bannon and Lar Motorsport in the 747 and Andrew Fells in the treble eight Boston racing entry. So they're having a great little scrap on the, on the run down towards Cops Corner. They go through nose to tail, and then it's the it's very slight incline. You don't really notice it too much, but you do, in fact, go uphill and almost crest a rise mm, in towards the uh, in towards the maggot spec it's section. Silverstone is not a flat circuit. No, it, is, it, it, it very much isn't. You look at it and think, oh, it's flat. It really, really isn't. There, there's a, quite a lot of undulation changes that you don't quite notice. And then down in towards Brooklands, um, you almost, again, just go over a slight crest and then yeah. in, in towards Brooklands there. Um, but for the moment, the treble eight of uh, Andrew Fells is now in front of Jordan Bannon for La Motorsport, uh, LAWR. And looking for our leaders over the line, Richard Jeff and Darren Stapleton remain as they are, but I think the pair of them have pulled away very slightly um, from Johnny Milner. Yeah, Johnny Milner's almost six tenths away from the tail of Darren Stapleton. Darren Stapleton is um, pretty much pinging the same message yeah. as, uh, as Richard Jeff on the transponder, 0 0.165 of a second. Costa Creatis has fallen away slightly, 2.7 seconds now, but again, that could be traffic slowly starting to come in because the longer we get into this race, the further cars that will go a lap down and the further traffic that will have um, that will have some sort of sway on this race. There were the two leaders on the screen, not in the leading two places on the, the, the shot because they are lapping a slower car now as they go on to the Wellington Strait. Uh, and the third place car number 46, Johnny Milner, staying in touch with them, but being closed in, well, not that time around, actually. The gap's gone up a little bit. Slower lap for... Caritas and Gordy much behind him, right behind him actually. So that's another little. Those, that's the leading trio. Jep Stapleton and Milner, and then Caritas and Much together. Yeah, still being worked on very heavily is the Treble Five Sukari Racing Car. Of course, Tristan Judge was in that car. We're guessing it will be um, Chris Hilson that will get behind the wheel. Chris, down in the pit lane. Yeah, I'm stood next to the uh, the camera looking at this, and it was quite incredible. The glamour of motorsport is the uh, the mechanic that you will have seen underneath the car there. They're trying to sort of get a new gearbox in there. Suddenly shouted to everyone, and they had to come running over with, uh, with paper towels because it had obviously spurted the fluid all over the mechanic underneath <laughs> there uh, and all over the floor, and they were mopping it from his head and his face and his neck and on, on the floor so he wasn't then lying in it. It's glamorous, this motor racing, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it really is. It, the thing is, that could be one of a number of things. If it's gearbox oil, it will take forever to try, uh, try, try and get out. At least it's not entry oil. That would be a, a lot worse as well, because that, that's much, much harder to, uh, to clean up. So I'm sure I think problems. the hope is that it will actually be the water, because, of course, this one was, uh, you know, after revving round in third gear, came in and the fan didn't kick in, so it just sort of, like, spewed the fluid everywhere as it overheated. Uh, so I'm hoping it might just be the legacy of that because that car is perched up rather high Thankfully a lot more stable than we saw it earlier. It was kind of wobbling But now that they're under it, I'm glad to say that it is quite stable now. You'd get under it yourself, would you Chris? I, I would. I, are, you, am I, are we still on camera here now? Yes, we are. Try. Just just quickly come and have a look at this over here Ben because I love the fact that they don't keep it all secret. Have a look at the board down here We've got everything that's going on the race order that Tristan judges start in 12 Oh, you lost me there. 12.24 to 13.04. If there's a safety car, then you're going to pit. They're gonna, they were going to fuel. Then Chris Hilson was going out, and they've got the times for that. And how much fuel? 20 to 30 litres. Peter Dignan out 14.49 to 16.24. A splash and dash by the looks of it. Uh, plus front left. 
Now we're getting it here. Then it's Tristan Judge that's going out. Now they're hiding it. We've got PSI on the tyre pressures and everything as well. Uh, I don't think they're that worried about hiding it if he's out here on the front of the garage. But I just love the detail that they yeah. go into this, uh, don't uh, you? A yacht, it, it seems to me, interfering with the way this race is going. Uh, well, moment, it's on the front of their garage, so they're not hiding it, are they? So it's OK. It's OK. Uh, incidentally, we've also got the 180 car yeah. that is in. That's a, a, a normal stop. They are refueling as well. Yeah, can you go figure out? Because that's one of the four car entries that we've got. We've only got six. Um, four, dri or four driver entries, pardon yes. me. We've only got six four driver entries, and that is one of them. Adrian Wood should have jumped out, and it can either be Colin French, Nathan Brown, or Thomas Wood um, that will be uh, getting into that car. And they've been in a good position all race, even yes. after the um, uh, uh, the incident with... Uh, who was it at the start of the race? Um, trying to figure out. Bidgeway. Leon Bidgeway. Yeah, Leon Bidgeway um, that uh, eventually got penalised for the, for the uh, issue there. Johnny Milner's back into the lead of the race. Richard Jepp down into second, Darren Stapleton down into third. So we can see on the screen, at least in the pit lane, fuel being poured into the Shine Automotive car before that car will retake to the circuit. We've got under four hours remaining now. Just uh, going back to number 180, my recollection from watching the qualifying session is that Adrian Wood was the quickest driver in that car. Uh, so anyway, he's now the one in, as you said. And Thomas Wood is getting in. Right. Do they look like brothers, father and son? But, uh, well, now you're testing going me. Going by their first names, I would think that Adrian's a father and Tom is the son. I, yes, I think that Adrian's at the back of the garage and uh, having just briefly spoken to Thomas, I would suggest father and son. It's all changed further down. I know we've got cars in the pit lane. We've actually got yeah. the number 96 in um, uh, as well, Chris. So um, we're going we're gonna to put you to work now. We're getting into the uh, pit window because we are over an hour in. This is when the pit, the pit lane starts to get busy. So the Porsche Carrera Motorsport car, of course, that's the car that started from the pit lane after having a non-compliant exhaust. It started the race with Mark Carey behind the wheel. It will either be uh, Ben Smith or or Ben Smithwell or uh, Simon Childs that will uh, uh, jump behind the wheel. So we're just working our way down the pit lane. Go on, Chris. It's uh, Childs that's jumping in now. I love it when they put their name on the helmet. It does help, doesn't it? Yes. Uh, just sort of uh, putting the seat back in the, it's still which, in the- Which one are you talking about? Uh, 96. 96, right. Uh, the car, the seat just got pushed back in the same way used to do with our uh, road car, so that was good to see. No fuel for this time. They are literally doing a driver's change, and they will then be uh, launching themselves straight back in. The, uh, the officials keeping a watch in brief to make sure that they are belted in properly before they're released, because otherwise that will incur a penalty. If uh, they're, they're sort of still tightening them up as they're trundling down the pit lane, they'll be called straight back in again. You've got to think as well, maybe maybe here more than um, other places, you probably burn a bit more fuel here, but as such is the, the nature of the circuit because you send, spend so much time flat out. Yeah, so still... Oh, no, we, have, we mentioned the fact that Dallas Stapleton now leads. Uh, yes. Yeah, number 81 from Johnny Milner and Richard Jepp, those three gradually but it's very gradual catching up on the part of uh, the number 333 car in fourth place in the hands of Claritis. then Gordy Much down David Drinkwater Robert Thomas in seventh place number 112 all those yet to make a stop the leading pit stopper is Leon Bidgeway number three in 22nd place of course, he, he, that will be classified as his stop-go penalty, won't it, when he came into the pit lane to serve that. That's right, that so counts as one of their... Yeah, so it will be... It, I, in theory, that class is, yeah, like you say, as a, uh, as a pit stop. But, On um, the screen. Yes, but of course, he's still got to uh, come in and uh, and hand over to whether it be Ma Matthew Weymouth or, or Mike Morice. But in terms of um, that top ten, they've really started to calm down. There's not too much changing of position apart from... The 126, Michael McCullum, just outside of the top ten, lost two places on the lap prior, and it is, um, uh, yeah, back at Simon Childs, as you said, behind the wheel mm -hmm. of the Porsche Carrera Motorsport car, back out onto circuit in what is 26th place. I think by saying things have quietened down, they will, will they will Im immediately ge generate more friction on the draw, racing on the track, because uh, so gaps aren't big in between the first three, 0.6 first to second, 0.2. Set to third. 
Yeah, and Mr. Kriatsis is now only, what, 2.2 seconds yeah. away. Excuse oh, he's jumped back up to three, unfortunately, mainly because Gordy Murch has got back in front of Costa Kriatsis. Ah, now, why has that happened? Gordy could say brilliant driving on his part, but uh, he is now, as you say, in fourth place, and Kriatsis, for the first time in the race, I think, has actually lost a place. Yeah, that's <laughs> it's not happened all race, really, for, uh, uh, for Costa. But yeah, a much slower lap from him, a 21.3 compared to the low 20s, and even the 19s that we've seen him in. Um, so Costa still, I think, with um, with a mistake at this stage in the race, not quite what he was looking for, but we will be getting closer and closer to the pit lane becoming an ever busier place. And of course, Chris, um, I'd, I'd recommend you, you get yourself a sit down before you, you're running from top to bottom of, uh, of that side of the pit lane. In towards Brooklyn's go our race leaders. It is still Darren Stapleton leading the way from uh, Johnny Milner, he's got Richard Jepp just behind. They're continuing to deal with a bit of traffic and you can't quite pick them out in the background. At the moment, you've got the number 55 machine getting uh, all involved in the leaders battle. Mm. That's Cash Strapped Racing with Ben Smith behind the wheel, one of the uh, two driver cars into the pit lane as well. I think that may be number six um, in the hands of David Murphy. We saw him have the mistake on the first lap of the race and into the pit lane comes David Murphy. So he will hand over to uh, Peter Simmons, again, another uh, dual driver car um, and we've got uh, Burton Power Racing in so mm. Tom Valentine I can see that he's jumped out um, looking at the overalls I'm guessing that is Andy Burton ready to get in you'll have to uh, bring us an update on that as and when you've got that uh, Chris but into the pit lane comes the number six of David Murphy and yet being directed into the gra into the garage or into the uh, um, into his pit box so Peter Simmons will jump behind the wheel but as, as we, we said earlier on in pit lane is just going to slowly become busier and busier now it, it will the way thing because not that many have made a pit stop yet we've got on the, how many one two three four five six seven eight eight have made one stop plus two have made two stops but obviously those aren't mandatory stops they're problem stops and the new fastest lap gordy much is uh, on a roll now he's just on a 190.742 Having recently relieved Coritis of fourth place, what can he do about catching the top three? So with whom he was dicing early on, but Gordy Much then in fourth place, 2.282 seconds behind Richard Late Jeff in third. Late. Yeah, so having uh, got through and passed Costa Critzis, he's put, built that gap nice and early, hasn't he? It was one second last time they went through, 2.1 yeah. seconds now, the gap between Costa and Gordy. So whatever Gordy's found, maybe it's an extra gear or he's picked up that fourth gear that Sukuru Mason racing and missing somewhere out there because um, what a brilliant lap it has been from Gordy Much. He's sta starting to close up two seconds away from our top three. Down to you, Chris. Yeah, just to update you uh, on the uh, the number one car, Tom Valentine, as you know, has jumped out of that one. And you are right, Andy Burton is now jumping in. Free fuel is finished. Hence, they're strapping Andy back, uh, into that car and he'll be released out to the circuit. Oh, they're pushing it back before they finish putting the netting up. I was going to say the car fires up, but I think that's an exaggeration, isn't it, really? But uh, it's the ignition has started, yeah, the and off he gets. goes back into the race. I think the way to put it is the car has begun. Yeah, yeah that, that, that's a bit more <laughs> but appropriate, it's, uh, it? yeah. But it's the KA. I can see that um, we have got more and more red dots on my... Um, uh, on, on my notes, clearly right, stating yeah. we've got second uh, second drivers slowly working their way um, into the cars, into the pit lane once again is Lifeline Motor, uh, Team Lifeline 275 um, with Scott McIntyre still behind the wheel. Hopefully this is just one of their standard stops that this time they can get the driver change um, and the refueling done and out of the way without having to attend to any mechanical difficulties. Back over the line go our uh, race leaders. This time it's Richard Jepp. Um, in second place, he's worked his way through and past uh, Johnny Milner. So Darren Stapleton still leading the way. Gordy Much has got that gap down oh, to yeah. 1.2 seconds now. And Costa Critzis isn't really falling away because last time through he said his personal fastest lap of the race with a 1 minute 19.832. So I've got a feeling this could be five for the lead. He said, if you're watching, you'll notice that the cars all go into the pits and have to park at a 45 degree angle. Uh, to the direct, uh, main direction of the pit lane or to accommodate, should all the cars arrive in the pit lane at the same time, in order to accommodate them all neatly and tidily rather than having to line up parallel with the pits uh, and in some cases do it side by side, which is not desirable. So uh, it's all neatly done, like with British touring cars when, for example, they go to Alton Park. 
The good news for 275 is it is in at that angle you were talking about with the fuel jug filling it back up again. So fingers crossed that means that the issue they've been having has sorted. I was hearing the stories that apparently where it was uh, kicking the fuel out that was the uh, being called in is that they had the whole um, you know the screwing section out and uh, it was sort of a mixture of either sorting it resealing it or trying to show that it was working fine uh, and, and then eventually it went out we are getting what looks like a driver's change because I'm sure that's uh, a different driver's about to get in this is for what 275 275 yeah, yeah. yeah. So yes, I'm sure they're changing fuel in is finished and uh, in gets the new driver and, and it literally is as quick as they possibly can do it as well. There's no sort of sitting here for a particular amount of time. They're getting the uh, refueling if they're doing thus, which is why you've got the strategy coming in, is that they're not just going to refuel all the time. If they can you know, save that time that it takes to let gravity do its job and uh, dump some fuel into it and just do a driver change, then they're back out and back into the race quicker. I seem to remember that Scott McIntyre was driving that car initially. Yeah. Do, do, do Jack's dots tell us that? Yeah, Scott McIntyre started that car. Right, but who's taking it over now? Chris, over to you again. We do have 128 into the pit lane as well, Chris. So you've got a 126, pardon me. I think that's uh, Michael McCollum's hand over to Neil Smith. So if Michael McCollum started, yes. he's only got one option, and that's Neil Smith. So Neil Smith will be getting behind the wheel. I'm sure Chris is asking questions down at Team Life. Michael. Oh, I'm just suddenly diving out of the way. It doesn't matter what the cars are. You still get in the way when they're coming in with their pit stops. The 126 aims straight towards me. Uh, right, so the uh, 275 car, I can confirm it's Jake Lane that is now behind the wheel of that one. Yeah. Uh, and I said, have you sorted it out, the issue? And they said, we don't know, because it doesn't make sense what was happening. It looks like it was coming from the cap. And bless them, one of the other teams has given us another fuel cap. So that is what's happened there. 126, we've got the two drivers here just conversing. And it looks like it is Neil Smith. Smith that's jumping out in that one, which is fairly obvious because it's a two-car team, isn't it? It's jumping in or out of it? In. 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 Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, and I can see that uh, the top ten have remained exactly as they are. What of Gordy Munch's progress? Well, he's part of that top three now, which has become the top four. Costa Crisis has really fallen away, three seconds yeah, away yeah, from, exactly. from uh, Gordy Munch. So whatever has happened to Gordy, maybe he's had the go-ahead over the radio to push a lot harder. But he's been keeping pace in reserve, evidently, because we've now got four cars fighting over the lead. It's still Darren Stapleton leading the way ahead of Richard Jebb. Uh, then it is uh, Johnny Milner and Gordy Much that is well and truly there. So we've got both the Pro-Am cars, Gordy Much up into third place. So having been dropped by this pack, he's up into third, whilst the sister car of Richard Jeff is trying to fight his way into the lead, and I think he just might be able to do it up the inside on the run through Luffield. So Richard Jeff into the lead of the race, then Darren Stapleton, then it's Gordy Much and Johnny Milner, but, but it seems like Gordy Much has arrived on the scene and just started to show everybody how's it done. But now we're seeing Darren Stapleton fight back around the outside through Woodcut. Yeah. We'll break the beam and he will be classified as the leader in that lap so this is going to be broken up fairly soon isn't it because they're going to have to make their first mandatory stop uh, those uh, leading cars but it's uh, some good racing going on here and uh, i suppose it is a case of cream rising to the top with uh, gordy much and johnny Milner being there in the with the greatest experience say of the drivers in the race actually Started to see those, those drivers just pick their way through. It would be good, uh, Chris, to maybe grab a word with Gordy because, of course, just a couple of weeks ago he was racing GT4 mm. machinery and now he's jumped into an Enduro KA and they're uh, total opposites. We're three wide for the lead of the race. We've got Darren Stapleton on what would be the yeah. inside. Then we've got Richard Jepp in the middle, Gordy Much on the outside. And I think it was five. And then we've got Johnny <laughs> Milner who's tried to make it four, maybe five wide because there's lap traffic yes. involved out of all of that. Uh, Richard Jeff has decided discretion is the better part of Valor and we've got Gordy Much to the lead of the race he's being helped through Luffield contact between second and third the number 81 of Darren Stapleton up the inside of car number 46 that's Johnny Milner so they all came together and Gordy Much he's got quite a healthy lead and he's now being chased by the second of the two Pro-Am cars Richard Jeff so through comes Gordy Much then we've got Richard Jeff Johnny Milner is still being hunted down by Darren Stapleton after all of that Costa Kriitsis he's in on the mix he was three and a half seconds away it's now two tenths is this the first time Gordy Much has actually led the race yes I mean he's been in the leading group but uh, not only is he leading as you say but he's pulling away contact between Costa Kriitsis and Darren Stapleton it's gone from bad to worse it looked like Costa was on the inside and Darren turned in it was in very 
very much in his blind spot. So Costa Kriitsis um, will work his way up into fourth place now. Maybe not the way he wanted to. Car two is in. That's the NJMs and PDCs cars. It was started by Adam Bird. It's got a, it's either got Union McGuinness or Cat Sells or even Grant Grove to jump behind the wheel of that car. You'll have to try and pick that one out, Chris. We'll wait for the timing screen to update. But Gordy Much in the lead of the race. Then it's Richard Jepp. Then it is Johnny Milner, followed by Costa Kriatsis, who we thought was out of it for the moment. He's cut, overcome those three seconds and he's up into fourth. And Darren Stapleton, he's had a fairly scrappy lap and he's now down into fifth. Go on, Chris. Grant Grove is getting in the number two car next. Brilliant stuff. Thank you very much for that. I've got a feeling as soon as one of these top five pits, everybody else will as well. They will try and match each other's strategy as best they can. Um, Pro-Am Racing, they may struggle with that because two cars both in at the same time. That's a big old job for the Pro-Am Racing team. But we wait for them to work, th work their way through Luffield, which they do, and then uh, through the very quick right at Woodcut. So Gordy Much breaks the beam in the lead of the race. Then it's Richard Jepp and Johnny Milner running round as the top three. And then after a short break, there is the arrival of Costa Criticis, who's 3.2 seconds away now from Johnny Milner. So having just got into that top three battle, he's got into fourth place and he's 3.2 seconds away again. He'll be struggling to understand how that happened. Into the pit lane comes car number 74. That's the Orca Sport car with Guy Wilson presumably jumping, an, uh, jumping out to hand over to Peter Child, Roger Hassan or Michael Davis. Well, it's a fair bit of action, but the, the gaudy much, well, this must be partly team tactics here, Pro-Am Racing, it's no, no fluke that they've arrived with two of their cars in the first two places. Triple five is going back out onto the circuit Hooray. after a gearbox change. Great stuff, and I'm assuming it's Chris Hilson behind the wheel. Um, into the bit lane, we've now got car number 22, that's AFK Racing, so Nick Creed comes in to either hand over to Nick Berg, uh, Tim Parsons or Natalie Knowles, so all that will be revealed, uh, I'm sure, as the race wears on. What of our pitters so far? So Nick Creed is still classified in 14th place. Where of Leon, uh, Leon Bidgeway? He's sat there in 17th place, still yet to pit and do his driver change. Go on, Chris. Uh, Guy Wilkinson jumping in 74. All right. Great stuff. So Guy Wilkinson, I thought, had started that car, uh, uh, to be honest. Uh, no, because you said someone else was jumping out. Uh, Roger Hassan's jumped out. Roger Hassan. Guy Wilkinson's out. jumping in. Okay. Oh, so 74 was started by Roger Hassan, yes. And Guy Wilkinson is now in control of it. And I'm pretty sure that I spotted it was uh, 22 has been taken over by Natalie Knowles. Taken over from Nick Creed. Yes, yes. so car number 22 AFK Racing. It's all changing in the bit lane. We said it was going to get busier. What of our leaders? Gordy Much is still leading the way from Richard Jeb. Then it's Johnny Milder and Costa Creates is remains in fourth place. We've got car number 22 in the hands of Natalie Knowles taking back to the circuit. Costa Creates is now under pressure from um, David Drinkwater. David. Uh, well, Darren, Darren Stapleton. Stapleton. Yeah, Darren Stapleton once again. So the pair of those two have come. Uh, together once again and uh, if they continue to battle they're just going to fall away if anything they need to work together and try and catch up yeah. to that lead trio but of course pro am racing are now in a very commanding position because they can work together teammates uh they're just half a second apart uh and they have opened up 1.7 seconds over johnny milner they have indeed and if they can work together and pull away it's going to going to be exactly what they hoped for over the line has won and we've still got to wait and see what they're going to do in relation to responding to the pit window and obviously it's not a, an enforced pit window you can pit when you like but it's, it's more the car decides and the team decides when you need to pit that car 1.2 seconds the gap between Richard Jepp and uh, uh, Johnny Milner second and third Costa Criticis has indeed been picked off by Darren Stapleton so Costa's spent forever in fifth place he got his way up to fourth he looks good for third and he's back down into fifth, so, yeah. so unfortunate for the, um, I think he's commonly referred to in that team as the Greek god of speed. It's oh. Costa Kriatsis, he's a very quick guy. I mean, he's proved himself right, really, hasn't he? Yes. In ninth place now, so yeah, his ninth is number 121, which is a two-driver car. Who's uh, the one who started in that one? Uh, 121 started by Marcus Batty. to simply say time wise uh, we've got three hours and 41 minutes remaining and it's seen we've got the orca sport car back out there this time with guy wilkinson 
uh, behind the wheel. The two Pro-Am cars go through and past me in the commentary box. It was uh, 1.3 seconds the gap last time and remains at around about 1.3 seconds. The 11 tenths car has been into the pit lane. So that is uh, Brian Crawford has come in. Mm. Who's got back into that car? You'll have to uh, potentially look out for that one, Chris, whether it's John Luca, Elia, Paul Pierce or Paul Stout, all of which Paul Stout I'm convinced he's raced Porsches or owns a Porsche himself, having um, raced in a, a sim series where the, re the requirement oh, right. of entry was to own a Porsche. Um, and I think jean luc Elia, Johnny Elia, if you, uh, uh, for, for ease of use, I think he's uh, done bits with Porsche as well previously. But at the moment, those front two at Pro-Am Racing, they're doing everything they need to. They're just working yep. away. And you, you think... Gordy Butch, he's got a novice cross on the back of his car, not necessarily for him. No. I think uh, presumably for Ollie Fernall, who um, many of you may recognise as Basic Ollie if you uh, if you watch any sort of sim racing uh, live streaming or, or coverage or, or what have you. But um, that car's going fabulously well, bearing in mind, in theory, that they are novices. Watching at the moment the two leaders that uh, Jack was talking about, number eight in front, the extra runner not shown in the programme. Gordy much currently at the wheel, having been at the wheel since the race started, as has been the driver of uh, the car in second place, Richard Jett, number 12. Also a late entry, not so much the car, more him as one of the drivers, the other drivers to be Will Hilliard and Scott Thompson. Richard Jett has just done his personal best lap of the race in the course of taking himself as he know no he stays ahead of Johnny Milner yeah if you've got a car into the pit lane as well that's kind of a one two one so calamity Marcus Batty coming in to hand over to Andrew Finch so again yet another driver change and a bit more fuel on board that car so we're slowly starting to see the driver changes take place yeah. of course we've now got Andy Burton I'm just working my way down the order picking out who it is that's got into certain cars. The 11 tenths car has got Paul Stout uh, behind the wheel now on the timing screen. So Paul Stout behind the wheel for car number 11. We're just picking our way further down. We've got more and more red dots. I think we've got Chris down in the pit lane maybe in a, in a few moments time. But um, Gordy Much still leading the way and they're having to negotiate some traffic. That's car number 14, Usher Motorsport, still with Philip Usher behind the wheel. He's yet to hand over to either Luke or David Usher. Um, through Kumar leaders, yes they do, they remain out there, but the lead gap has closed up because Johnny Milner has very much got into the aerodynamic systems of both the Pro-Am cars, so Johnny Milner goes through with our leaders. Costa Creators is still hasn't been able to pick the pocket back of David Stapleton, so um, they are still fourth and fifth, but they're be being fairly well behaved for the moment. Back out on circuit goes car number 121, so Andrew Hinch behind the wheel of that car, and We've got double wave yellows down at turn one and yellow the yellow board is illuminating on the run up towards cops corner and it was double waved yellows for a brief moment i think now single waved yellows so whatever's going on i think somebody has had a small mistake at cops corner go on chris uh, i am actually walking that direction to see if i can see anything uh, whether i will or not i'll report back but just to let you know on the uh, the number 11 car the 11 tenths racing is that it's paul stout that's out there now you possibly can see that now already by the time i found out um, but just to also confirm that yes you are correct is that uh, Gianluca and byron definitely race lots of uh, Porsche Porsche Sims racing yeah. they don't do in the real world uh, and Paul Stout sort of dabbled with a little bit as well um, but this is only their second race uh, second season of, of real racing out here uh, I was gonna say I recognize Paul Stout because I think he made my show reel um, unfortunately with him being in the wall but uh, I think that I don't remember Paul Stout unfortunately Chris if you are near Lawrence Davy can you let him know that David Bywater's gone missing out uh, somewhere out on circuit because he's got a, a little exclamation mark next to his name on the timing. So whatever's he's, gone He'll on. probably see that himself then, won't he? I dare say. I'm just trying yeah. to see if it's him down at, uh, at uh, Cops down The here. yellow flags have been withdrawn. Ah, so either the car been. has come uh, behind the barrier or he's got back going again wherever it's gone. Andrew Malpass uh, will be getting ready because the number 114 KM racing car of Christian Kelly has just come diving into the pit lane. So we're slowly starting to see more and more mm. drivers come in. It's getting busier and busier. And we've got Lara Motorsport in the 747 car. Have we still got you down there, Chris? Uh, yep, yeah, I'm down here. I was just about to report that the 747 one came flying into the pits. See what I did there. See what I did. <laughs> um, 
And he's flying back out again. But uh, there's, of course, ground to a halt earlier. And that was, do you know all it was? Is it blew a fuse? That was Is it. that all it was? Wow. Yeah, and it just stopped everything and uh, just ground to a halt. Which but is that one, sorry? 747. Oh, right. I want that to happen in a real 747, would you? <laughs> um, yeah, we've got 18, 18 cars have yet to make a pit stop. Is that how many that we've, because of course we've still got everybody inside the top seven yet to pit. Yeah. It'll be more than that because Christian Kelly will naturally drop uh, through and down the order. Um, you can see Christian Kelly, I think, is aiding with the, uh, the pit stop efforts. The pit lane entry this time remains quiet, so everybody is staying out there. Gordy Much still leading the way from Richard Jeb. Then it's Johnny Milner who has fallen away a little bit from Richard. Costa Critis is back up into fourth place, having picked the pocket of Darren Stapleton. David Drinkwater remains out there in sixth place. Into the pit lane comes car number 14. That's Usher Motorsport. So Philip Usher comes in. He's got either Luke or David Usher to hand over to. And I'm just trying to pick my way through who we've got, so who we're potentially going to see behind the wheel. We've got to wait for the car to come round and the timing to update. And we're keeping an eye on 747, that's Lar Motorsports. Across the line goes one of the most unique looking cars, that's the Tango and Crash number 60 machine. Currently with Gary Buckingham behind the wheel, Chris Keyes and John Senior. Uh, waiting in the pit lane and of course throughout all of this at some point in the race um, we've got Chris down there to hand over the Dagenham dustbin as well for the best presented <laughs> car just taking up the point you're making of course the, the uh, cars cross the timing line as they come into the pit lane yeah. at Silverstone and some circuits have the timing line Snetterton being an example as you leave the pit lane uh, so we have to wait for the order to settle down for a full lap um, before we can tell you where they are. Now it says on the timing screen, car number 747 Lar Motorsport has been handed over to Neil J. I thought that car had uh, withdrawn Neil J. 747, I thought Neil J had been withdrawn and handed over Mike to... Mike Collins. Yeah, Mike Collins. So I'm going to guess it's Mike Collins that's behind the wheel. But we've got both there, so we can always uh, wait and see. So radio is being plugged in. That is for Andrew Malpass. So Andrew Malpass getting strapped into the 114 KM racing car. And who do we have diving into the pit lane? Maybe more. Chris, have you down there? I can report the number 14 car is going to be taken over by Luke Usher. Perfect. Great stuff. So Luke Usher behind the wheel of the number 14 Usher Motorsport car. Um, KM racing will be returning to the pit uh, returning to the circuit which I think they have just done now we've still got Leon Bidgeway out there yet to come into the pits but everybody inside the top 10 are yet to pit so there's still lots to be decided with only three and a half hours remaining and there we have the leading cars going through to complete another lap so uh, no pit stops yet for numbers 8 12 and 46 and then 3.33 is the Caritas car. And that is eight seconds now adrift. It really has fallen back, hasn't it? Yeah. Eight seconds adrift of the leading trio. We have got car 112 in, that's catastrophe. Um, so <laughs> Robert Thomas has uh, come into the pit lane. He will hand over to Simon Bonham. So Simon Bonham uh, jumping behind. Yeah, it's a uh, two-driver car. Isn't it? Yeah, nice and easy, that one, too. Uh, take over that car and there's another car in the pit lane that I can't quite pick out it's almost closest to us um, I'm just that's the 14 still it is the 14 yeah, I just I thought it's motorsport, been, yeah. I was going to say it seems like that's been a rather long stop maybe it hasn't well I, I thought that it'd been in a little while before they even started refueling so maybe they just because I was a bit further down the garage row uh, maybe they struggled to get the driver out at that point I'm not sure because by the time I got to it they were just starting the refueling although interestingly they're going again so either we're now into the realms where they're going for a big fill and hoping that that's going to be the end of it or something wasn't quite working with the tough jug. Well, I think already the 112 has not only come in, I think it's going back uh, out already. Correct. Yeah. yeah, so it just shows that, yeah, it isn't just us going uh, going a little bit loopy. They are indeed um, having a slower stop. So the leaders have gone through and passed us once again, top yeah. three remaining as they are. You spotted something on the screen. Did I? No, I was really just pointing towards the fact that we've got three of the top drivers, the best drivers in the race, in the top three players. I don't think it'll happen again. It'll break up when they make their pit stops, which probably won't all come together because two cars are in the same team. So they want to stagger the pit stop by the two Pro-Am racing cars. But Johnny Milner there in third place. 
uh, and uh, he wasn't the quickest of the three in that car in qualifying as I remember uh, but certainly he and the others are with him the two prime racing cars are amongst the, uh, the the best driver car combinations which will soon come to an end because the first pit stops will have to be made by those cars I think we're slowly starting to see a comeback as well from Autotech Motorsport to Toby Owen currently behind the wheel of car number 65 he's just picked up a place obviously whilst we had catastrophe in the pit lane so the catastrophe car it's now saying oh, it says Robert Thomas but I'm guessing we'll be getting closer yeah let's just see just looking at our top three go you know, absolutely nose to tail through Luffield but I think on the way towards Brooklyn was there, was there a little bit of shoulder shoulder checking on no, the way no 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 he, he caught the curve and the car bounced just had a little wobble um, but I don't think there's any contact no they're just driving very sensibly and very quickly those three yeah nose to tail a little look to the inside you think from Richard Jett but I don't know whether he's just covering the inside um, and that means that if Johnny Milner wants to go for the position he's got to go to the very extreme right hand side of the circuit on the run up towards Cops Corner so over the hill they will go or over the crest in towards Maggots and Beckett's our top three gone and staying with them is number 96 has done for several laps but that was a that's a delayed car isn't it yeah that's Porsche Carrera Motorsport yeah yeah so where are they They're quite a long way down the order aren't they yes in that was that 20th place so that car's a lap down I don't think it's part of the uh, battle for the lead but it is helping them he can now say he's running at race leading pace absolutely which, absolutely yeah. Yeah, which is um, definitely something that you would uh, you would want to make the most of. Richard Jepp this time, he's remaining where he is. Gordy Much has come over to the inside to defend very slightly in towards Brooklands, but it's still Gordy Much leading the way, almost touring car-esque as you see the inside rear wheel lift into the air. I don't know whether that's just how stiffly sprung the cars are, of course. Um, they all run control suspension, control from brake pads, tyres, roll cage, alloy wheels are all controlled by... Uh, MSBR and uh, Enduro KA so it's um, it's the idea is to make the cars as close as possible and you can see that whilst the two Pro-Am cars are absolutely nose to tail Milner Racing and Johnny Milner he's not he's giving them a run for, for, the, for the money he's not really rolling away but we've got less now than three and a half hours remaining and yeah. these cars have, have been running since the red lights extinguished at the start of this race but we do know that properly prepared they go on for 24 hours yes Absolutely so. So, uh, great reliability. I'm sure when the Ford KA was originally conceived, nobody thought it would be used for long distance motor racing, but there's uh, a lot of these cars around, although I'm sure their prices or their values are going up because you can race them. Yeah, yeah I have found as well, having owned a, a Citroen C1, and as soon as the Citroen 1, a Citroen C1 series and various other formula um, came about, trying to yeah. find spare parts for my car, one became harder, and if I was lucky enough to find one, it was a lot more expensive than I was expecting. Just to uh, clear up, guys, uh, the 747 Carlisle Motorsport, I heard you sort of say they were you're confused that he said uh, Neil Lay was out there and we were told he wasn't in and Mike Collins was in. Yes. Just check with the team and that's absolutely correct. Uh, and uh, they're, they're surprised why it's showing Neil... Uh, uh, Jay on on the timing and and so they said you're about the fourth person to ask me this. Who have we got to speak to? I said I, I don't I don't know. Uh, I said but it's in the amendment, so you're safe. So even though it says Jay on the screen, it is definitely it is Mike, Mike Collins. Yeah, yeah right. it's, it's definitely Mike. Neil, Neil's out with a back problem uh, yeah. apparently. So uh, yes, that's uh, that, that's the situation. They they have decided to to cover off and go up to race control and just make sure that is they they do know that situation, but. Uh, in fairness, it was in the amendments, as we knew, wasn't it? So, Yeah, absolutely. So I'm just looking so far in this race, whilst the track length is, what, 1.64 miles, um, everybody's mileage combined so far. We're at 3,750 <laughs> miles. So we want to see what we can get to come the end of the race. It's one of those that you, you struggle to, to keep track of in a normal race. In an endurance race, it's nice and easy because you've got so many cars out there running at the moment. And... Um, there are other statistics on there, but I think they're best left alone because as soon as you mention something, something will happen. We've got two green. Is that one you worked out for yourself or is one that you've been fed? No, it's one on, on TSL timing. I was about to say we've spent uh, one hour and 33 minutes under green flag, but unfortunately that comes to an end. Safety car has been deployed, so now we're oh. going to see these top 10 dive into the pit lane. I can't figure out exactly where the car is that's brought about the safety car. 
But in theory, if you are Gordy Much, Richard Jepp, Johnny Milner, um, Darren Stapleton, Costa Griezis, David Drinkwater, Toby Owen, uh, we've also well, got diving into the pit lane immediately, Simon Top, you're effectively not going to get a free pit stop, but a massively beneficial pit stop. Both the Pro-Am cars yeah. are in. Yeah, in together. So it's... Uh, Johnny the Milner stayed out. Which well, rally, rally drivers just keep going. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah, they've got wheels hanging off and they, they carry on, but yeah. now we've got um, Darren Stapleton into the pit lane, Costa Kriitzis into the pit lane. We've also got 125 of David Drinkwater. Underneath us now is going the GMB Finch racing car. That's car number seven. Steve Finch started that car, so uh, I'd imagine it will probably be Joe Bragg uh, that uh, gets behind the wheels. So. We've still got uh, drivers yet to pit. I am very surprised, very surprised that Johnny Milner didn't dive in with the Pro-Am cars. A weird one is the 81 car just came uh, tearing in, went to uh, to his garage, and it would have been the right one, 12B, but no one was there to greet him, so he went in at an angle and then was carried straight back out again, so no one was ready for him to uh, to make his pit stop, I'm afraid. But I'm looking up at a very, very busy garage, uh, pit lane now, and of course, I've got to be a little bit careful because uh, they're here with, uh, with the, f the, f the fuel and the uh, fire extinguishers and cars coming charging in and everything else. So it's difficult to, to stay completely out of the way now, I'm afraid to say. Now, I'm looking at the number eight. And I'm going to guess that it might be Darren Midgley. No, it's Ben, ben Johansson on, on the helmet waiting to get in the number eight car, but that isn't a name we have here, is it? No. Um, Oliver Fernell or Darren Midgley are the two to choose from. Yeah, I mean, I'd guess Darren Midgley because he's got uh, AMG Mercedes overalls, and, of course, uh, Darren Midgley is a Mercedes F1 yeah, equipment designer, so I'm going to guess it's him. Well done, Sherlock. I think we'll go with that. <laughs> I'm looking further down the order as well, we've got... I'm going to wait for the uh, timing screen to update, but with the, the safety car being deployed, I'm still none the wiser as to the original cause of the safety car. Johnny Milner's in. Yeah, so Johnny Milner's dived into the pit lane. I think we have lost the NJM's PDC's car. Adam Bird, who handed over to Grant Grove. I think Grant Grove has gone missing somewhere out on circuit. We'll try and figure out exactly where. We're looking at the cameras. Right. We've got a JCB or an Italian handling. Going here. out of Cops Corner. Coming out of Cops. Um, I can't see anything on the camera up towards the like interlink with Maggots and Beckett's, but wherever that car is, just slightly out of our sight. It looks like he's almost straightening a barrier, doesn't it? It does, but the barrier looks straight. Uh, and the, uh, he's going to pluck something out from behind the barrier. Can't see. But well, it's the exit of Cops Corner on the inside that we're talking about safety car with its followers goes through so who is actually the on the Gra track? Grant Grove has gone missing but where I don't know now has Darren Stapleton been in yes in fact everybody turning it down to 28th it's number 44 which doesn't seem to have been in if it's still circulating oh there we are that was what the picture I was looking at as a small CCTV image what's it going to it's like where you go fishing for plastic ducks at the fun fair so you thought what are you going to get from the other side of the barrier go on Chris I think we've got you down there with um, with someone was that I thought we had Chris Okay, so um, we've got a number of cars still in the pit lane getting all refueled. Just hearing, um, what, just uh, waiting to see what we're going to hear from um, uh, from Chris. I'm guessing he will try and pick up an interview for us in a few moments' time. But looking further down the order, who do we have now in cars? We're going to have to wait for them to come around yep. again, aren't we? Yep. You can see Autotech Motorsport 2. Uh, that car having been in, that's uh, Toby Owen has jumped out, and Reese Kello is now behind the wheel. So we can update that one as to Reese Kello is behind the wheel of that car. And uh, Kahuna's Racing, Costa Kritzis has jumped out. 
meaning that uh, d -d -d car treble three. It says P Truman, so that'll be Philip Truman now behind the wheel of that one. It's all admin -y for the moment. Andrew Fowles is still being shown as behind the wheel of the treble eight. Um, Milner Racing ha no longer has uh, Johnny Milner behind the wheel, so that's Jack will Wright. Be Jack Wright, Jay Wright, in the moment, well spotted. Who else do we have? Pro Am Racing, um, car number 12. That has Will Hilliard behind the wheel. So Will Hilliard taking over from Richard Jepp. What about car number eight? That was one we're looking at. It is Darren Midgley, um, naturally, with those overalls that we mentioned earlier on. Calamity, car number 121. That has got Andrew Hinch behind the wheel. That remains as we noted it down. So we're just looking further down the order. La Motorsport, have they been in? Yes, yeah, so Michael, um, oh, Mike Collinge has been into the pit lane. It, we're just we're seeing it all everybody. up date live. Yeah, literally everybody has been in. Yes. Um, Leon Bidgeway, however, the only recorded pit stop he's done is still that stop-go penalty. Indeed. I'm just looking as to... He should have a second record, shouldn't he? Yeah. If he's made a second. I mean, he's got to hand over still to Matthew Weymouth and Mike Morais, yeah. so... Whatever their plan is, it's a rather unique one. A few cars caught at pit exit, as uh, of course, as the safety car is working its way through Cops Corner. The red lights will very quickly flash on and close pit exit to sort of minimise the chance of cars just working their way out into the middle of the field. Um, original Checkers Racing have returned, car number 67. Um, it says Thomas Hendry is now behind the wheel. I'll wait for that one. Go on, Chris. I think we've got um, an interview with somebody down there. Oh, sorry about that. I, could, I lost you then, so I wasn't sure whether you'd handed down to me or not. Uh, I've managed to get Gordy much. You said you wanted the interview after a thoroughly entertaining stint there. Uh, Gordy, I mean, first of all, I know we were just speaking for a second uh, off air there. With a big smile on your face, you were enjoying that battling. And I can't believe you just told me the first time you sat in that car was this morning. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I don't think I've ever had so much fun in a race. I think... Uh, like engineer popped over the radio to tell me yeah you're an hour 30 into the stint it felt like 20 30 minutes um there the entire uh, first hour was just side to side it was it was brilliant it was great fun um managed to uh, you know once things split up a little bit i managed to to get ahead and then just basically started pulling out a bit of a gap uh, managed to recatch the top guys which was a bit a bit tricky considering i was completely on my own I felt a bit lonely out there with no tow, but we still managed to catch the, the front guys and get ourselves into the lead. And then um, I did see what the safety car was for. Uh, quite literally in the last sector, safety car came out. So I told the guys to box straight away as soon as I saw that. And uh, yeah, it was, that, was, that was great fun. The flip side to that, though, is that what we were hearing is that uh, uh, because you were on your own without all the slipstream, is that you've had to take on a lot more fuel in that refuel. Well, yeah, the two facts. So the, the 12 car, uh, the other Pro-Am racing car, uh, the driver is a little bit lighter than me. <laughs> and number two, um, because I was, you know, on my own for a lot of, of that stint, uh, just naturally, we, we burned a bit more fuel without the tow. When you're in the tow around other cars, naturally, you're lifting a little bit more. You're not burning as much fuel. Because uh, I was on my own for so much of that stint, ultimately, it's meant that we've just uh, had to spend a tiny bit longer in the pits. So the, the 12 cars jumped us a little bit, but you know, the, I think they're uh, heading the field now, or they will be when the, the pit strategies come around in cycle. So you know, both cars have had a really, really good, strong first stint. And uh, yeah, great fun. I mean, that's the thing. You're summing it up with the, what you're saying and the way you're saying it is that we talk about these uh, Enduro KAs is that everybody gets out with a smile on their face. But you've got to take us to how different it is to drive something like this to we need to see you in a GT car. Yeah, absolutely. A little bit different from, uh, <laughs> from my Lotus Amira GT4. Um, I was kind of joking away with the guys. It's fantastic practice for when I'm back for British GT in a few weeks' time. Um, it's lovely to do a little bit of sightseeing. I've got a little bit more time on the streets uh, to, to look around, have a look at the curbs, <laughs> see the bumps. Um, you notice a little bit more when you're going a bit slower. So, uh, yeah, really, really different. I mean, like, like you said earlier, uh, this morning was the first ever time that I sat in the car. Uh, so uh, a little bit of a, a learning curve. But to be honest, the, the, the car is, um, you know, extremely easy to drive. 
so it, it makes it an absolute doddle. And with how close the, the racing uh, and how close the cars are performance-wise, uh, wise, it, it just makes for great fun and anyone can jump in, anyone can do it, and it's a kind of racing series for everyone. I, I agree, and there's a big thing on momentum, isn't there? Keeping the momentum going in the car. Yeah, absolutely. You don't want to be touching that brake. It's like really, really feathering that brake. As soon as you kill off the speeds, as it done, you ain't getting it back. Yeah. In a big GT car, I'm used to backing off a bit, slamming down the power, and I've got, you know, 450 odds horsepower to get me back up to speed. And this, I've only got, what, like, like six, <laughs> what is it, 60, 65 horsepower? Yeah. So, yeah, a little bit of a, a different. Turn one's flat out. I've never done that before. So, wow. that's, yeah, it's good fun, yeah. Good fun, yeah. Wow, well, it's great to speak to you, Gordy. Thank you very much for that, and a great first stint. Thank you very much. Cheers. Guys, uh, I think that kind of summed up what you were expecting to hear from Gordy, wasn't it? Very different to a GT4 yeah. car. Uh, and, I mean, the smile, I think it, it was as wide as this garage door opening there, wasn't it? Yes, indeed. <laughs> well, uh, the car, as he feared, might have has lost a few more places. So after that round of pit stops, uh, the car's number eight in ninth place. And it's now in the hands of Darren Midgley. And the cars it was uh, circulating with when Gordy Much was out in it, uh, number eight is is ninth. I'm sorry, I was not picking out the Geordie Much car there, was I? Um, that's uh, number eight. Darren Midgley now in it, uh, and the Pro Am car number two in the lead. Let's do it easy way. 81 is leading. 81 in the lead, an early leader now in the hands of Darren Stapleton. I think doing the second stint actually. Uh, I don't think there was a change to Ian Mitchell uh, at that car's first pit stop. Pram racing in second place, number 12. And uh, that's Will Hilliard now driving it. The car that he's uh, taken over from Richard Jepp. In third place is number 46. That's the car that was being driven by Johnny Milner, who's now Jack Wright at the wheel of it. Uh, and in fourth place, we should be getting through in the moment number 112 now being driven by Simon Bonham in place of Robert Thomas. Oh, that hasn't come through yet. It's quite some way back. In that's in fifth place. Fifth place, we have uh, number 121. And that is now Andrew Hinch replacing Marcus Batty. And then uh, in sixth place is 96. Now that's come up from starting that that was the car that started at the very back isn't it from the pit lane in fact uh now simon child's at the wheel of it i think and it is in sixth place that's come up well hasn't it yeah absolutely especially starting uh, like you say in the pit lane that's been yeah. a, a brilliant drive from there i'm just updating my, my sheet as to who is uh, who is now behind the wheel of of what car but um, yeah darren stapleton uh, he's stayed in that car whilst he's been into the pit lane. I'm yep. convinced he started that car, so doing quite. Whilst it is a, a a shared car, it's only shared between two drivers. But of course, there's the two hours 20, 20 minute max driving time that they may have to worry about as well. Yes, indeed. So the lead is held by car number 81, which is 18.5 seconds ahead of the second place, number 12, Darren Stapleton in number 81, Will Hilliard in number 12. And then Jack Wright in the ex-Johnny Milner car, number 46, is in third place. And he is not that far behind Will Hilliard. But these cars, cars are not necessarily going to be going at the same pace as they were in the hands of their first drivers. The challenge now is to identify quick drivers who are at the moment languishing mid-teens or even in the wet twenties. Am I right in thinking, Jack, that everybody is still circulating or have we lost one or two? Uh, I haven't seen a return since the safety car from NJM's PDCs 
of uh, Grant Grove, car number two at the okay. moment. So I think they're still missing. Um, LDR performance tuning, I haven't seen anything more from them. Team Lifeline, I think they are back out there, but of course they were they spent a, a number of laps in yes. the pit lane. So too did Sukaru uh, Sukaru Racing. Um, Usher Motorsports, it should have Luke Usher behind the wheel. I think they're still out and running. So I think we're, what, from 35 down to 33 still out there and running at the moment. And with three minutes and ten, oh, three hours and ten minutes of the race remaining, of course, we, we've got further pit stops still to be made. And uh, Leon Bidgeway did come into the pit lane and, um, and hand over uh, to, it was, um, handed over to Mike Morice. Go on, Chris, you're down in the pit lane. Yeah, the 49 car's back in the garage. Uh, it... Uh, it had some kind of off at uh, uh, Cops, and uh, <laughs> Lawrence is having a laugh still, saying they reckon he fell asleep because he's saying he had to avoid a bit of debris that was on the track, and he said, but no one else has reported that, so we don't know whether he fell asleep at the wheel. Uh, and I said, well, where did he go off? He says, I don't know. Where's, he's gone and fact managed to find a piece of concrete because he's done some damage to the front of this car, but they are desperately trying to get it repaired. The front bumper is being sorted. They're replacing the radiator at the front, which is, they're not very gentle with these cars, I'm not going to lie. They're being quite rough again in, but there's, there's bits of broken uh, uh, covers of the indicator shields and everything, but they are trying to get it back out again, and I assume that is what caused the safety car. It sounds like it. Thanks for that description, Chris. You would like, like to muck in and help out, because I see one of the drivers is, I think. Yeah, that's Lawrence Davy on the floor, I think. Yeah. Overalls, presumably, for, <laughs> Correct. Uh, for, for fueling, so... Um, uh, Lawrence Davey, like you say, uh, not driving this weekend, just helping out um, run his team. But Darren Stapleton in the lead of the race. I've just noticed 19 and a half yeah, seconds to the gun up. now. It's gone up. Yeah, really starting to pull away from uh, car number 12. Of course, we well, saw uh, Richard Jett behind the wheel. It's now Will Hilliard gone. Yeah, their the last laps actually were very similar. A 20.52, 120.526 for the leader, uh, 120.645. Yes, it's slightly slower, but not that much. Uh, so he's only falling away gradually, but those two are pretty clear. Well, Jack Wright in the picture as well, the Johnny Milner car, number 46 in third place, is, is in the picture. 3.2 seconds adrift of the Will Hilliard Pro-Am racing car. Now, the car that's uh, the, the other one of that leading trio before the safety car came out, uh, the Darren Midgley driven car, is now in 11th place. And that's a loss of the place, isn't it? Uh, about what it was when Darren took it over. Anyway, it is in the 11th place, number eight. I've had it confirmed as well in terms of the, the, the cause of the safety car. I received a message from uh, Richard Pearson um, saying that the NJM's PDC's car, he, well, I'm guessing that's the car he was referring to, um, found the barrier on the inside of Cop's Corner, hence why they had right. to um, try and get that barrier straight He's, again. And yeah. By the time we'd saw it, that car had already been taken behind the barrier to safety. So. Um, surely, yeah, that was the cause of the uh, of the safety car, which may have also meant if that car spun around and left some stricken bodywork, that was the bodywork that had to yes. be avoided by the LDR performance car. Right, so, we, keep, we well done, keep on answering the questions that are, <laughs> arise, that's uh, information explaining something away. Uh, it's the only safety car we've had so far. And the f only the first three cars have now are on the same lap at the moment. 81 laps completed by the top three. And I think I'm actually saying that 112 in fourth place is a lap down. Yeah, AFK Racing didn't have the best lap that time through. So on the wheel of that car is Natalie Knowles at the moment. Three places lost, unfortunately, on the lap prior. So lost out to three amigos and Phil Hinson. Lost out to... Uh, car number eight, the second of the two Pro-Am racing cars. Um, uh, Gordy Moore just handed over to uh, Darren Midgley, so he's worked his, th his way through. And uh, Kahuna's race team, of course, that was initially driven by Costa Priestis, is now Phil Treeman behind the wheel. He's worked his way through past Natalie Knowles as well. So uh, not the best lap from Natalie. Whatever happened, looking at the lap time, uh, 1 minute 24, maybe a small mistake or just picked the wrong side um, of some traffic. But yeah, good spot. Only the top three are still on the same lap at the moment and it's nice to see that even though we've got cars running around even if we take um Sukuru racing as an example or even uh, usher motorsport they're what 10 laps down or usher motorsport 32 laps down a Sukuru racing but the motivation is still there get that car back out because you've got no idea what you could still uh, scratch away from a from a result 
Yeah, we're, now we're coming up to the two hour mark in the sense of two hours run, three hours to go in six minutes time. And at that point, we'll try and give you a complete rundown of the order as it is at that time, uh, which may well be subject to safety cars and changes and spins and instants and goodness knows what, but uh, to give ourselves uh, an objective in terms of uh, giving you an impression of the way the race is going. This is uh, just under six minutes. It'll be two hours to go, uh, three hours to go. Just quickly looked up as well there. Um, Guy Wilkinson in the Orca Sport car number 74 ran very wide on the exit of Cox. I don't know whether he was just trying to let some traffic through, but got carried away and went and truly got off the circuit. But there's a brilliant battle going on. That's yeah. between the uh, 747 La Motorsport car with um, Mike Kalinge uh, behind the wheel. Whereabouts is he when we look at the order? Uh, currently sat in ninth place, still fighting away with three amigos and Phil Hinson. He's got number 65 Auto Tech Motorsport 2 car of Reese Kello uh, just up the road. So there's still plenty going on. Yeah. And that's the battle for 7th, 8th, 9th, I think 10th and potentially even 11th are there as well. Uh, just nipping away in the background. Up the inside goes 114. I think they're trying to unlap themselves, KM Racing at the moment. So. 4 km racing of Andrew Malpass. Yeah, they're right the way down in 17th place. He's got every right to try and unlap himself if he feels he is the quicker car. That's right. See, uh, second place is uh, becoming closer, or is it not? No, perhaps it's not suddenly gone up again. I was thinking that the gap between Will Hilliard in the Pro-Am car in second place and Jack Wright now in the Johnny Milner, Milner racing car in third place was coming down. It was barely over a second it's now just over two seconds 2.3 seconds that's second to third and the gap first to second 18.3 their lap times pretty similar between Darren Stapleton in the lead and Will Hilliard in second place 81 of course was the car that started from pole position so it's no surprise to see it now we've got uh, up front. Just looking at the, the, the biggest moves so far. What of Costa Critz's car? Car number 333. That's back down into 10th place, but bearing in mind that car started in 18th. They're doing all right. I think the biggest is car number 96. Of course, that car started from the pit lane. Whereabouts have they worked their way up to? Oh, only sixth place. They started in the pit lane, so obviously they've got the natural delay before getting up to speed. And they will have had a standing start as well compared to the rolling start that the drivers will have had on the grid. So um, they've done a brilliant job getting right the way up to sixth place at the moment. Into the pit lane comes car number 96. That is Porsche Carrera Motorsport, the car we're talking about. It's currently got Simon Childs behind the wheel. Are they running a slightly off-kilt strategy? I guess all will be revealed because uh, I'm sure Chris will be down there waiting to uh, inform us of what it is that's going on. It stops outside the garage, so it's not anything... Uh, too bad and of course it's three people working on a car when it's in the pit lane when it's pushed into the garage well, I think you're allowed more than that um, to, get, to get the car back right again um, but the driver's door is open by the looks of that and yeah the fire extinguisher is ready presumably so I think we are um, we're going to get a driver change for that one which leaves let's have a look car number 96 uh, Mike Carey started Simon Chance you'd imagine it would be Ben Smithwell uh, getting ready to get behind the wheel but we'll wait for that to be confirmed from uh, Chris down in the pit lane. Car number 275 is just coming through us. That's Team Lifeline. They are still out there and running. Currently sat in 32nd place with Jake Lane behind the wheel. Another diver into the pit lane. That's car number 81. One of the cars we've been keeping an eye on. GM Performance, Darren Stapleton into the pit lane, presumably now to hand over to Ian Mitchell. Yeah, and that was the one that, right at the start of the, uh, the safety car period, came in, pulled up to the garage, but nobody was there waiting to receive him. And so turned around and carried straight back out again so you know that didn't really go to plan in that safety car period for them sadly are we talking 81 here yeah well in the end i mean after the safety car period had kind of ended it that was the one that was leaving and uh, what are they doing now we've got these on camera yeah so that means that they they didn't he came into the pits but didn't actually make a no. pit stop um and it was really weird that one the 96 car right. is still refueling at the moment so they're going to rejoin 
behind obviously numbers 12 and 46 this is their second stop but what the point you're making Chris is that their first stop was it not really a correct effective one yeah it, it, it just came in and went straight back out again because uh, nobody was there right okay so that means that we have a fight on our hands or we were hoping to have a fight on our hands but in fact the gap has gone up between the cars that were in second and third places numbers 12 and 46 it was a very small gap it's now in double figures yeah what of car uh, 96 as well porsche carrera motorsport with simon childs jumping out uh, presumably ben smithwell ready to get in they're dropping down the order now they've come down from what was sixth place they're classified in 13th but of course there are still more cars coming through and breaking the beam so that car will drop ever more down through the order and of course gm performance now as we've had will hilliard over the line will get put a lap down but for 96 this is their second stop yes yes it is so yeah that, that, that's and, and i would suggest that they didn't refuel in their first stop because they're now on the second jug of uh, fuel so they've uh, they've clearly just used most of it up and they're absolutely brimming it this time yeah, maybe a run to as close to the end as possible we saw on the strategy board of um, LDR performance tuning they are expecting a splash and dash at some point uh, throughout this race so no that was the triple five car. Is that the triple five? yeah that's a super car I that's may the have, one. and then may i got in trouble for showing i may have just <laughs> given up ldr's uh, strategy as well if they're planning on what as well um afk racing that is car number 22 currently with um natalie knowles behind the wheel picking up two places on the lap prior so working her way through and past uh, the 747 of uh, mike lynch and come on uh, well, I said we were going to give the, uh, the order, and there's three hours to go, so uh, two hours gone. Uh, we are going to, in a moment, be at the three hour to go mark. We have just passed it, in fact. So this is the order. I'll just do the numbers. First, number 12, 87 laps completed. Second, number 46, 86 laps completed, but shortly complete 87. Third, number 112. Fourth, number 121. Fifth, number 125. Sixth, number 65. Seventh is 22. Eighth is 747. Ninth is number 8. Tenth is 81. Eleventh is 888. Twelfth, number 3. 13th number 180 180 14th number 126 15th number 114 16th number 21 17th is 55 18th number 7 19th 64 20th 67 21st 95 22nd number 1 23rd 333 24th 74 25th 71 26th number 60 27th is 96 28th is 6 29th is 70 29th is 27 30th 44 31st number 2 32nd number 275 34th number 49 and 35th number 555 so that's everybody yeah, accounted for but the I last couple not running perhaps when you say accounted for i think we've lost kahuna's race team uh car number treble three of course we saw costa fritzis bring that car up from 18th right the way up to third at one point um currently has philip truman behind the wheel however they've got an exclamation mark next to their name so too do usher motorsport and luke usher whatever's gone on i haven't seen them come into the pit no. lane. Uh, and that may have just been me missing them chris I'm looking on the cameras and I can't see them anywhere, but I fear we may have lost a couple more cars somewhere out there on circuit. Yeah, well, obviously what I did was just a snapshot yeah, of the yeah, positions yeah. at that time, and uh, things may happen. Yeah, the positions change absolutely every yeah. single lap in these, don't they? With That's just right. how close they run. So 12 leads, Will Hilliard leads uh, from number 46, Jack Wright, by 9.6 seconds. And they are way ahead of the only other car to have completed 88 laps, and that is number 112. Uh, 112 currently uh, in the hands of Simon Bonham. Just 
monitoring that gap as well. 8.3 seconds at the moment from Will Hillier to Jack Wright. Simon Bonham, as you say, quite a way back, over a minute uh, back from those cars up the road. Well, well certainly Jack Wright is going to close the gap down again because it had gone up to more than you've just said. 8.3 is what it is now, but uh, it was in the nines. So maybe it was a one lap where the leader got stuck in traffic, but Will Hilliard out front in the number 12 car, which was started by Richard Jepp. Did note as well, the three amigos, Paul Hinson, running very wide on the exit of, uh, uh, of Beckett. We did also have kind of a 65, that is the Autotech Motorsport 2 car, currently being driven by Reese Kello. The pair of those two went very wide because they're all fighting away yes. with 747 Lar Motorsport and uh, Mike Collinge, but also just in front of them is the 121 Calamity car of Andrew Hinge. So they're in a brilliant little battle still. Uh, fighting away 8.3 seconds was the gap the last time through over the line goes Will Hilliard to take another lap in the book we await the arrival of Jack Wright so 8.3 to beat what can Jack Wright do as he comes through and breaks the beam it's 8.1 so another two tenths gain we've got car number 49 the LDR performance tuning car presumably uh, still with um, uh, David Bywater behind the wheel unless he's handed over to Nick Rice being refueled and presumably ready to, to head back out on the circuit, which is great to see. Yes, Andy Greer Hardy started that car, didn't yes. he? And that was one that uh, he was the one that Chris had a word with. Whether that be a new gearbox or clutch or whatever it may be, or whatever it may be. Something fairly major. Now gone into that car, yeah, absolutely. So we're slowly starting to see those battles develop, and I fear with it, without too much time, Jack Wright will start to close up ever more on Will Hilliard yes, as, the, like that, yeah. as the, the traffic will start to play a part. Over the line in a few moments' time, we'd expect to see Simon Bonham behind the wheel of the catastrophe car. Again, as you say, <laughs> the only car to still be on the lead lap left in the top three because, of course, Milner Racing and Jack Wright only 8.1 seconds away. 1-1-2 one, one, of catastrophe aren't too far away at all. I think they're just working their way over the line now. Yes, they are. That gap's coming down as well. 1.8 seconds to the leader. One, oh, sorry, one minute and eight seconds to the leader one minute to jack right i think we've seen that up in the 112s at one point so yeah, it's really right, starting yes. to chip away yeah. at that time however over the line there goes will hilliard so the um uh, the gap from will hilliard to putting a lap over third place is only what five ten seconds there's not much in it at all now well I think it's middle of the race really now we, it's uh, middle segment and uh, things are, have quietened down to some extent haven't they um, I finally realised this is an endurance race and the, the amount of fun that we had in the opening couple yes. of hours of, uh, whilst they're having great fun I'm sure the cars um, maybe not so they've still got to get to the end of the race down the Wellington straight goes Will Hilliard the gap from the leader has come down from 8.3 to 8.1 to yeah. 7.5 seconds yes. Jack Wright whatever he's doing it's working for him another half a second gain yeah so Jack Wright and his father George, they both uh, raced regularly in MSV track day trophy events. So they know the way around this kind of racing. So the gap first to second, 7.5, and Jack says that the gap second to third is still. It's quite a large one, but yeah. it's coming down. I think I think actually that time it's come out again. Oh. Um, so it's, it's ebbing and flowing, but of course that can be traffic. 6.9 seconds the gap now between Jack Wright and Will Hillyard. So it's come down by over half a second that time, almost what, seven tenths of a second. So very well done from Jack, or six tenths of a second. So very well done from Jack Wright. He's really unlocked some pace. Into the pit lane comes the 747 of Lar Motorsport. That's Mike Collinge. He was fighting away very, very hard with uh, both Reese Kello and, of course, Nick Knowles and um, the number eight Pro-Am racing car of Darren Midgley. So uh, they were all fighting away. So we'll have to wait and see as to what Chris can report from the pit lane. Is that um, uh, Mike Collins coming in to hand over to Duncan McBeth? Or Duncan McBeth, uh, He's gone straight back out again. So I assume that he had a penalty. I didn't see a stop go flash up. Maybe we just missed that. Into the pit lane as well comes a Shimoto Sport. We thought that car had gone missing. It's just come down the pit lane, whether it's uh, been recovered or what. And I don't know whether it's got any sort of damage. It might, it might just be an optical illusion from here, but it looks like the right side of that car isn't exactly straight. 
Oh. Which one was that, sorry? Uh, car number 14, that's being Usher Motorsport with Luke Usher behind the wheel. Presumably David Usher will be there. Uh, well. Which is also going all the way through. So there's obviously been a, a few penalties dished out, I would hazard a guess, from, the, um, uh, from those pit stops that were going on. Because they all have to do things in the right order and, and keep safe. And, you know, even down to the things that the three people that are able to work on the car have to have their orange vests on, etc. Uh, so, yeah, those two were straight drive throughs Yeah, the reason why we've missed them is they've not popped up on the race control board. I'm just looking now on the... Uh, fact, whilst TSL is a fabulous system, gives us all the information that we need, um, barring this, we haven't quite spotted that those cars have got um, uh, drive through penalties. It's been a change further down. That's for 15th and 16th, respectively. So, car number 21, KNF Racing, uh, Tony Barson, has managed to work his way through and past the cash-strapped racing car of... Um, Alex Tentori and previously Ben Smith has, uh, has started that car. Two hours and 50 minutes remaining and still on a mission, very aggressive up the yeah. inside, was car number 87, I think that was, or 81, pardon me, GM Performance. Ian Mitchell, of course, he's been given that car by Darren Stapleton and it shows not pitting under safety car or trying to pit under safety car, but the team not being ready. That's cost them rather dear and they've come, right, they've come out right the way down in what is... Um, uh, where are they now? Uh, 11th, 11th oh, place. Sorry. 11th place compared to the um, the cars that they were fighting with. Eighth upwards, really. Meanwhile, the gap between the two leaders is. Last time through, it was 6.3 seconds. Just wait for the yeah, It's come down a minimal amount that time, down to 6.28205. So a tenth of a second pulled back. So Will Hilliard is obviously getting the message that he's. Being, was being caught by Jack Wright and he's trying to get away from him again in the fight for the lead. There's no one else really at the moment in contention for the lead, is there? Because the 112 car is a long way back, albeit on the same lap. That's Simon Bonham in the car catastrophe. <laughs> I know, and we've still got obviously the potential of safety cars you've got pit stops still to, to run as well we've got a number of drivers that um in some teams two drivers still yet to get behind the wheel um yeah. as well with two hours and 49 minutes of this race remaining but pro-am racing car number 12 will hilliard still leading the way however it's only by 6.2 seconds now because jack wright is uh, is getting close so we will await the arrival of simon bonham i'd imagine he's not too far away in the 112 car there he is over the line so he is now one minute and seven seconds away. There is our leader just crossing the line, Will Hilliard, and what of Jack Wright. You should expect his arrival in 6.2 seconds, but I've got a feeling he's getting closer. There he is over the line, 6.2 seconds, turns into 6.3. He's actually come out by a tenth this lap, just as we're starting to use it as, um, yeah. as an example. And as far as the cars behind are concerned, uh, Simon Bonham's last lap was 121.4, uh, and Finches, uh, sorry, the next guy, number 121, 121.4, 124, 121.435, the previous car, 121.408, so there's nothing to choose between them. No, absolutely Lap not. That time's uh, more or less the same. You know, some of the gaps that we've got out there, I'm just looking, the, the smallest gap I think we've got, and bearing in mind we've just seen them swap around, is uh, car number 21, uh, K&F Racing. That is uh, Tony Barson behind the wheel. He's just yeah. worked his way through and passed car number 55. That being Alex uh, Tentori. The gap between them as they crossed the line was 0 0.377 of a second. Closest gap that we've got inside the top 10, really, is uh, between Reese Kello and Phil Hinson. So car number 1253 Amigos and car number 65, that's Autotech Motorsport 2. They're fifth and sixth, respectively. And they're, uh, yeah, within a second of each other. So that's when you could see them starting to work together, potentially maybe bump draft. You see that a fair bit uh, in the Enduro uh, car series. Over the line goes Will Hilliard, Jack Wright, back down to 6.2 seconds, albeit he was in a lot of traffic that lap. So he's managed that gap beautifully well. 6.2 seconds after um, how long we've been racing, what, uh, two hours and... 12 minutes, yeah. 13 minutes, Jack Wright, 6.2 seconds, that's absolutely nothing. Yes, that time's then very similar amongst the uh, the leading pair. But the car in third place is nearly a second 
a lap so and he's gradually he's going to be lapped isn't he i think yeah i think he is ldr performance tuning back into the pit lane as well david bywater back towards you chris yeah and that one is i mean they've done a brilliant job to get that back out again but sadly he's been ignoring a black and orange flag for the last three laps and he was about to get that turn to a black flag but thankfully the team have brought him in and what it is is uh, quite a simple one is that they are seeing through the windows it's going past that the left belt has uh, either come undone or come loose and was not connected so that in other words the the hands device would do nothing uh, in an incident so he, they had to bring him in screech of tires they've got that sorted got it uh, tightened up and he's back out onto the circuit it's amazing to see the eye that the, the scrutineers race control and whoever else has yes. spotted that through the windscreen as well that's a uh, yeah, very good eye indeed but of course safety has to be at the top of the priority list so will hilliard his gap has gone from 7.3 to 7.1 to, what, 6.5 to 4.4. Well, Whatever big, has yeah. happened, yeah. Uh, it was. It looks like, visually, um, it wasn't necessarily a slower lap from Will Hilliard. It was just a monster lap from Jack Wright back into the 1 minute 19s. He's only yeah. two tenths away from the fastest lap of the race, which is currently held by that car. Yeah, so that's the one that's keep an eye on that's the jo ex Johnny Milner car isn't yes. the one that Johnny Milner started and of course Johnny Milner setting that fastest lap of the race the 119.672 yep. that still stands and Jack Wright um, with a 119.854 it's a very quick lap indeed 4.4 seconds so in theory four and a half and you look at it I thought we had a puncher there for one of the cars I think it was just nipping through shot at, at the wrong angle that that maybe looks like that but just, um, I think we've got Chris down there, gone. Yeah, just a quick update, 49, is that uh, I've just pointed out to Lawrence that he's probably not updated who his driver is, which he's just run off to do because it's Nick that's out there now, Nick Rice. It's Nick Rice that's out there. So uh, and it wasn't that the belt had come undone, it was that it, it sort of slipped off on the left shoulder, so it wasn't operating fully with the, with the hands device and, and everything. Still, that's an even smaller target for them I to try I think, spot. sadly, they saw it just as they pushed it back and he then pulled off and everything was too late then, so they saw it while it was still in the pit lane and, uh, and, and it was too late. Right, okay, that makes sense. So we've got Nick Rice behind the wheel of the LDR performance tuning Is he car. the second or the third driver of that car? He's now. the third driver because so we've seen Andy David Greer. By, David Bywater's already driven it. Yes, David yes. Bywater yep. has been it and Andy Greer hardly started that car. I'm just yes. looking, Kahuna's race team, uh, car 333 with what was Phil Truman behind the wheel. I, I haven't seen it come through. Chris, you might need to do some investigating and try and find the Kahuna's car and figure out where it is. We've got a battle building up for the lead though, haven't we? Because yes. the gap is now down to 3.7 seconds, first to second. Still, it's number 12 then, which leads the way, Matt, uh, Will Hilliard, but Jack Wright in the number 46 car is uh, edging ever closer. Yeah, the, the yellow blob in Will Hilliard's rearview mirror will be getting larger and larger and larger um, by way of Jack Wright just continuing to lap quicker and quicker and quicker. Last time through, he was almost exactly three tenths away from the fastest lap of the race, which, yeah, may I remind you, is currently held by that car. So 3.795 of a second was the gap. Through past underneath us and breaking the beam is Will Hilliard. Here comes Jack Wright over the line. He will go. What can he do about bringing that gap down? 3.795 to beat. He's come out by around uh -huh. about two tenths. So in, in fact, almost exactly three tenths of a second. So Jack Wright slightly slower that time through. But again, he had a bit of traffic to deal with, so it can be forgiven. But the fastest lap of the race has been displayed if you're watching the stream. Still goes the way of Milner Racing with that 1 minute 19.672. I'm surprised that uh, Simon Bonham hasn't been lapped as of yet. He's, he's managing the pace of the yeah. catastrophe car very well, Chris. The 333 car is still out there, is still circulating, but uh, it's got a two-lap penalty, so I assume that's the, uh, the right. thing that's against it. Um, and that was because the fuel cap was open when it came in, but it, it, oh. it is circulating because they're, they're the team's in there watching its progress. Okay, so two-lap penalty to be applied come the end of the race. Uh, for that car, so uh, I think they tend to apply it instantly actually on the timing, which is why it's uh, it's dropped away. This is car, which one? Yeah, uh, treble three. It is well down, it's in 22nd place, and it's three laps behind. Yeah, so, so it's had the two laps already applied. Yeah, yeah so it would only be one lap behind yeah. without the penalty. And we've got car 21 in the pit lane, it looks like for a driver swap as well. So KF Racing, presumably that's Tony Barson handing over to Alan Bettinson. Um, you may need to confirm that for us, Chris. We'll, we'll, we'll use an abuse you whilst you're down there. Because it was Simon Top who started. Yes, Simon yes. Top started that car, handed over to Tony Barson, and, and I'd imagine Adam Bettinson is um, uh, now behind the wheel. 
the lead gap back into the three-second margin, 3.9 seconds, Jack Wright's Will Hill Yard. It's only going one way at the moment, isn't it, Ian? Well, most laps it is, but there's yeah. an occasional... It, it, it's not as if it's coming down in hefty chunks. It's coming down in little uh, little bits. And go bite-sized pieces, shall we? Bite-sized, that's the word I was looking for, yes. Just looking as well, Simon Bonham, whilst he is still out there, um, last time through a 1 minute 20.926 compared to Will Hillyard's uh, 1 minute 20.281. I'd imagine they're not far away from being lapped at all now. We'll wait and see. Go on, Chris, you've got someone down there. I could, no, I'd just confirm that it is Adam in the 21 car. Right, OK, so Adam Bettinson uh, now behind the wheel of that car. As uh, the third driver. Yes, as the third driver to, to, to get into that Enduro car. Over the line now goes car number three. That is uh, Wingat Racing. So with Michael Rice behind the wheel. I'd imagine they've still got Matthew Weymouth still to hand over to. I'm waiting for the arrival of Catastrophe. Have they just gone across the line? Yes, they have. But immediately the timing screen resets as Will Hillyard breaks the beam. The lead gap must have come down from 3.9 to something much less than that. Three point, best part of 3.6. Yeah. So Jack Wright's continually, uh, continuously, as you said, just taking those bite-sized yeah. chunks out of the um, out of our leader into the pit lane we've got another pit caller that was car number 180 so shine automotive coming in adrian wood started that car thomas wood bringing that car into the pit lane i'd imagine it will either be uh, colin french or nathan brown to get behind the wheel you'll have to update us on that one as and when it happens chris but Again, we're seeing those packs start to form. There's a brilliant one just heading in towards Maggots and Beckett's now, being led by the 275 Team Lifeline car. They've got three Amigos just nipping their way up through the inside. The number 65 Autotech Motorsport car is involved in that little battle. Stosu is original Checkers Racing. We've also got another couple of cars closing up. That's the 121 of Calamity. Uh, Andrew Hinch behind the wheel of that car is involved. And I think the final out of all of that is LDR Performance Studio with Nick Rice having just taken over. Uh, that's Enduro car ran by LDR Performance Tuning, and those packs are forming. You can see it, Chris. Uh, yeah, just to update you on the 95 car that's down here, the one that had the, the change to WKD Motorsport. And of course, it is still being run by Graves Motorsport as well down here. Uh, it's uh, getting back into the car of that 95 for uh, Ross Foles. So he started, and he's getting back in again now. So we've what? still got Marcus Clutton. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, Marcus Clutton hasn't. Yeah, and he's still in his jeans, so I'm going to find out in a moment yeah, I think what the plan is. needed, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, but sh shove the mic in his face with the camera as well. We'll figure out exactly what's going on. Is he going to do the final two hours, 20 minutes? Yeah. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll doorstop him and put some pressure on him, shall we? Well, they're strapping in us on the camera. Marcus, are you going out? Uh, I'll do a little bit at the end, yeah. I'll uh, bit. let Ross do a bit more, let these guys have a bit of fun, and then we'll... Uh, Probably do it last hour and a half, maybe, I don't know. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. A little I, bit. Mean, I, I love the fact that you're going out in this. I mean, you'll just go out and race anything, frankly, won't you? But is, is there a bit of driver coaching as well? Yeah, so the idea is bring on the guys. They've only, they're new to racing. They've only done two rounds of Ford K8 before, never done anything else. So I'm just trying to help them, guide them through. And, um, yeah, and, you know. Myself, I'll drive anything. I don't mind. It's, it's all good fun, isn't it? <laughs> it is, and I mean, but again, we were we were speaking to Gordy as well. The difference between the GT car and something like this. I mean, this is good fun. There's momentum becomes important, things like that. But how do you switch your brain from one thing to the other? Uh, just I don't know really. I just just do. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's obviously a very different driving style, and um, but it's good fun, and, and and there's lots to learn, and that's why I've, I've put the guys in this, and I think they can learn a lot and they might never leave KAs. I don't think they're going to go on to anything else. They're very happy doing what they're doing, but um, you know, there's lots to learn and, and, and even for myself, I enjoy it. Re you know, regardless, yesterday I was in an Audi R8, today I'm in a Ford KA, but it, it's it's just it's just good. I just like me driving. It's a tough life, but someone's got to do it, haven't they? I mean, it's just brilliant. I mean, and that is the great thing of this, is that I think it's important to remember you're supposed to enjoy your motorsport as well as being the career element to it for the likes of yourself. Yeah, 100%. This is pure enjoyment, it's certainly from what we're doing this weekend. It's um, as long as as long as everyone's smiling, regardless of the, of the pace or the result, if we're smiling, that we're, that's good enough for us. Thanks, Marcus. So there you go. There's the answer. We will see him. And I had to double check, like you say, because he was stood there it, like the whole of this time. He's in his jeans and his trainers and, uh, and everything like that. So we are going to see him out on circuit. It's quite a good uh, approach, really, because he, he run, <coughs> runs the car for the guys who pay their money to him. Um, but if he's standing there in his overalls and but get holding his helmet, that puts them under pressure, doesn't it? Because, uh, you know, they've got this star driver hotching around trying to get in the car but he's not like that he's just relaxed he's, he's standing to one side in civvies 
uh, to uh, get changed. But you say an hour and 20 minutes, I think it was, he yeah, said. Yeah, something like that. I have noticed as well, we've got Mike Morice into the pit lane, number three, Wingat Racing. And I think we also spotted NJM Racing coming in, car number six. That's got Peter Simmons behind the wheel. Is that David Murphy potentially getting back in? Because, of course, that's one of the few uh, two-driver cars that we've got out there. All will be revealed. Will Hilliard's lead? 2.3 seconds. Yeah, I was going to say, yes, it's uh, come down. But is it almost getting outside the bite-sized bite chunks realm now, yeah. aren't we? Into a real mouthful yeah, of... We're, uh, we're getting there, reduction right? yeah yeah well i think we've just leapfrogged forkful i suppose is probably the best way to put it really <laughs> haven't we so um will hilliard he will slowly see the milner car getting closer and closer and closer in his rear view mirror he's still dealing with traffic but so to do both of them the catastrophe car is showing up as uh, half a second i think that's now because simon bonham has been lapped uh, by the yes. cars up the road heading in towards brooklands now is our race leader, car number 12 of Will Hilliard, and you can see just how close Jack Wright is if you're watching the stream. He's well and truly there. There is um, Jack Wright, Simon Bonham, whilst he's displaying in third place. He's a lap down, unfortunately, now is uh, Simon Bonham, but all that can come unraveled through one of a number of avenues that may still take place in this race. But Will Hilliard, 2.3. Eight was the gap last time through as they break the beam. There goes Will Hilliard, 2.38 to 1.48. So nine tenths gained in the space of one lap for Jack, Jack Wright. He's well and truly there. Yeah, 12 and 46 there are the two cars we're focusing on now. They're fighting for the lead as three sets off again. That's been a change, has it, to... Presumably so. It was Mark Morice behind the wheel. I'm guessing Matthew Weymouth will get in for his first stint. But I um, guess we wait and see. Six is still in. We've also had, unfortunately, Team Lifeline back into the pit lane. So whatever's going on there, it, hopefully it's just a, um, a planned stop. But at the moment, it's 275 rolling down the pit lane with Jake Lane behind the wheel. There's still two other drivers yet to get in, Chris. Yeah, this looks like it's just going to be a, a routine stop because they got two of the, uh, the dumb jugs full of fuel so uh, well no sorry actually one and a half they've got to be precise i've just seen the sun shining through the second one so in it comes off comes that uh, pain in the neck fuel cap for them and the full jug's going to be uh, upturned then they release the valve so that gravity can now start doing its job and it all goes well they hope it's all going to go of course it gets a little bit tricky they have to sort of twist it round, spin it round, so that uh, it, it, it's not going a fuel full dump and of course it just sucks the air out and it slows down if they spin it so it goes like water going down a plug hole round and round and round it's sort of uh, allowing some air to come guzzling back up into it is the theory at the very least but it so it does get a little bit tricky for them at the bottom end sometimes but uh, in goes the one then they will put the uh, the second jug which as i say is only half of it there and uh, i'm not sure what have we got left now and it has a time two and a half hours two and a half hours just over yeah so i mean we're halfway through splash dash maybe towards the end um but uh, yeah so this the, the good news is the important part in, in picking up on your question is that yeah routine stop right the leaders are absolutely together now so the uh, the gap as they went over the line Completing their 106 lap was just 0.388 of a second. So although we're watching a car being refueled, it's a long way back down the order. In fact, in 32nd place, what would be good to see is the battle for the lead. There we are, and they've swapped around, haven't they? They have indeed. Jack Wright into the lead of the race. It's not like we were treated to a battle or anything. He just sort of appeared and he was like, OK, yeah, I'm taking the lead and has done it. And we'll now try and build that gap. I mean, they could have battled a bit, couldn't they? That would have been nice. But um, rolling down the pit lane now is car number 11, so the 11 tenths racing car. I've still got noted down that Brian Crawford uh, is behind the wheel. Let's have a quick look at the timings to see if it is still the case. I, um, Byron Crawford, no. It's I'm Paul Stout, pardon me. But, uh, Paul Stout Byron took it Crawford over. Crawford started that car, yeah. Paul Stout, yeah. So there's still uh, potentially Jean-Luc or Johnny Elia, however you refer yeah. to him, and Paul Pierce um, to get in. I was looking at the cars that have recently come into the pit lane. And we have indeed seen a change. The car that was started by Leon Bridgeway, then taken over by Mike Morice, is now in the hands of Matthew Weymouth. That's car number three, uh, Wingat Racing. So Matthew Weymouth is now behind the wheel. We did also see car number six, that's NJM Racing. Um, I've got it down now that David Murphy has got back into that car. Of course, he's the driver that started. That would be the rotation, yes. Yeah, so they've done a full rotation. David Murphy back in. And we will see more and more uh, pit callers as the race goes on, Chris. 
Yeah, the number 11 jumping into that one this time round is uh, Paul Pierce in his uh, bright red overalls and uh, getting him uh, tucked straight in. No fuel this time, so it's just uh, driver out, driver back in again. And, uh, and it's worth also reporting that I have to say, I've not even really seen any of the teams even bothering to look at tyres. So it, it's almost as if there is no concern about their tyres during the course of this race and they'll just rock on. But no fuel for the number 11. Driver strapped in, pushed back and they're going to get this car back underway. Well, unless it's a legacy of previous races, we're just watching a shot now which shows quite a lot of marbles. In other words, bits of tyre, bits of rubber uh, lying off just, just off the racing line. So I think the tyres are wearing out, but maybe they'll have a more detailed check of them at the next pit stop or the next but one as yeah. the race nears its end. You'd imagine it would be the front tyres that would wear yes. out more naturally because they've, they've got the weight of the engine and they do all the work. They do the power, they do the turning, they do absolutely everything that involves that car and the rear axles more or less just there to keep the back of the car off the ground and probably have a bit of fun along the way. So the, the, the rear tyres should definitely make it, the front tyres, uh, you will start to feel them fall off as the race wears on. Jack Wright having got in front of Will Hillyard hasn't exactly pulled no, away last not, time they it? broke the beam. Yeah, only three tenths of a second. Simon Bonham still a lap down and um, hasn't got too much uh, by way of attacking back. Rhys Kello, however, and Phil Hinson, fourth and fifth respectively, 65 Autotech Motorsport and 125. Three Amigos, a pair of those two being having a great scrap for the final couple of spots in the top five and they're still yeah. only three tenths apart and if they continue to battle 1.8 seconds back is the 121 car uh, that has been calamity and andrew hinch behind the wheel at the moment so they could be involved that could be three cars fighting over the final few spots in the top five yeah uh, andrew hinch's lap time slightly slower than the two cars ahead of him whose lap time is almost identical but it could well be that andrew hinch can close in but uh, certainly the lead situation uh, is still close, even though it may be switched in the order a couple of laps ago. So Jack Wright leads. He's not getting away from Will Hilliard at the moment. No. In, fact, they know, in fact, Will Hilliard closes up as they dive down into Beckett's. Through Beckett's they go onto the Wellington Strait. We also won't see Andrew Hinch close up on the cars up the road because the 121 Calamity car dived into the pit lane. I'm waiting to see a helmet appear and a driver back out if there is. I'm guessing we'll see Marcus Batty jump back into that car. And we've also got car number 22 coming down the pit lane, AFK Racing. We've currently got Natalie Knowles behind the wheel, still Nick Berg and Tim Parsons to jump behind the wheel. So the pit lane, I think, is going to become busier and busier once again. Lapping a slower car there, second place number 12. May have lost a little bit of ground to the, not the lot though, there's still hanging on the tail of number 46, the leader, Jack Wright. Further callers to the pit lane, car number 44. That's Graves Motorsport, currently with Catherine Ship behind the wheel. You'd imagine Stuart Kinner would get in. And then the lapped car, more annoyingly, I'm sure, for uh, Will Hilliard, that just cost him a bit of time, went straight into the pit lane. So he's currently got Grant Grove behind the wheel, and still Union McGuinness and Cat Sells. Uh, to jump in so traffic's becoming an issue with everybody merged into one sort of race at the moment you could see the the rear left the inside rear of the pro-am racing number 12 machine heading through uh, brooklyn's lifting that inside rear just with the amount of steering lock and the weight transfer on that car um, chris will be down there in a busier pit lane um, so i'm sure he will have plenty of stories to bring us as this race wears on somebody we've not talked about since they really fell out of the leader of the race um, that being Darren Midgley, of course, uh, car number eight, Pro-Am Racing, previously started by Gordy Much. They're still lapping fairly quickly, uh, one minute twenties fairly consistently as well. However, they are slowly uh, being caught, I fear, from, uh, from the cars behind. If anything, they're falling away from the cars up the road. Whilst the cars behind have had a slightly troublesome lap, they were diving into the pit lane, so it's bought them a bit of time. Over the line, we're going three wide, and uh, I think only two of them are actually fighting for, for position. One of them was the 747 uh, Lar Motorsport car in the hands of uh, Mike Collins, but it just shows you don't necessarily need to be fighting for a position. You could just, you, yeah. might, you might not have any idea what, what position you're in or what position they're in. You go, okay, I'll stick it up the inside. All right, 22 is in the pits then. So who are we putting that into in the hands of now? Nick Berg. Um, Nick Berg or Tim Parsons. 
Yeah, just to update you on the tyre situation, just chat to a few of the people down here. And uh, the situation is, last year they didn't change any tyres. Um, however, the front left was sort of like fairly uh, dead, to say the least, but they were able to go the full way. And that was only one safety car last year as well. Um, and if they do need to change, they won't start looking, at, even bother looking at them until the very last pit yeah. stop. And it will be if that front left not is it bad but is it going to uh, destroy before the end of the race then they might change it but it'll literally be that one front left tire probably is the only one that they'll change otherwise they they expect them to be able to last to the end of the race the point being of course that changes they don't have knockoff center lock uh, no. wheels do they you've no. got to undo studs how many studs four four, is it? Five, four. four of them uh, by the looks of it and, a and the other uh, key issue is that they said the guys were saying that uh, your biggest problem is that where they're really really hot You've got, the, you've got to be really gentle with it because otherwise you can cross-thread them just because of the heat. And as soon as you do that, that's it, game over. So there's several reasons why it's not a good idea to have to change your tyres. Yeah, exactly. They will not do it unless they absolutely have to. Now, the interesting one is the triple five car that was in having the new gearbox put in. Mm. They obviously did change tyres. They may as well. They were in there for a good chunk of time doing that. But yeah, the cars that are out there, they will only change one tyre if they absolutely have to. If they change more than that, then they're putting more work in than they need to. Well, Jack, what is the, apart from the closeness of the leading pair, what, what's close? Um, further down the order, Andy Burton, uh, car number one, he's just actually jumped up the order because we've got cars in the pit lane. He's not that far away from the car with that two lap penalty, the treble three of uh, Phil Truman. So they're now fighting over what is 15th and 16th. They're only, what, eight tenths apart now. So not too much to separate uh, the pair of those two. We're waiting for a brilliant battle to cross the line. That is car 747, car number 21 then, not on the same lap. Uh, car number 21 is um, down in 21st place in car 747 with, um, uh, who is it that's behind the wheel? That's Mike College. Um, is up there in eighth place and they're having a great little scrap as they cross the line so they're on opposite ends of the order but fighting away like it's for the lead and that's the fun to be had because uh, not yeah, everybody can win the race can they and uh, just pick up a playmate uh, and have fun we do now have nick berg behind the wheel car number 22 afk racing so nick berg presumably at the end of his stint he will hand over to tim parsons to bring that car home car number one two one Having crossed the line, the name hasn't changed. I'm assuming it was always Marcus Batty that started, then Andrew Hinch. Here they in. are. I think Andrew Hinch has remained in the car, and the leaders just working their way through Maggots and Beckett. I've got to say, with the rate that Jack Wright closed, I was expecting him to pull away. I agree with you, yes. It looked as though he was going to be able to do so, but he just hasn't. And uh, whether this is because Will Hilliard has uh, thought, well, it's quite sensible actually at this stage to just sit behind the car that is leading. Only if it begins to break away do you then have to set up the situation, but at the moment just sit there. We have also had Marcus Batty jump behind the wheel once again. I ap apologise, I thought it was Andrew Hinch that stayed there, but Marcus Batty is now behind right. the wheel of Calamity Racing car number 121. But um, the battle we saw between 747 and car number 21 will come to an end because into the pit lane comes uh, the 747 Lar Motorsport car. Of course, that's now in the hands of Mike Collins. You'd imagine Duncan Macbeth will get behind the wheel. But if he does, he will not be able to run it to the end of the race because there's two minutes and 23, uh, two hours and 23 minutes remaining. And you can only run for a maximum of two hours and 20 minutes. Yeah. And two hours and 20 minutes nearly elapsed uh, two hours and 20 minutes well and truly elapsed oh, have been, well, uh, yes I was the wrong side of the countdown and so with two hours and 22 and a half minutes remaining it's still Jack Wright leading the way but he's not pulling away from Will Hilliard half a second separates a pair of those two and the closest cars we've got on circuit are both on the same lap. It's not like we, I mean, we do have other cars that are sort of <laughs> nose to tail, but they're um, well and truly, like we've got some that are two or three laps apart and still fighting away like it's for position, which is brilliant to see and got every right to fight. But Jack Wright, yeah, we were expecting him to pull away. It's not quite worked that way. He's still only lapping, what, half a second away yeah. from the overall fastest lap of the race. So keeping up a very, very good pace indeed. Andy Burton, um, that's one thing to note as well. Kahuna's race team, obviously it's, the treble three of um, 
uh, Phil Treeman. He's crossing the line with Andy Burton, in theory, two laps behind him. But with that two-lap penalty applied, whether he knows he's got to fight that for position, I guess I mean, only, yeah, only he, he knows, really. No, that was a thought that was going through my mind about that and about other situations where do the drivers really know um, how they are relative to others, other than what they can see out of the window. Uh, see they're catching a car, which may or may not be for an overall position. So anyway, it's, it's partly about dicing, it's partly about uh, doing lap times that enable you to catch somebody and helping your team to achieve the best possible result. At the same time, having good fun. The uh, 747 car is back in again, yeah. uh, but completely caught everybody unawares and uh, pulled in very steadily, kind of waving, well, where is everybody? Uh, and I just uh, had a quick chat to uh, Duncan Macbeth, and the answer is he misunderstood the, uh, the radio message. They thought it, they'd told him to box. I haven't asked what they were actually saying, but it wasn't that. Now, I, think I forget what the time it says on the clock because uh, Duncan's now going to be jumping into this car. 20 minutes remaining. Right, so he did say they're going to be right at the borderline because that obviously means they don't plan to come back in again and Duncan's going to take it to the end and it just about falls with <laughs> into that window. Yeah, it's when his drive time starts though. Does, it, does yeah. his drive time start when he exits yeah. the pit lane? Yes, it will do. So that's going to be less than the two hours I was twenty. I going to say, tell them they need to wait around for thirty seconds, and then it'll be <laughs> they're all good. refueling, so they're fine. Okay, yeah. So you'd imagine Duncan McBeth running that car to the end of the race, then. So, um, albeit not necessarily the. But you've got to think if if the team were ready for him and they came in and they he got the, the fuel straight away, they might have been the wrong side of those could, two hours. Could have been, minutes. yeah. So th they Ooh, did they're changing the front fumbled. left. They're changing the front left, so there's oh, right. what we were talking about earlier. Let's keep the cameras on this, just uh, watch what's involved in a wheel change. Right, so the four the four bolts are off, <laughs> the other wheel thrown away, the new one put on, and uh, and in they go now. You know, looking at the, the tyre down there, it doesn't look too horrific. There's probably not an awful lot of tread left on Could it pass the MOT? It, probably not. <laughs> probably not. But uh, I thought they liked slicks. But they're now quickly, all four bolts are done. The jack comes down. The driver, while they were doing that, is still being uh, strapped in. So they're not losing any great no. time doing this one, to be fair. But no, that's it's, it's why right, one's valid is that you wouldn't want to go and then have to change the front right as well, for example. Or any others, yes. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah, so if you, it's only the, the front left. Correct, because that's the one they're obviously leaning on predominantly on, on this circuit. We have also seen Radio Sukaru racing back into the pit lane. Presumably, it's Chris Hilson to oh, hand over yeah. to uh, Peter Dignan for the latter stages of this race. And also, we've had in Simon Bonham from what was third place, uh, the uh, 112 for catastrophe. I'm guessing Robert Thomas would be back. Well. So 747, from what you've uh, suggested, Chris, is now Duncan Macbeth for the rest of the race. Correct. Has he got the timing right? Because he has now left yes. the uh, the building. Yeah, he's got it right, but well and truly a splash and dash, I think, for the, for the rest of the race, or do, maybe just towards the, the latter stages. I'm waiting to see who gets in the Subaru car. I'm guessing it will be Peter Dignan. And then uh, looking at Catastrophe, it should be Robert Thomas that gets behind him. We'll wait for everything to update. GMB Finch Racing, car number seven, losing a place on the lap prior. That now has... Does that have behind the wheel? I've just lost them on the timing screen. That's B. Smith, so Benjamin Smith has got behind the wheel. That, that's a change that I've, uh, I've missed out. Um, but so we're slowly starting to see the leaders come closer and closer together again. Two and three quarter tenths separate Jack Wright and Will Hilliard 0 0.275 of a second as they cross the line. And are they now working together to try and pull away? But when you look at it, Will Hilliard, um, I know that's the, uh, uh, the the times that they have posted. So a few laps ago, we saw Will Hilliard post his overall fastest lap of the race with a, um, a 1 minute 19.738. That was on lap 112, and he's just on lap 119 now. So to find that kind yeah. of pace at this later stage in the race explains why they're closing up. Yeah, just going back to 555s, the Super Racing car, that, that is t totally out of the running. I mean, last yeah. year's winners uh, are running actually 33 laps behind the leader 33 yes 33 laps behind the leader uh, in uh, what is a classified 34th place out of 35 cars so very much the opposite of last year's outcome 
Looks like as well. We've got Cat Cells now behind the wheel of car number two. That's the right. MJMs and PDCs car um, that's had a, a, a small moment earlier on in the race. Luke Usher remains behind the wheel of the Usher Motorsport car. We mentioned that one earlier on, so David Usher still yet to get in. But our race leader, what of falling away? Yes, well and truly, I would say so. So a much slower lap, I think, and this time from Will Hillyard. It looked like he had the pace, but he's fallen away from Jack Wright yeah. because through goes Jack Wright, and they're separated by the Semprini racing car, car number 27. I, I was going to say that I think that's one of the reasons why he's fallen away. We'll see whether he can make up that lost ground, but certainly he's no longer as close. What's the gap come up at? Over a second. Yeah, it was hovering around the 0.345 mark of a second. Now it is 1.5. So he's lost a, more than a second on that lap, Will Hilliard, to Jack Wright. And I think that was, well, hopefully there's nothing wrong with the car. I think that was down to traffic. Now he's got a clear run at the leader now as they go through Beckett's, through Maggots and into Beckett's. And can he chip away at that gap? and bring it down again. So there they are, heading off down the Wellington Strait. Leader and second place car. Saving tire wear on the left rear. I keep the car under three wheels through Brooklands, now through Luffield, and coming through to complete their 120th lap. So it's very much these two, at the moment, the way things are going, Jack, I would say for the one of these will be the winner, is a prediction. Perhaps I'm sticking my neck out too far. Yeah, but of course, we, we, there's potential for further race interruptions and mistakes and, and what have you. So we may, problems. Yeah, absolutely. And we, we may still see uh, further kinks in the town. I'm just picking my way down through the order as mm. to who has been in. And there's a lot of stops that I, I may have missed as well. So constantly going through and uh, updating my uh, uh, my notes. I'm running out of room for all these circles, to be honest. There's, there's a number of circles on there now as well, so all colour coordinated as well. Um, so we've got um, Orca Sports, kind of a 74. Do you join up the dots That's later on Michael at the end of the race? Yeah, do dot to dot on my, on my entry list. So Michael Davies is now behind the wheel again, another um, uh, pit stop that we've missed. But in terms of the closest cars we've got out there, what of the leaders falling apart or falling away from each other? I would say is car number 126. That's Glory Car. Whereabouts are they? Car number 26. I've Ninth. Completely lost them. I've got them down as a 126. That'd be, that'd be why if I look at the correct number. Um, that is uh, Neil Smith behind the wheel. And he's only four tenths away now from car number 55. That's Cash Traps Racing and uh, Alex Tentori. There's half a second separating them. Right, and the gap that separates the two leaders is no longer half a second. It has uh, come down slightly, though. It went up on that one particular lap uh, to 1.5 something seconds, but it's now come down to 1.3. So it's it's coming back down again between Jack Wright and who, of course, half an hour ago was chasing Will Hilliard. Now it's Will Hilliard trying to close down on Jack Wright. Both of them having completed 121 laps and then in third place. In third place, it is number 65. Is it? Yeah, no. Reese Kelly behind me. Yes. That. Yes, oh, Kelly, yes, sorry, Reese Kelly. Just looking at the other Auto Tech car, car number 64, that's a long way uh, down the order from where you'd expect it. Things are getting quite energetic. 65, 125, and who else is there as well? Uh, behind the Eight. Num Boston number racing, yeah. Eight. So this is uh, all going on for third, third place, place, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, so maybe a lap down the leaders, but they're having a right old scrap and a podium position, position could be the result because yeah. it's obviously for third place. Absolutely. Reese Callow is defending third place as much as he can from Three Amigos and Phil Hinson. They do have the Treble 8 car, which is what to, uh, a lap down on them, but it, it, mm. he's got the pace to stick with that top three. So, were anything to happen, they've got, um, they know they've got that pace in hand. So, we're, what, 55 percent ish of, of our way through this race with uh, two hours and 12 minutes still to go. Jack Wright and Will Hilliard, the gap's out to two and a half mm. seconds now. Reese Kello and Phil Hinson break the beam, and they're what's uh, 0.4, 0.5 of a second apart. 
And then we get the treble eight car of Boston Racing, and that's currently has uh, Ben Curran behind the wheel. And whilst they are a lap down, they have got, again, every right to try and fight in that battle, but it's a brilliant battle for the final step on the provisional podium, of course. That's right. So, is it going to be a case of, uh, whenever anybody makes a pit stop now, from now on, they will fill up with enough fuel to get them to the finish? You would like to think so, wouldn't you? But um, again, uh, it's tyres. If they think they may need to, to box for tyres, they can short fuel that potentially. Um, the, the total driving time, one stint can't exceed two hours, 20 minutes. Is yes. that right? Yeah. But can you do two hours, 20 minutes, put your feet up for half an hour, then go back? Yeah, it has to be half an hour rest that you have, and then you can get back in and do presumably another two hours, 20 minutes. Um, we will bring the statistic back up. Now we have completed 6,663 miles, uh, uh, all the cars combined. That's, right. a, that's a fair few. Um, bearing in mind our leaders have done 121 miles. However, car number 81, what a brilliant lap it was for Ian Mitchell, the new fastest lap of the race, 1 minute 19.551 mm. on lap 121 for that car. I'm guessing they will have to come into the pit lane rather shortly because that car was properly running quite low on fuel. And they, of course, are in the middle of that scrap that's going on for third place, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. He will come in to hand over to Darren Stapleton. And if you remember correctly, Darren Stapleton was leading this race for a long, long while. So we will um, we will see what it does when he gets back into the car. But for the moment, with the fastest lap of the race, we'll just continue well, to chip away. Go on. One, two, five, getting a bit wide there. We haven't had news of many uh, track limit penalties, but 125 getting uh, dangerously close to picking up a penalty. That time through Beckett's, that's the uh, David Drinkwater, Paul Hinson, Adam Reed car. Who do we reckon is in that at the moment, Jack? Um, let's have a quick look. Car number 125. That means really goes. I've got Paul Hinson down in that okay. car. Okay. Um, still yet to pit um, for um, and Adam Reed to get behind the wheel but we're slowly updating who we've got in the car and who has completed since we've still got a number of drivers that we yet to see out there as well the gap first or second has come down to 1.4 then now it's gone up to 1.9 so it, it it's seesawing rather and ian mitchell as you say has done the fastest lap of the race now on lap 121 he's now on his 122nd lap and 23rd lap so the gap first is second, 1.9 seconds. Two hours and nine minutes remain. It's brewing nicely. It very much is. We've very oh. briefly lost the, uh, uh, the stream footage from our side. There we go, we've got everything back and up and running once again. Um, whatever happened to the treble three, it's almost like it's updated and removed their two lap penalty. So I don't know whether the team manager of Kahuna's race team has um, has maybe been for a word and um, and, and got that um, and got that two lap penalty disappeared. But in terms of timing, they have jumped up two laps as to where we would okay. expect them to be into into fifth place, and that now only puts them what uh, 30 seconds. Well, I was going to say only uh, 30 seconds away from three amigos in second place. We had a pit call at car number 11. Will Hilliard a new fastest lap of the race? Well and truly, a one minute 19.473. Brilliant lap. Go on, Chris. Well, just picking up on the uh, the 11 tenths uh, racing team coming in, and uh, I was like thinking, well, that's quite early that he's coming in, yeah. and it did seem to catch the team uh, by surprise. They've just come running out of the garage now, and just sort of wandering down. Now, fuel jugs have come out, but they're kind of looking at a few bits and pieces, so I don't think they were fully expecting this. So jumping out from that uh, number 11, let me remind myself... That's uh, Paul Pierce that's jumped out of that one. They are looking at the front as though there's some kind of issue, but they are getting ready to be able to uh, refuel it as well. Do we have a Johnny Elio getting ready to, to get in? Or? Well, no. Uh, just trying to look into the back there because at the moment you might find that Paul's going to go back into it, yep. but they are looking closely at the front of this car as though something's wrong. But of course, they're not touching it because they're not allowed to whilst the, uh, the fuel is going in. So that looks to me as though they're... Uh, they're... Paul, is there a problem? Um, yeah, steering's off-centre. 
Um, and under braking, it's, I'm getting quite a lot of wobble. Ah, okay. So I did come off, so I might have picked up a load of um, a load of rubber. But uh, yeah, we'll take it back out, see how we go. Fantastic. So there you go. That explains it. That's why it was an unexpected stop. But they're they're running it as a, you know as a normal stop where they're throwing some fuel in it. Why not? If you've got to come in anyway, but. They can't have a too close a look until they finish refueling, as, uh, as you can probably see the, uh, the mechanics at the front waiting to sort of work out when they can have a look at it, and the answer is not yet. And then they're going to need to see, is it just some debris that's in the front making it unsteady? Uh, can they sort it out? But either way, it sounds like they're going to go out and just not have quite as comfortable a ride, doesn't it? Thanks, Chris. That uh, fastest lap I just mentioned for Will Hilliard is in fact quicker than anything was achieved in last year's race, so it stands as a, as a lap record for four Ks on the Silverstone Club circuit, national circuit. So uh, 119.473, that is a new Ford K8 record for the Silverstone national circuit. Great stuff. So, and again, that, that may be um, a, a deciding factor come the end of the race as to what tyres do because it's, it's getting hot so quick. Um, and yeah. the gap from first to second, Jack, is down to less than a second now, 0.709 of a second. So uh, Will Hilliard certainly a man on a mission now. Absolutely so, Chris. If you can find the Kahuna's race team package as well, have a word in there, just a quick question pop your head in. Because their two lap penalty seemingly has disappeared on the timing and they're up into fifth place again. So I don't know where the conversations have been had. Is, uh, probably the way I will put it, but Reese Callow and Phil Hinson, third and fourth, Auto Tech Motorsport versus Three Amigos, they're less than four tenths apart, and our race lead gap is less than half a second now. We're getting some brilliant battles inside this top four alone. We are, we are. So for the lead, it is as close as it has been at any stage in the race, really. And there was a big lockup heading in towards. Uh, Brooklyn, I'm not sure whether you heard it, but someone clearly pushing hard and uh, just trying to um, close down a gap up the road, and that was just in front of our race leaders. Down two places since the pit stop is the 11 tenths car, as you say, still with Paul Bears behind the wheel. Now they've got into a bit of traffic, the two leaders, and that may delay the second of the cars in that uh, battle, Will Hilliard's car, for the moment. We'll see what the gap was. It was 0.448 last time through this time. Through they go, and the gap. 0.7, no, what, that's right, 1.727. Yep. So it has gone up, hasn't it? Well, it's really gone up by, um, you know, over a full second that time through. The three amigos still giving chase to Autotech Motorsport and Reese Kelly. What's the gap as they break the beam? 0 0.363 of a second. So continuing just to remain closer than ever I will look towards Brooklyn and try and pick out the um, treble three kahuna's race team car which I'd imagine is, uh, is still out there ah an 11 tenths motorsport having just been into the pit lane and they were saying that the uh, it, it all felt a bit weird the steering was off center fortunately he's only got three wheels left on his wagon yes the fourth wheel the uh, one that takes the strain on the, on a clockwise circuit uh, is still in connection with the car but not where it ought to be it's uh, fallen under the wing it's like lower ball joints or something as uh, mm. soon as all collapsed whatever lower control arm whatever it may be into the pit lane we had a pit caller we've still got wave yellows out there who was it that came into the pit lane didn't pick out exactly who it was it could potentially be calamity no it's um uh, glory cup or glory car um into the pit lane kind of a one two six that's neil smith presumably to hand back over to um michael, michael mccullum yeah so where that car was, that's going into Luffield. So that'll be down here. That'll be the noise I heard. I thought it was somebody locking up, but in towards um, sort of Brooklands and Luffield area, that's where we've got the 11 tenths car uh, sat stationary. The marshals were already there talking to them, but um, you'd imagine that car needs uh, more than just a little bit of assistance. They are managing to push that car out of the way. So hats off to the Silverstone marshals for doing that. So do you think we'll have it out of the way and won't need more than yellows for a short time? Yeah, hopefully not. Um, there it is, yeah, so I think they've just kicked the wheel back straight and you can see, yeah, a lower control arm falling out the bottom of the car, so whatever's gone on. Yeah, 126 into the pit lane. Chris, you may need to confirm exactly who it is that's getting into the car. You'd imagine it's Michael McCullum getting in. So, Brooklyn's still being covered by localised yellows as the fabulous Orange Army, as ever, 
doing a brilliant job of getting that um, getting that car out of the way. And really, we wouldn't be able to go racing without Marshalls. No. If, um, if you are interested in becoming a Marshall, head over to marshalls.co.uk. It doesn't have to be here at Silverstone. It doesn't have to be for an MSBR meeting wherever you are in the country. If you want to sign up yourself up for a taste today, um, it really is a brilliant day because you can spend the morning looking around absolutely everything that goes into a motorsport meeting. So scrutineering, park ferme, race control, the, the flag post, start finish line, assembly area, absolutely everything and more. Then in the afternoon, you get um, put on a post, not on your own. There's a very experienced team of marshals that will see you all through the day. Um, and that is the best way to get into motorsport. So please do sign yourself up. We can't do it without you. Into the pit lane comes car number 125. That's three Amigos uh, with Paul Hinton behind the wheel that I imagine Adam Reed is in the pit lane, ready and waiting to, uh, to take over that car. Yes, that car running in fourth place. But obviously we'll lose that fourth place now. Yeah, and just uh, I, I ran in to speak to the 11 tenths uh, racing team, obviously with uh, you. Uh, and I saw it in the pit on the pictures as I ran in there, showing that it was being pushed away. Sure enough, they're on the radio and they've gone. No, nope, that's it. We're out. It's done. Now I know that sounds like an obvious statement, but don't forget within this is that they can be pushed off the circuit and they can be bought uh, through the centre and they can work on the car. They lose two laps but they can then get it back out again, up to a certain point. I can't remember where the point is when they I can thought, no longer do it. I anything. thought it was the final half an hour. That yeah, it, I, it, it wasn't anywhere near where we're at now, but they seem to suggest, no, that's job done. Um, they might have a look at it when it comes back, but it, it comes back to what was being reported by Paul that for some reason the steering is like totally off center so it's like pointing towards the uh, the right i think do, it was this symbol you do have gm performance coming down to you responding to a black and orange mechanical ah, warning okay. flag. So that's coming back towards you i think an exhaust hanger has fallen off Looking right what number is that 81 81 so they're down this it. way um so that car's into the pit lane we've also had uh, car number 126 into the pit into the pit lane and that was in the hands of neil smith michael mccullum I'd imagine was uh, waiting, but it's it's all got very busy all of a sudden. Yeah, with two hours exactly to go, two hours to the chequered flag, so we're past the halfway mark. And the uh, the 81 car, they uh, they're in and they're doing a normal pit stop to start with, so the refueling has happened. And uh, you're right, the exhaust is hanging down. Uh, the scrutineer is stood behind watching, but of course they do that anyway, keep an eye on everything. So presumably, once they finish the, the refueling, they'll have to look at a way to uh, to bring that back in again. Yep, so they bought a, uh, a, a stand out and they'll jack it up and they'll, uh, they'll try and... I think they've just got the good old-fashioned cable ties that are going to keep the exhaust up. Right, well, the, uh, the lead situation is uh, getting larger because uh, Jack Wright is now 2.9 seconds in car 46 ahead of the number 12 car with Will Hilliard at the wheel. So since he got tucked up in the middle of traffic, he's dropped away gradually, Will Hilliard, and he's now almost out of reach yeah, behind. Yeah, it seems like that uh, aerodynamic assistance he was receiving mm -hmm. was very, very useful indeed, and unfortunately that's dropped him down. So I can see we've got, what, four cars in the pit lane, three Amigos, GM Performance, Boston Racing, and Porsche Carrera Motorsport, they've uh, uh, dived for the pit lane as well. Um, just looking further down the order, I can't see anybody else that's in. Luke Usher remains behind the wheel of the Usher Motorsport car that's just crossed uh, the line there. The yellow flags have been withdrawn down the Wellington Strait towards, um, uh, towards Brooklands. But car number 125 still getting fueled up. And that, of, that of course, that uh, three Amigos car was fighting for third and fourth place. Mm. That's right. So third place in the hands of 66, is it? 65. 65. Colour. However he's colour driving it, as you say. Okay, so we've uh, kind of lost our battle for the lead. It's uh, getting larger and larger, that gap. That's kind of what we thought would happen uh, once Jack Wright got past. Now it's taken a while for him to be in to prize open a, a gap over Will Hilliard. So 65 in third place, and then in fourth place is number 333. Carl race team. And who do we reckon is in that now? That was the one that was started by Costa Kiraitis, isn't it? And yeah. uh, 
think it's still Phil, Phil Truman. Truman before Ian Perkins has a turn because he hasn't driven it yet, I don't think. No, I've not uh, noted down that, it, that he's been in. I'm just keeping an eye on the treble eights because I know Ben uh, Curran has been in the Boston racing car for a, a long, long time and I'm waiting for the timing screen to update, hoping it will swap over the treble five. Subaru racing back over the field, uh, back over the line. That's Peter Dignan behind the wheel of that car. And we know we've got Adam Reed uh, jumping in. So if we have a look uh, down the order, Adam Reed, that's the 125, so that is three amigos. So Adam Reed is staying in the car. I think he, he was in that car when it initially came in for the, for the fuel stop, so I think he's just staying behind the wheel now. Jacob Fells is indeed behind the wheel of the Treble 8 Boston Racing car, so they too have swapped around. No Adam Reed obviously has just been in. I'm just looking back as the drivers that have been into the pit lane, what, three times? Car number three is. Wingat Racing, we know that came in because Leon Bidgeway had the penalty to start off with very early on in the race. We've got Team Lifeline that have been into the pit lane five times, whereas everybody in our top nine have only been in once. Yes. Right, here on screen, going into Beckett's, just lapping number one, run four, is at 46. The race leader, Jack Wright, and the car started by Johnny Milner. And his uh, lead now over the second place car, Will Hilliard, the Pram Racing car, 3.65 seconds. That car, of course, still has the fastest lap to his credit, with it, courtesy of Will Hilliard. Notice car number uh, 81, that being GM Performance, Darren Stapleton is now back behind the wheel. Of course, he was long time race leader. Um, as well was Darren, so that car will potentially pick up the pace. Into the pit lane comes car number one, Andy Burton, to hand over to Steve Gilbert in the Burton Power Racing Machine. So that car is uh, dived for the pit lane. From 16th yeah. place, is it? Yeah, yeah 16th. Previously, uh, from 9th place, pardon me, the Burton Power car. Previously, that car has gone very, very well indeed and um, is... Uh, has really started to pick up the pace over the years. Oops, but, uh, that was a bit of a wiggle there was, by the leader. Car, yeah. yeah, car number 46, that was Milner racing of, uh, of Jack Wright. Yeah, just dipped a wheel over that curb and he'd unsettled the car. We've got another car going down the pit lane with its rear wiper engaged. I don't think there's any issue with rain, but um, I didn't quite pick out the number because it's got not got a number on its rear window. Which, uh, which one's this? Whoever's, oh, going, know, down, whoever's yeah. going down the pit lane without a rear number. 95. 95, okay, so that's will be the WKD car, presumably, with Marcus Clutton getting ready, Chris. Well, I'm looking down. They've received the car. They've uh, got the fuel ready. I'm sort of making my way there, keeping an eye on the, uh, the Burton racing as well. well he told you, I think, uh, there's an hour and 54 minutes uh, of the race remaining. And yes, Marcus Clutton is now fully uh, race suited and his, uh, his lovely sort of chrome or metallic turquoise helmet is on so Marcus Clutton is getting in that 95 be interesting to see what that does now doesn't it yeah absolutely so and presumably Steve Gilbert is getting in the Burton Power racing car that's whilst they're still refueling it of course driver can't be in so um, yeah, that car is being refueled 747 that's La Motorsport and uh, Duncan Macbeth fighting away with the treble five of Sukaru Racing and Peter Dignan as they work their way down uh, the Wellington Straight. Wingat Racing are there with Matthew Weymouth as well. So they're going three wide almost. Matthew Weymouth cuts to the right, cuts to the left, desperately trying to find an opening on the way in towards Brooklands. Martin Weymouth isn't going to make it work this time. Is this a battle for a position? 7-4-7 seven, seven, uh, with Duncan Macbeth down in 22nd place. The treble five we've already established there a long way away from where they would like to be. Peter Dignan currently sat in 34th place and what of car number three, that being Wingat Racing and Martin Weymouth, they are in the 17th place. So all three of them on completely separate laps but battling like it's for the yes, lead. Yes, indeed. And lower down, fourth is number eight, fifth is 333, separated by less than a second. Down Midgley, number eight and Philip Truman, isn't it, in number 333. Eight, started by Gordy Much, now driven by Darren Midgley, will be driven, presumably, by Oliver Fernell when that car yes. makes its next and presumably final stop. Yeah, Oliver Fernell, I think the um, uh, one of the least experienced drivers on the grid, but that's not to take away from him. It just shows what a brilliant 
brilliant um, stepping stone this series can be and yes. what a brilliant start the Enduro uh, car series can be to your uh, hopefully rather illustrious racing career especially with uh, Ollie Fernal and what he can do on a simulator um, they're still fighting away 747 that being Lavo Sports and Subaru Racing side by side um, between themselves and Wingat Racing and uh, Matty Weymouth that has uh, since got involved so who's that further down the pit line can't quite see a number through the shot we're seeing but uh, fuel going in, and yep, spin the... Uh, Turn back. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, if, if you spin it round, it, it might just yes. work. But um, the front of the Wingat racing car still displaying that damage that was um, caused when um, Leon Bidgeway decided to help. It was, at the time, Adrian Wood, I think, towards the gravel. But for the moment, we're doing all right. The lead gap out to 3.8 seconds, though. That traffic was exactly what Bill Hilliard didn't yes. need. Yes, he's uh, dropped out of the slipstream and getting back on turns is going to be difficult. Eight in the fourth place, Darren Midgley. The uh, the car you could see in the background, Jack, was the uh, the 95 down the far end, so the white car of uh, the WKD Motorsport. Marcus Clutton is now jumping in that, and it's worth pointing out they are banging on a new front left on that one, so they're not only throwing Marcus Clutton out, they're throwing it in the best possible condition they can fully brimmed with fuel so uh, be interested to see now yeah maybe not towards the start of the stint but the end of this stint where the fuel has come out and, and uh, the the tire will be potentially substantially better than others you've got another car heading down towards you now Chris it's original checkers racing with Conrad uh, Crickmay behind the wheel I'd imagine Thomas Hendry is about to get back in so where's 95 95 WKD Motorsport there down in 27th Way down. Place. So that, that's the car that Marcus Clutton has taken yes. over, isn't it? So uh, realistically, I mean, we may, he may put in an exciting drive, but I don't think he's going to get... Of course, that's their pit stop's done now, though, as well, isn't it? Even so. Yeah, it is. But even so, is he going to be able to... I don't think... I think 10 laps might be a, just a bit too much, even for Marcus Clutton. Yes. Just looking down through the order as to what changes we've got. 4.8 seconds, the lead margin now since Jack Wright got there. He's just pulled away. And whilst he, he was holding fire for a, for a short while was Will Hilliard. He was still within touching distance. He's just started to fall away. That traffic, yeah, has really cost him five seconds now, that gap. But we were talking about Will Hilliard having the fastest lap, but Jack Wright has now got it, hasn't he? Uh, yeah, he set it uh, just a lap ago whilst yes. we were talking about the pit, pit lane, yeah. 190.356. Yeah, brilliant lap on lap 138. So you'd imagine that car is starting to get rather light now in terms of fuel load. There's a brilliant battle heading in towards um, Brooklyn's corner. It's still got the 747 uh, La Motorsport car. Sukuru Racing are still in on the mix as well. Car number 81, GM Performance with Darren Stapleton behind the wheel is fighting away and Darren expects to see him try and carve his way up through the order. So too is car number three, Wingat Racing, Matthew Weymouth is there or thereabouts in that little battle. Whilst Andy Burton and Burton Power Racing have gone through, I thought it would be Steve Gilbert behind the wheel, but it's still displaying Andy Burton, so we'll have to wait for that to be confirmed. Yeah, the lead going up five se over five seconds now, just over five seconds, who's that in? Car number 64, so um, Peter uh, Oscarby coming in, presumably to hand to uh, Christopher Buckley. Yeah, and they're going to be throwing fuel into theirs. And I can also report that the number 12 is about to come in from second on the uh, the road at the moment. And it will be uh, Scott Thompson that will be jumping yeah, out into in that car. Yeah, he comes now. In he comes. Yeah, so down it will come. They've got uh, two full jugs uh, or near as darn it. And uh, then it will be Scott Thompson will be jumping out in that Pro-Am racing. And, uh, they, and, you know, the reason why I'm really bringing that one is that is a team that clearly have their eyes so set on outright victory, don't yes, they? Yes, absolutely. So, Will Hilliard to hand over. <laughs> they, they really do mean business, even in this stop. These, uh, the driver just uh, unbuckled himself, jumped out of the car, slammed the door shut. Go, they shouted as they knew they were clear so that they could get on with the refueling and the, uh, the fire um, watcher there as well. And uh, as I say, they're going for a lot of fuel now, to be honest with you. So, but I think from memory, what happened last time round is that the, the number eight car uh, went very, very heavy on the fuel, whereas 12 went for less. Now we're going to get the flip round, I think, because Maybe. it's two full jugs for 12 this time. Right, so the effect of this is Jack Wright out front 
in uh, car 46, presumably will be coming in pretty soon to hand over to his dad, George. Leading by a lap from car number 12. But by the time we have 12 going through, he may well have lost second place, even though he was a lap ahead when he came in. Oh, that's a bit uh, wayward by uh, number eight there. Going through Beckett's. And in fourth place, Darren Midgley in fifth place, 333. Philip Truman in sixth place is 55. Alex Tentori, is it? Yes. Three and two running side by side for once, those two low digits. And uh, on different laps, I've no doubt. So the leaders completed, Jack Wright has completed 141 laps, not yet making the anticipated pit stop. Second on the screen is still number 12, but waiting for that car to rejoin and complete the, the lap. So show its position relative to number 65. Number 12 heads down the pit lane and back into the race. Meanwhile, KA's times two, times three across the track as they, under the vehicle bridge, dead, get down towards Brooklands. Chris. The uh, wonderful number 60 car hopefully is just being caught on camera, moving out of there. I know that it's one that you were talking about earlier, Jack, as well, the tango and crash. I think, were you suggesting it was your favorite? Uh, at the moment. No, to look at. No, at the moment, Jack's making a pit stop. Oh, I see. OK. <laughs> OK, well, uh, I'm Joining just you. wandering up this way because we need to find the uh, the team boss. When we Whoa, six has just spun round and reversed into the barrier. Uh, and it may be drivable away. We've cut away from the scene, but uh, carry on, Chris, please. Oh, here we are, six has been driven away. It uh, biffed the rear, bit of bodywork, left rear bodywork, maybe rubbing on a tire, but he may get away with it. Anyway, six is... That was coming into the pits. Yeah, that number six spun at the start from memory, didn't he, into the gravel. Uh, just very quickly, so I started saying is that the number 60, Tango and Crash, who have I got in front of me? Uh, team manager, Paul. And? Gary Buckingham. Uh, we, driver, driver, yeah, I like it, yeah, <laughs> 007. Uh, listen, guys, massive congratulations. You are this weekend's winner of the Dagenham Dustbin, voted for, of course, by the mighty Orange Army. The marshals have voted. This is down to how your car appears. They really like it, and I'm pretty sure our, one of our commentary team, Jack Werrell, was liking the look of it as well. Excellent. Thank you very much. It's very kind of you. And uh, how lovely that that is, the, uh, the mighty Orange Army that vote for that as well. Indeed. Well, we put the effort in, so we're glad it's appreciated. No, absolutely. As we appreciate, of course, the Orange Army, it's nice to see it uh, come both ways. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, we couldn't do this without the Marshall, so it's, uh, yeah, congratulations for them to turn up and bring the weather with them. Yes. And uh, we, we appreciate that as you get run over by the next car. Um, uh, yeah, we appreciate that, and we appreciate this as well. So thank you to everybody. Congratulations. So there it is. Show it up to the camera. The Dagenham Dustbin for Selston National, 14th of April, 2024. It is the number 60 car, Tango and Crash. Congratulations, guys. So, Ian, back to you. Yeah, number 60 is currently in some way down, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. 26th place. But, Jack, you may have missed some of that, but that was the presentation of the Dagenham yeah. Dustbin, uh, which uh, Chris was busy saying was also your favourite livery. 
yeah, yeah, I really like the uh, the Tango and Crash uh, car. I, I did notice as well, uh, car number six, when it went into the wall, it came into the pit lane, stopped, and then just went straight back out again. Oh. So uh, whatever happened there, I'm not not exactly sure. But yeah, the uh, number 60. Well, he banged, he went backwards. He did, but the back of the car doesn't actually look that bad. It's just no. gone through and passed us. We might catch it on the exit of Cops Corner. So there it yeah. is. There's car number 60, winner of the Dagenham Dustbin, with fuel pouring out of the left-hand side, coming out of the fuel filler next. So that will draw the attention yes. of the marshals and potentially be worth a black and orange flag but the back of car number six looks completely fine and yeah i did just notice he had to uh, flick his wiper on to try and clear all of that petrol that has uh, clearly come uh, come away from the uh, from that car and again yeah as the car turns right fuel is yeah very much clouding out of the back of that car and the, the two cars behind one of them is the auto tech car number 64 and the other one being car number six that being edge air racing yeah they're, they're having to use the wiper to clear the windscreen but yeah you would not know that that car had just been in the wall no and, and it was quite a biff i mean it wasn't uh high speed it was medium speed mm, yeah, um, yeah yeah yeah, I've just noticed as well, Tango and Crash, it has attracted the attention of the marshals and the race officials because the black and orange mechanical warning flag is being shown. What about on the run through Luffield? Yes, more fuel um, coming astray from that car. So that car will have to dive into the pit lane. It's um, They've just been told they've won the Dagenham dustbin, and I'm afraid that's a um, bit of a kick in the teeth, really, isn't it? Having to come straight back into the pit lane. They even have the Dagenham dustbin in their hands. They do. Yeah, so... Uh Maybe they're just trying to clean the car to make it look a little better with a bit, with a bit of fuel down the side. Right, so Jack Wright continues to lead uh, with the uh, second place car being number 65 in the hands still of Reese Kello. But that's a lap down. And then a further lap back in third place is the number eight shown as Darren Midgley at the wheel, number eight, yet to make a final stop, that car, in currently in third place. And fourth is 333, Philip Truman. Fifth is the number 12 car, now being driven by Scott Thompson, that was started by Richard Jeff and has always been there or thereabouts in the race. Just to let you guys know that uh, the, the Dagenham uh, dustbin winning car, the number 60, Tango and Crash, that, that I went over and speak to them, spoke to them and saying, oh, the commentary team reporting that there's fuel coming out. And they went, yeah, that should be fine. We, we brimmed it, so it's just overflowing. It'll be fine in half a lap. Um, but it sounds like it's carried on a bit longer than it's that. coming in. Yeah, OK, so they're going to have to have a look at it. Equally, by the way, is that quite a lot of the cars now do seem to be changing that front left, so it does yes. uh, look as though there is quite a lot of wear on these tyres in these conditions today. Yeah, it seems that is the case. Back towards you now uh, comes car number 60. That's the Tango and Crash car. Yeah. Um, so you will have to uh, figure out exactly what the team are going to do. Are they simply going to um, remove the um, the sort of the, the fuel uh, lock on the uh, on the uh, fill a neck and then put it back in or are they going to have a quick look and figure out exactly what it is looking at it now yeah they are just making sure that they they've got to lock it but presumably yeah they've got a spare key because it is a, a lockable fuel killer filler cap so they've got to try and fix that as soon as possible yeah and i mean uh, the, the caps there i think there's almost a telltale sign that there was a rack in there as well just making sure that it didn't leak too much so they're just uh, basically they've taken it off taken it back put it back on again locking it and they're throwing a rag in there to make sure it doesn't keep going so uh, yeah uh, it, it, let's hope it does the job and it gives us the chance at least to suddenly look at the uh, Dagenham Indeed. dustbin winner yes yeah, they almost got caught out by the GMB Finch car, car number seven, that was uh, trying to work its way around the back of them as well. So, uh, where is it? Whereabouts is the GMB Finch car? Leaving the pit lane now. Car oh, currently sat in uh, 22nd place. Last time we saw it, it was. Um, where have they gone all of a sudden? 22nd. It was uh, B. Smith, so Benjamin Smith behind the wheel, and I've got to correct myself. Previously, I think I've called him Phil Hinson. It is Paul Hinson in the three Amigos <laughs> car. Um, right, the second place car's yes. in. So 65 into the pits, as you can see on the screen. Fuel going in for the final part of the race. Jack Wright yet to pit as well from the lead. So That's too right. is uh, 
is the Pro-Am racing car. Now with Darren Midgley, of course, Oliver Fernall, also Basic Ollie, as many of you may know him, um, will be getting in the car next to bring that car home. We've got um, uh, the Treble 3 machine. That's Kahuna's racing team, of course, started by Costa Kritzis, still has Philip Truman behind the wheel. We've got another car, I think, going into the pit lane. That's the 114 KM racing car. We've already seen Christine Kelly in. We've seen Andrew Malpas, and I think Christine Kelly has uh, got behind the wheel and is... Uh, no, he's still Andrew Malpas, so it would be Christine Kelly getting back in to bring that car towards the chequered flag. But Jack Wright still doing a brilliant job in the lead. So the 65 car, did I recall that that's coming from something like third? Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. so um, Taylor Norton's going to be jumping into that one next. Okay. So Taylor Norton is the final driver, yes. presumably, to get behind the wheel of that car. Also Started by Toby Owen, wasn't it? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Andy Burton did give way to um, Steve Gilbert, who is now running the Burton Power Car, as that just flicks its way through Luffield. And everybody's staying out for the moment. I was expecting maybe the treble three to, uh, to come in and hand over to Ian Perkins, but it remains out at the moment. Flashes by our commentary box window. And yes, waving out of the window, presumably arm out of the window saying, I'm coming in. So the treble three, uh, Philip Truman waving at the team saying, I want to come in and pit. So Ian Perkins better be suited and booted because he's got what? One minute and 20 seconds until that car is going to be sat waiting for him in the pit lane. There it is on screen, the green car. And yes, there's a lap between, he has a lap cushion, but the gap that's small is that between 3.33 and 12. Or is it the next gap? No, it's gone up as they go through. It's the gap second to third, that's the small one. 3.83 seconds between numbers eight and 3.33. Right, 65 now, having a rapid Near side, front wheel changed. Yeah, one thing that you may see the teams doing is using separate wheel nuts or, um, or wheel mm. uh, lugs, purely because the ones that are on the car will be super hard, so naturally it will expand. So if you use a cold wheel nut, you naturally it's slightly easier to get that, uh, get that into the thread. Um, I'm looking towards pit entry. I'm awaiting the arrival of Phil Truman. Into the go. pit lane he will come. to hand over to Ian Perkins, and that car coming in from third place, having started in 18th. Costa did a brilliant job at the start of this race. And they're doing, are they doing both front? Yeah, they're doing both front wheels. Auto Tech car number 65, I think. Um, so the first team, I think, Chris, you might need to go and ask us exactly as to why uh, they're doing that. But Taylor Norton, he's going out on two new front wheels. So rattling down the pit lane is Philip Truman, Ian Perkins, is uh, ready and waiting, but the doors swing open. They will, yeah. um, I'm sure, manhandle Philip Truman out of the car to get him out there. Already the fuel is getting ready to be plugged in. They are going to change the front left because the jack is there. They can't interfere with the car, but they can get the jack as close to the floor of the car without um, uh, without interrupting the fueling process. But fuel's going in. Be interested to see where this car returns to the circuit. Well, it came in in third place, as you said, so. It was nine seconds behind number eight. Now, eight hasn't yet stopped, has it? it made its final stop, no. no. Nor indeed is the leader, Jack Wright, but he's got this comfortable-ish cushion of two laps over the nearest opposition, which is number eight, Darren Midgley. Into the pit lane now comes number eight, Darren, Darren Midgley. Midgley. <laughs> so, yeah, Ollie Fernall, basic Ollie, is uh, going to be ready to jump behind the wheel of that car and we'll see exactly what he can do because I, I think uh, barring maybe some for some Friday testing or whatever else he may have done this may be his first, first race. Ex yeah, his, right. his first race and see again it does simulate it relate to, yeah. um, uh, to to real motorsport I'm sure it does I've seen it first hand I've done it first hand in fact um, testing on a simulator and then going out and, and racing I know exactly well, what it's like so. Jan Mardenborough was the one who uh, yeah he set the tone didn't he so he's back in British GT this yes, year he's back, right. he's back, yes. for, back yeah. here as well specifically Jan Mardenborough so um, it's great and to see him he's back he's been with. making a film hasn't he for about yeah, the last year for yeah Hong. I mean it's, it's already out uh, the Gran Turismo film and yeah. Uh, yeah Jan did a lot of the, the driving for that but he's back with RJN of course which, yeah, which boosted 
which, again. which yeah. boosted that career when he first started. Yeah. So, um, yeah, basic Ollie coming into the uh, uh, getting into that car. Go on, Chris. Yeah, I've got uh, Reese Kelly who just jumped out of the uh, 65 car. Uh, it was third place when you brought into the pits. Uh, Reese, I mean, you're looking that, that you've worked hard out there. Yeah, it was very hard. Like, I've had the heating on the whole time at full blast, so there's no real safety car really times for me to open the window to let all the heat out. So it was just getting hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter. And there was another thing as well. Going round, there was just like a horrible bearing noise. And whenever I turned right, it was like, oh, it was deafening. The only time I have a bit of respite is down into the second corner where I turned left. And I was like, oh, it was so nice. But, but it was it was a good thing. I was racing 125 for a while. Um, yeah, it felt quick. I was Every lap was banging in a low 120 every time, every time, every time, every time. Every time. Yeah. So I'm happy of that. Um, I was watching the lap timer. Um, there's just one place I reckon I can improve. That's down. That's the bottom hairpin. Apart from that, I reckon I'm just about there, really. I like that. You seem satisfied as well, which is the good thing. What I mean, explain to anybody that's watching uh, or listening, why did you have the heating on? I had the heating on because when the engine gets too hot, um, it loses a little bit of power. So what we had to do is turn the heating on full blast, and what it does is takes the heat away from the engine. Of course, the driver takes the heat. That's why it's best for us to do it during a safety car. Open the window, get all the heat out, all the heat out. But oh, I'm really hot. I'm really sweaty, as you can see. I'm absolutely soaked. But and, and we also noticed that you guys changed both fronts. We've seen more off. Most people are only changing the front left, but you guys opted for for both. Is there a reason for that? Uh, I was struggling with the front end for a lot of that. Um, I don't know if it's the bearing issue um, which is causing that. It's pulling to the left quite a lot. I, I was going down the start finish straight and I sort of loosened the steering wheel. You could feel it turn, wow. pulling to the left. I was like, oh, okay, this is a bit sketchy, but I carried on. It was so deafening as well. Um, but with two, um, front, well, hopefully with these two front wheels, it should sort out the understeer issue we have. Makes sense because you don't want to do two just for the sake of it, do you? Exactly. So, yeah, if, if to hopefully with Taylor out there now, we should claw back any time lost with the extra tyre. So. Have you guys, uh, now that you've seen it play out so far, w w what do you think is a realistic target? Is it for the win? It's nice for the win. We, we missed out on the win last year. We were leading by like 35 seconds. I remember. Um, with 15 minutes to go, our drive shaft went. So I'm holding. Out down the uh, Wellington Straight, wasn't it? Yeah, that was it. Yeah, I was gutted. I was, I was driving at the time. And I was like, it happened. I was like, I was like, cry, shouting at the radio. I was like, no, 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 no. And, um, oh. I, I do remember I was in the commentary box on the outside of Woodcote covering that, and I remember th being totally surprised at our side as well. So, fingers crossed for you, Reece. Yeah, 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 it was good, yeah. But hopefully we can go for the win. But podium is looking more likely at the minute. Yeah. But let's see what we can do. Great job. Well done. Congratulations. So there you go. There's an insight on the 65 in terms of what they're going for, certainly after last year's heartbreak, but also an insight into why they changed both tyres. It was kind of forced upon them. Yes, slightly concerned that Reese was suggesting there was only one corner that goes left at Silverstone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he'd be, he'd be uh, what's Brooklyn's? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, he'd be struggling with that one, wouldn't he? Um, but um, we do now have Ollie Fernal behind the wheel of car number eight of Pro-Am Racing. Right. They came into the pit lane in what was second place. Um, but he's returned to the circuit. He says ninth at the moment. We've still got more cars coming through. Make that tenth. Um, but there's still cars yet to pit, of course, our race leader, uh, yeah. Jack Wright, who last time through set another fastest lap of the race, a 1 minute 19.298. So Jack Wright really starting to oh, yeah. uh, uh, really starting to turn up the heat. And I've got a feeling that's meant metaphorically, but potentially literally as well, because if he's found those extra few horsepower with the heater on, the, the weight of the fuel will be coming out of the car and tyres may be starting to become an issue. But still continuing to lead the race rather dominantly. We do have uh, car number 12 back out there, the second of the uh, Pro-Am racing cars. Scott Thompson now behind the wheel of that car. Let's see whereabouts Ollie Fernal falls into the mix. It says 11th. I will look out of the commentary box window. Can we see him coming through as of yet? No, not at the moment. So it's saying he's just gone through. So P11, there he is, uh, just gone through there. So uh, yes, P11 for uh, Ollie Fernal. So he's got a bit of driving to do. If he can get his way into the top ten, that's no mean feat in the uh, MSV Track Days Enduro KA Series. But we may see further twists in the tail for this one. On the brakes, in towards uh, Maggots and Beckett. 
I'm sure he's done plenty of work on the sim as, um, as Ollie. But the closest cars we've got out on circuit, I would say that is the battle for what is fourth place, car 121, uh, the Calamity car. So that currently has Marcus Batty uh, behind the wheel. They're still chasing down car uh, 180 with Colin French. There's only a second separating the pair of those two, fourth and fifth. Yes, so uh, still to stop. And so the effect of that final stop, we can't yet can only sort of predict but he's got a two-lap cushion, the leader, Jack Wright. And from what I seem to remember of his father, his father's no slouch, so assuming he takes the car over, it looks to be uh, well set. Number 46, the Milner racing car that started by Mr. Milner, or Johnny Miller, uh, Milner um, himself. And that car has only made the one stop so far, as has the car in third place. I think they may be getting ready to do a stop down for that uh, 46, is my impression. Well, it's coming down the pit lane, so you're right, Chris. It'll be with you in a moment. Yeah, so the pit lane becoming a bit busier. Chris, you'll have to watch your back as there's a few cars working uh, their way yeah. down the pit lane. Go on. It's, it's, it was, you know, backing up what you were saying, Jack, is that it's absolutely right, is that you, we've got this whole of this pit lane and suddenly there's three stops being made uh, all within a line of each other. And it's, it's just funny the way it works out. I'm just going to avoid the 55 car coming in to get round to the 46. And, and it's great because now I realise from the overalls is that watching them on the, uh, the pit wall earlier, just having a whale of a time, serious, you know, high fives and everything like that as uh, George is getting ready to, to get in by the looks of it. Yeah, George Wright's going to be getting into this car next. And uh, debriefing with uh, with his son. Got the odd uh, telltale bit of damage on the car, but... Uh, really? Yeah, just like, you know, that you get quite a lot of these coming in with the, the tyre marks all down the side. And uh, it was fairly close, up close and personal it in that opening yeah. stages, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. A great wrap on this one as well. Really cool design. With obviously the Milner air supply. The fuel's going in, so that's just the one jog they've done there. So they've obviously feel that they've got it happy with the fuel so far. In jumps George. They're all doing it very, very quickly now. You can tell when it's the teams at the top because the pit stops are even more uh, serious. Mm. Dumping in a bit of water at the back here as well. Strap in these uh, very comfortable belts. <laughs> Not. But they're actually having to just loosen that a little bit. So again, that's the risk when you've got different sized drivers, isn't it? Is they're all going to be slightly different. Plug in the, uh, the comms so that they can uh, hear and talk to each other. And then the... Uh, and the fluids being fed through so that they can drink while they're at, especially if there's more of them having to do the, uh, put the heating on. In, job done, push the car back. So Milner racing. Jack, I'm gonna get a, a word with you right half the press. I mean, that's, uh, that, even just that pit stop is that you guys mean business. Uh, we've, we've, uh, <laughs> yeah, we haven't come here to mess around, to be fair. We've, um, we've got a good couple few drivers with me my dad and my father-in-law johnny we're all thereabouts on the time so you know that a bit of reliability good pit stops no mistakes that's what it's all about and that will get you up there the thing that's that's amazing about this uh, this enduro ka racing though is that you still can't relax because there's still time for things to go i mean we had it last year didn't we the 65 car suddenly drive shaft going on like was it the last lap or something crazy penalties that can suddenly be dished out at the 11th hour i mean you guys cannot relax yet no you can't like last year we was up there on the times and unfortunately our head gasket went so that put us out the order but everybody else up there you know, we've come in with us and Pro-Am, for instance, have both pit stop, done a pit stop, driver changes, and we've gone back out, and we're still there within a second of each other constantly. <laughs> so it's good fun. Yeah, and you guys have been loving this. I've been watching you guys on the pit wall, just whooping, hollering, shouting, waving. I mean, you are truly emotionally invested in this. Yeah, of course you are. It's, we're a family team, so you're quite invested in it. So you've got to, you know, when Dad's out there on Father-in-law Johnny, you're like, go on, let's have it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's so good to see. Well done, Jack. Brilliant drive. And to see that, and, and I'm sure you guys could even hear the emotion was true and palpable.
Spoken like a true Yorkshireman. Now, Jack has just <laughs> spotted something. Yes. Oh, uh, Jack has it's, uh, car number eight, Pro-Am, uh, racing in the hands of Ollie Fernald. Uh, first couple of laps out there, 1 minute 21 one, so good lap times, especially yeah. for his first time in a car. However, uh, or first time racing, should I say, um, the uh, number 81 machine, that's Darren Stapleton, of course, um, a race leader for, uh, uh, for quite some time earlier on today he's been consistently in the one minute 20s the gap was eight seconds when ollie came out it's now down to 5.2 so ollie's going to get a chance to uh, i guess scrub up on his uh, on his defending skills which i'm sure need no work anyway but the second of the two prime cars has just gone across the line i heard tire squeal somewhere where that was i don't know but i've got a feeling we've got a few drivers that are really starting to uh, push, uh, to push on. on now and of course tires will start to wear out so that means braking performance will be lacking towards the end of the race yeah uh, i reckon everybody well uh, let's say for a fact because it's on the screen the tsl screen every car has made two stops at least some have made three uh, if you've made two then that's the minimum number of stops uh, that you need and so it may be a race to the finish for almost everybody now. Yeah, it, it seems like that is the case. Through and past us comes Ollie Fernall. Another lap down, unfortunately, because, um, of course, it's no longer Jack Wright behind the wheel of the number 46 car. It is uh, George Wright. So George Wright uh, has put another lap over uh, Ollie Fernall. David Stapleton, has he got closer? No, Darren Stapleton, pardon me. No, he hasn't. 5.1 seconds, very equally pair of those two starting to lap now car number eight for pro racing car number 81 gm performance what about um the number three wing out racing car of matthew weymouth um one minute 21 two so the the lap times are really starting to level out and what must be rather annoying at this point is you can see the car up the road mm. and you're driving the wheels off your when you're okay hey, you just can't quite get there no closer no, no. Um, not close enough so I think what we have, in, as far as the lead gap is concerned, it's uh, shown as 40 seconds. Scott Thompson in second place in number 12. 40.3 seconds behind George Wright. And if I'm right, in that I recall that George Wright's experience, not just track day trophy, but I think he does some of the Nürburgring races as well on the Nordschleife. Yeah, we had a car diving into the pit lane. I'm trying to pick out who that is, Chris. Probably 81, I would hazard a guess. If it's not, it's going to be coming in soon. They're going to be doing their last stop and driver change. It's and LDR. I can LDR clear up the mystery in. as well from oh. earlier. You know, when they came in and then went straight back out yeah. again. Yes. You have to have your team manager down here to manage the pit stop. The problem was that the team manager had been called up to the, uh, the stewards, as we see regularly, where they just call the team manager up to the stewards to see them to sort something out. Uh, and I see it's 49 minutes in, actually. So, um, yeah, so he was halfway up there. Safety car come out, and he's like, uh, I need, where, which way do I go? I need to go to the stewards, but I want to be back so we can do a pit stop now. It meant it came in, no team manager here, had to go straight back out again, and it cost them, really. That's a bit rough, isn't it? Yeah, it does seem a bit harsh, but I guess, you know, you win some, you lose some in racing, don't mm -hmm. you? Yeah. Just looking through the order further down we've still got cars in that sort of top 10 area coming into the pit lane so the car we were watching early on ollie fernal he's um, up into ninth place now and last time through sort of one minute 21.2 albeit i think slightly traffic affected however getting closer is darren stapleton 4.3 seconds now and scott thompson is lapping a second quicker at the moment than george wright so that gap is down to just under 40 seconds 39 39.278 seconds is the gap first to second. Now, I'm not saying it's going to carry on like that. Uh, George is probably just getting into the swing of things. Scott Thompson, though, likewise, because he's only recently taken the car over, the uh, number 12 car. So it's 46 and 12 we're talking about. And they aren't all that far apart. Although 40 seconds, 39 seconds is still a, a hefty margin to work away at so on the screen you can see the second place car number 12 it has an hour and 18 minutes an hour and 19 minutes what have you spotted Jack? Um, looking at crash strapped racing there they were only six tenths back it's now back to 1.8 they're still chasing down David Drinkwater in the three amigos car that's for 13th and 14th uh, respectively K and F racing are in the pit lane so that is car number 21 Adam Bettinson 
um, I thought was behind the wheel, but we'll wait and see whether they've still got another driver change yet to do. However, um, with that uh, with that going on, that could promote further drivers down the order, even further into the top ten, and maybe a couple working their way in. Let's have a look at the times up at the top. A 1 minute 21.000 uh, for car number 12 Pro-Am Racing, and that being Scott Thompson. So he is getting closer, 38.434 seconds, and with one hour and what, 18 minutes of this race remaining, if he's averaging just under a second, if not a second a lap, he's doing everything he needs to. Will that give him the, do the math? And is, it, is that going to give him the uh, lead if he carries on at that rate, a second a lap quicker? I think so. Right with, with one minute twenties, one minute twenty ones. I think with yeah, uh, with how long's left? What we've got seventy seven minutes of the race remaining. I think it might just be enough. But there's still various things that can happen because we've got over an hour remaining. This is still, sure. still I, that, plenty of time. That's assuming that nothing done toward occurs. But uh, if, if it's simply a catch up and they get round the traffic okay, then uh, it is possible we could have a very tight finish. We'll wait and see, because we're, we're, we're still not quite three quarters of the way through this race at the moment. So, Ollie Fernal, car number eight, currently sat in eighth place. What are you spotted? Another second pulled back. So, I think we're, we are, at the moment, the signs are that the, the leader is lapping a second a lap slower than the car in second place, and the gap is therefore down now to 37.17 seconds. Yeah, and the gap between Darren Stapleton and Ollie Fernall continues just to whittle down slightly. Three points, best part of 3.2 seconds, it's 3.198 of a second separates the pair of them, mainly because Darren Stapleton doing a 1 minute 20.812, and that car having pitted one time less, Ollie Fernall's car, the car number eight, has been into the pit lane twice, Darren Stapleton's three times, so it's great to see that they're still running as close as they are. Car number 81 into the pit lane, GM performance, Darren Stapleton, the car we were just talking about, into the pit lane, so that means Ian Mitchell, uh, will potentially be getting back behind the wheel. What that has done is given Ollie Fernal a little bit of breathing room. However, not too far back from um, the tail of Darren Stapleton's car was car number three. That being Wingat Racing and Matthew Weymouth. What sort of laps has Matthew been doing? 21-1, so still quicker than a couple of cars up the road. There's still plenty more to, uh, to be un unveiled. Well, on the screen, we've got the leader then, 46, and uh, right on his tail is the number eight car with Ollie Fernell as Jack's been telling us on its tail number 121 okay. in who do we reckon that is now it's Mark it's Marcus Batty to Andrew Hinch for the final stint assume yeah, it would make sense but it? that leading gap continues to come down at the second of the lap a 121.5 it, 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 give or take a, a hundredth 121.521 by the leader, 120.390 by its pursuer. It's looking quite exciting, this. It, it really is, but are we going to call into uh, call into play maybe some of the longevity of the car? Because we know drivers have got their tricks of heater on and the fan all the way up. If they've got air conditioning, naturally, they will have been cut out to minimize weight. But, yeah. um, uh, but of course, the little what uh, 1.3 litre um, 4k engines they must be getting slightly slightly toasty because it's getting quite warm i've just had to adjust my adjust my seat because uh, the, the sun coming through the window is getting really quite warm um, it'd help to take my jacket off really wouldn't it um, but uh, milner racing and george wright are still lapping um, exactly where they need to be however uh, it is uh, car number 12 that being Scott Thompson, he is getting closer continuously. Four tenths gained that time through, 35.629. Into the bit lane, we've got car number yeah. two and car number 74. And I think it was four or five laps ago that, we, that it was a 40 second gap. Yes. Wasn't it? And it's now, as you've just said, down to 35 seconds. We've got, uh, yeah, like I say, car number two, that's uh, NJM's PDCs in presumably with Cat Sells to get out and Union McGuinness to jump behind the wheel. And we've got another one coming in. That's 74 of Orca Sports. So I would guess Michael Davies is getting out of that car to hand over to Peter Child and run that car to, uh, to the line. Now that's a close gap. Four, third to fourth. 112 to 27. It's 1.1 seconds. That's another close one, but they're, they're, they're not going to catch the leader, of course, they're laps behind the leader, but uh, or a lap behind the leader. But the, the leader then, 164 laps completed. The gap 
wait for the second place car to come through and the gap there it is in that group of cars which should uh, be at 35 now that was a lap on which no gain was made 35.6 seconds their lap time is almost identical it's just seven thousandths of a second difference and just looking further down of course calamity having been into the pit lane car number 121 that is still, I'd imagine, Andrew Hinch. Or Andrew Hinch has now got behind the wheel. It's yes, not quite updated so. on the, the timing screen as of yet, but only down five places. It shows that the field has started to spread out. George Wright at the front of the field. I'd imagine he's coming through in a few moments' time to uh, post another lap time. We've still got um, Pro-Am Racing uh, out there and Scott Thompson. So over the line there goes Ollie Fernell. A 1 minute 20.865 posted in response to the car up the road. Uh, that being T Norton's Auto Tech Motorsport 2. Taylor Norton has posted a 1 minute 20.632. So slowly starting to fall away a little bit is, uh, is Ollie Fernell. However, the car behind Matthew Weymouth with a 1 minute 22.428. Ollie is in an opening gap, but of course traffic can still play a part. George Wright still fighting away with, um, I think that was car number 12 potentially. No, it is Ollie Fernal. Ollie Fernal. So Ollie, at the moment, how many laps down is he? He's only three laps down. So he can uh, at least get to one of those three back away from George Wright at the moment with one minute and 10 seconds remaining. Chris, I think we've got you down in, yeah. the, uh, in the pit lane. I'm stood on the pit wall watching them sort of down close to uh, to Cops Corner. And uh, the, the one thing that I found really intriguing is that I said that uh, they were on the 95 car, they threw a new boot on the front left for Marcus Clutton to give him the best possible condition that he could. And I can tell you, it's no wonder they did that because I can be looking in the opposite direction and I know exactly who it is that's going around Cobb's corner because he is leaning on that car, something rotten. He really is throwing it through Cobb's corner with incredible aplomb and uh, just making the tyres scream for mercy. So I think that once that fuel gets down, I wouldn't be surprised to see that one banging in a new fastest lap of the race. He is absolutely hurtling it around this circuit and it's, it's an interesting insight. Also noticing that there's quite a few cars, they come down Cobb's corner and then Suddenly, they're, they're going as wide as they possibly can onto the rumble strip pavements on their left so that they can have as wide a sweep in as possible into Cop's Corner. And Marcus Clutton's <laughs> just got past the Dagenham Dustbin uh, winner car just as he got down into Cop's Corner as well. So it sh shows he is absolutely flying. Yeah, Marcus Clutton definitely knows what he's doing, doesn't he? Of course, racing in British GT this year. He's no stranger to GT3 and GT4 machinery. Car number 57 in the pit lane, or, or 67, pardon me, original checkers racing. Um, I'd imagine, let's have a quick look, whereabouts are they in the order? They've had a fairly broken race. Uh, throughout however it is uh, Thomas Hendry behind the wheel serving a stop-go penalty for one reason or another you'd imagine it'd be track limits or maybe a pit stop infringement there's another car down with you Chris I think that's the AFK racing car uh, Nick Berg coming in to hand over to uh, Tim Parsons I would imagine let's have a look further up the order go on Chris no I was just confirming you're absolutely right that the 22 is in they're just unlocking the uh, fuel cap and uh, dumping uh, the last bit of fuel into that car. Certainly the driver that, uh, that, that brought that in is out, helmet and uh, balaclava off, so it is definitely going to be a driver change. Great stuff, so um, we'll wait and see as and when Tim Parsons gets back out onto the, uh, back out onto the circuit, side by side over the line, that was really, really close. Uh, car number 95, that's the WKD car with Marcus Clutton. Um, he's not just uh, gone in front of the Dagenham dustbin, he's pulled away um, by quite some margin. He was just working his way through and past car number seven. That's the GMB Finch racing car currently with uh, Ben Smith. No, no, it's not Ben Smith, by the way. It's back to Stephen Finch. So Stephen Finch is now uh, back driving car number seven. In terms of AFK racing, of course, they came in from what was fourth place. So that's allowed Autotech Motorsport 2 to... Uh, inherit fourth place it's uh, allowed kahuna's race team to inherit fifth place and whilst that car's stationary in the pit lane we will await the arrival of ollie fernal um, who is in theory still on that same lap so we could see ollie in towards the top six um, into the pit lane comes car number 27 that being Semprini racing so that car coming in from what is 23rd place 
um, wondering whether we will see James Hart hand back to Phil Hart. Of course, Phil Hart uh, started the uh, started that car. Holly Fernall breaks the beam and goes up into P6. So into the top six for him. However, he's got 34 seconds to overcome if he wants to catch on to the coattails of the treble three Ian Perkins for Kahuna's race team. In the meantime, though, Kahuna's race team are distracted fighting away with Autotech Auto Motorsport 2. That's Taylor Norton. So if those two continue to battle, 34 seconds doesn't seem that much um, in the course of one hour and eight minutes still remaining. Back out on circuit goes car number 22, AFK Racing. This time with Tim Parsons behind the wheel. We'll see what he can do. Yes, well, 34 seconds, of course, is almost the gap for the leading two cars as well, 33.389. Uh, the 121 car's back in again, and I had a feeling that I'd seen that recently uh, in, right. so I came across, and sure enough, they've got a problem, and it's uh, a really weird one, and frustrating as heck for them, is that the uh, the kill switch is just turning itself off. Uh, and so on the last lap, he suddenly had to hold it in position. As soon as he lets go, it turns around and turns itself off. So they're desperately trying to find a way, because that's not quite the way you're supposed to drive, is it? No. So they're trying to find a way that they can keep that uh, kill switch round. Kill the kill switch, basically. Uh, well, indeed, yes, it's the kiss of death at the moment, isn't it? So, uh, work on that car going on. As you can see on the screen, a minute, uh, an hour and seven minutes remain. Just popped out. Did I miss anything? Um, nothing major. Obviously, we had uh, a couple of cars dive into yeah. the pit lane, and um, that's shuffled the order very slightly. We've got two Pro-Am cars inside the top six, so yes. um, that is uh, starting to heat up indeed. But George Wright's lead, is, um, they're no longer, from the chunks that we described earlier, they're back to bite-sized pieces. Um, <laughs> yeah, George Wright, is, he's found a, an extra bit of pace in that car. I don't know whether that's because of the cloud cover and the, the track temperature is slowly starting to cool down, so the cars might run. Um, uh, slightly better as well in the cooler temperatures, but we'll wait and see. 32 seconds. We saw it up as high as 40, and we've still got over an hour remaining in. Yeah, and uh, last time around, there was half a second difference in their lap times. George Wright, 120.980. Uh, Scott Thompson, 120.416. And the gap down to 32, so 32.8 seconds. So when we started monitoring this, it was 40 seconds, it's now 32.8. We've got an, uh, an hour and six minutes. I think that's still possible because if he's averaging 10 seconds every 20 minutes. I've got O-level maths, but I can't pretend to be <laughs> capable of working that one out. Can you? you? I think he is because he's yeah. uh, if he's got another five minutes still to go, there's uh, Scott Thompson. And if he's averaging five or 10 seconds every 20 minutes, mm. by the time we get inside the hour, if he's at bang on 30 seconds and he continues to, uh, to chip away at that yeah. time, this could be the final few laps kind of decider I'm, I'm getting Chris we've got you in the pit lane yeah I mean I was just really sort of joining in your conversation about this I was looking at the timing screens there and one thing that really is jumping out at me is it looks like we're gonna have a battle between three cars for the final step on the podium as well it, it would seem like that but of course um, it depends who's yet to pit. I'm hoping they've all done their, their mandatory or they've yes, all done we're, their we're stops. Assuming it, that, seems we? like, it seems like that is the case, but there's still so much that could um, uh, that could that could happen. And if we've got any further interventions with the safety car, of course, but 6.9 seconds between Taylor Norton and the uh, 112 that's currently being driven by Robert Thomas. So there's only six seconds there. A further 1.8 seconds back is the treble three car in the hands of Ian Perkins. So yeah, absolutely, Chris, you are 100% right. We've got three cars separated by only um, what eight nine seconds so it's very much up for grabs what of Ollie Fernall's progress he's a lap behind the car ahead and 13 seconds away from Matthew Weymouth so he is pulling away but um, he's got to try and find what over one minute and 20 seconds if he's in with a chance of that top five has 112 been driven twice by Simon Bonham or is that going to have to make another stop do you think uh, I've only seen Simon Bonham in that once that's yeah that's my recollection so Robert Thomas started Simon Bonham took over. Robert Thomas is in it at the moment. I think he can run that to the end because with the... Uh, There's with nothing against the rule. Yeah. Uh, I just wonder whether that car might have another stop to make. But because uh, it's Robert Thomas has probably had a pretty strong, pretty long stint in that car. Yeah, you'd imagine so. You'd imagine so. So fuel might be a problem. Yeah, absolutely. We've still got one hour and three minutes remaining. So it's it, fuel is going to 
potentially become a problem because you're relying on the driver yeah. feeding back to you how yeah. much fuel they've got. But let's be honest, they won't. Ha they might not have a digi dash of what it is. They are just looking at a needle on the dashboard yes. and going, well, it's halfway to the E. I don't know. You've got that's what you've got to rely yes. on, and of course tires as well because tires yeah. will really start to fall away as the uh, as the race wears on. So there's still so much in the air in the final one hour and three minutes yeah. of the what four hours we've been going. Right, well, the gap first and second is down to 31.2 seconds now, so it continues to come down. It came down by another second on that lap. So it, consistently, it's between half and a, a full second. The gap is coming down lap after lap between the top two. Yeah, back in front of us comes Oli Fernil over the line once again in the uh, Pro-Am racing machine. Still sat there in P6, just continuing to uh, tick away the laps. He's just worked his way through and passed and put another lap over car number 44. That's the Graves Motorsport car, currently with uh, Stuart Kidder behind the wheel. Tango and Crash, car number 60. That is being driven by Chris Keyes. However, they have just popped up having a, uh, a penalty or a, a little exclamation mark. So we'll try and bring up the That's time. That's the Dagenham winner. Dustbin it winner. It is the Dagenham Dustbin winner. So hopefully all is well with that car. Let's scroll down and figure out exactly what it is. It is saying a two lap penalty. So presumably an infringement in the pit stop into the pit lane very quickly. Indeed comes the 112 machine. You said we'll keep an eye out and we thought we might be able to get them to the end. But no, no. Robert Thomas has called it there. So Simon Bonham will uh, uh, jump in behind the wheel. So up to third place, therefore yeah. comes 65. Yeah, and that means Oli Fernal into the top five. So we're no longer battling for the final step on the podium. We're battling for the final two steps on the podium. Pro-Am Racing will have two cars inside the top five. Yeah. It's getting rather close, isn't it? it? It's still is, with yeah. an hour to go. Yeah. Interest all the way through to the end of this. 30.5 uh, seconds now is the gap first to second. Slightly smaller reduction. It was between uh, about seven tenths of a second that time. So it is still 46. George Wright leading. Scott Thompson still second. There is the leader through, and half a minute later should come along Scott Thompson. And the gap is not yet up. Wait the arrival of Scott Thompson wherever he is. Here he is. Scott Thompson coming through now. What do you think the gap will be? Um, under uh, yes, wow. I was going to say under 30, 30 seconds. It's twenty into the twenties now. Twenty nine point six nine seconds. So mathematically, he can still do it. He can still be in at the this shower. rate, which has been yes. consistent really since they made their last pit stops. Absolutely, but of course there are still a number of things that can happen. We've still got just over an hour of this race remaining, yeah. so there's still so much um, that can happen. I don't know whether Catastrophe has managed to get that car back out in front of the second of the two Pro-Am racing cars, because it's no longer showing the sort of uh, cog next to uh, uh, next to that car on the timing screen. So presumably, I think that yes, 112 car of what will now be Simon Bonham yeah. has retaken to the circuit and held on to fifth place and that final spot inside uh, the top five. So it will have been a, a very quick pit stop um, indeed. In terms of lap times, what are we looking like? It's still Scott Thompson that's the quickest car out there at the moment. However, we've got a few cars further down that are starting just to nip their way into the one minute twenties. Yeah. One of those being the Lar Motorsport car, Duncan Macbeth with a one minute 20 um, point, what everyone has disappeared now as it's updated. However, we did see Nathan Brown with a one minute 20.178. So he's mm. really starting to uh, pick up the pace. Chris, we've got you in the pit lane. Yeah, I've decided to grab Richard Jepp out from the, uh, from the garage, uh, kind of bouncing from one foot to the other. This is looking like an exciting finish. Yeah, it's all working out really well. Um, it was amazing, first half an hour really, so much battling in the car and uh, the car's performing really good. This team is so professional, the way they run it. It's, it's like clockwork, everything. And uh, yeah, we're clawing in, uh, clearing in P1, so anything can happen in this time left. So. The interesting thing is that we're looking at the maths now and seeing that Scott's time compared to, to George in the lead is that mathematically he can do it. But equally, within an hour, a lot can change on the tires, the fuel, the car, the track, everything. Yeah, there's, it, there's a long way to go. Anything can happen. Um, but yeah, he's gaining around average about a second a lap at the moment, so it's, it's easily doable. Um, we have just to see how it pans out, really. Is it what you expected? Is it, did you genuinely come in today thinking, yeah, we've, we absolutely have a chance to win? Well, it's the first time I've been in the car was this morning. So <laughs> it's, uh, it, yeah, I, I mean, I knew the team were one of the top runners. Um, we've all got the same mentality. We're out here to win. Um, so yeah, we always want to win. We always do the best we can for it. So.
tell the viewers, what do you normally do when it's not an Enduro KA? So I usually race in City Car Cup. Um, I race for a student motorsport team, a uh, car completely built by students, uh, Northbrook College. Uh, it's, it's an experience yeah. to working with a lot of college students, but it's amazing to see how they develop throughout the year and learn so much from a live environment, something you can't teach in, in a classroom, you know? And this is next, it's tomorrow's motorsport engineers, so um, it's so valuable, and everything that JP Latham's doing um, with student motorsport is amazing. He's a good friend of mine, JP. I know him very, very well. Well, listen, I'll let you sort of say glute because you are literally stood there bouncing, watching, and, and that's the excitement of this racing. Yeah, that's it. Anything can happen. There's so much going on all the time. It's, it's great to watch. Well done. Great opening stint. Enjoy it, mate. So uh, there you go. That was uh, Richard Jepp that uh, stepped into the number 12 Pro-Am racing. And uh, yes, I think you could probably sense that there was there was a degree of nervousness in him as well while we were chatting to him, to be fair. Absolutely, because he's... Uh, well, was a late uh, choice as the driver, and uh, he's done a great job. He was up at the front throughout uh, qualifying. And uh, George Wright's gone through then, 176 laps completed. The gap went up a little bit a couple of laps ago, but it came down again. It's now in the below 30 second gap. But uh, Scott Thompson not yet through will be shortly, so we'll get the gap again. And it's 29.976, so it's gone up about half a second. Yeah, it's gone up just a little bit there for Scott Thompson, so it's almost like he's hit a, hit a wall now. And it is a bit. Can't quite get uh, even further into that 30 second margin. We had a change further down, that's the treble, uh, 888 machine. Uh, Boston Racing. It currently has uh, Jacob Fells behind the wheel. He's managed to work his way through and past Matthew Weymouth for uh, for sixth place. So he's still a fair way. What 8.3 seconds, I think, it set away from uh, Ollie Fernell when he broke the beam. So uh, uh, still a bit of time to find, I think. But 65 and 33 in third and fourth places. They're separated by 2.8 seconds. Absolutely so. And, and even further down, we've got the 112 uh, car of Simon Bonham having got behind the wheel. Um, he's really starting to push forward. Uh, 112, apologies, I think Robert Thomas has actually stayed in that car. It looks like it has oh. that, or it's just not updated on the timing uh, screen after as of that yet. Last, last pit stop. Yeah, he's only 1.2 seconds away from the, uh, uh, the cash strapped racing car, the car number 55, that being in the hands of Ben Smith. So we've still got drivers separated by just a couple of mm. seconds. And the thing is, this late into a race, what we're four hours and five minutes in you might have lost all your bearings on who you're racing and what position you're in and what position other other people are in. So you potentially just drive around as fast as you can and assume you're fighting with everyone. <laughs> uh, that's, that's what I'd guess. Well, we've got 55 and a half minutes uh, remaining. The gap first to second has come down again. One uh, is down to 29.065. So back heading in from the point of view of the prime racing car in the right direction. But on the racing, George Wright lapping consistently. He's, he's getting into the high 120s on a regular basis now. Uh, and uh, Scott Thompson's going to ha lap in the 119s as he did last time around. Yeah, we'll see what happens because if he's continuing just to chip away at that time, which he well and truly is almost a second quicker last time through. Over the line goes one of the Pro-Am cars. I think that was kind of a rate of Oli Fernal. Uh, yes, it was. 32 seconds away. Best part of 33 away from uh, Kahunas Racing and Ian Perkins. Currently working his way through Luffield is the, uh, the first of the Pro-Am cars. That's car number 12. Still with Scott Thompson behind the wheel. What can he do this time? Is he back into the 1 minute 19s? So it's then the quick right at Woodcut. And then on to the start finish straight over the start finish line he goes one minute 19 he will want to see one minute 20.237 it's not the 19 however Down. it is still what's five and a half six tenths quicker than george yeah. wright in the lead of the race 28.4 seconds yeah so that's the gap now for the first time it's below 29 seconds 28.497 first to second meanwhile over at the bottom end of the top six, what have we got? We've got uh, some small gaps there, haven't we still? Six to seventh is 1.2 seconds. Sixth is car triple eight. Seventh is car number three, which is going nicely now. It's just gained another place. This is the uh, Matthew Weymouth car. 
that uh, had its interesting first stint in the hands of Leon Bidgeway. Just looking further down the order, we've still got gaps that are very, very minuscule mm. indeed. One of the cars that we mentioned earlier on, the catastrophe car with the cash strapped racing car, uh, that's for the final couple of spots in the top 10. They're still only, what, 1.8 seconds apart. Coming out of the final corner once again, we've got uh, uh, Scott Thompson. So uh, 1 minute 20.552 posted mm. by George Wright. Good so lap. He's, Yeah, so he's responded with a quick lap. What about Scott Thompson? Has he responded with an even quicker one? Yes, he has. Only around about two tenths of a second, yeah. but now it's 28.3. That gap is coming down for the lead. So Pro-Am Racing, they've still got two cars inside the top five. I'm sure they'd want two on the podium, but um, Scott Thompson, he's doing everything he can to try and get there. Well, of course, tires, I think I'm right to say neither of the two leading cars that we're talking about so much have had wheel changes, have they? Yeah. Uh, no, no, I don't I'm think right, many yeah. of them have, no. So, it will be, of course, a case of uh, how uh, much life there is left in these tyres. Yeah, we'll all will be revealed in 52 minutes' time, and <laughs> who, can, uh, who can manage those tyres better. But now what we're seeing, potentially a bit of a strategy play here, uh, car number 46, George Wright, he's leading the way, posting 1 minute 20.552s. The sister Pro-Am car, Ollie Fernal, 1 minute 21.399. If he can get within that aerodynamic systems range, he can almost distract our race leader and uh, <laughs> potentially do his teammate a solid. That's how serious um, yeah. uh, the uh, MSV track days and Euro KA series can be taken at points. But over the line, George Wright, a 1 minute 20.942. This could be the lap. We see a break into the 27 second barrier for Scott Thompson. He's just working his way through Woodcut now and then on to the start finish line. Breaks the beam. What is it this time? He goes through with a 1 minute 20.481 and we are into the 27s. Yes. The lead gap 27.841. We've been watching this come down from 40 seconds, Ian. I know, I know. I, it, it, I find these races absolutely fascinating. It takes me back to the first Silverstone six hours, uh, which is a long time ago, World Championship sports car race, where we had a, sim a somewhat similar situation, actually. Um, although obviously different sorts of car, uh, where you had the car in second place, it caught up and finished right on the tail of the uh, the winner, John Fitzpatrick's BMW from uh, Hans Heyer in the the Porsche, and uh, that we began spotting that with about an hour and a half, two hours to go in the six-hour race. Anyway, 27.841 seconds is the gap uh, between the top two last time through. I'm just, uh, I'm just looking through the, the YouTube chat. There's been a, a, a number of people that are supporting um, Ollie Ferdal and I just put a message in there myself. They were saying they're definitely reading the chat. I definitely am reading the chat and, uh, and just they're, they're picking up on bits that, that sometimes we miss as, uh, as well. But into the pit lane comes car number two. Um, I'm, no, car number three, pardon me. So that is Wingat Racing. I'm guessing that's Leon Bidgeway that's about to get back in. No, okay. you've got Mike Murray's getting in. Mike Murray back yeah. in, so of course Leon Bidgeway having run that first stint. Mike Murray run the second, and what will now be the uh, uh, the fourth stint. So still uh, pit stops and driver changes and strategy calls to yeah. be going on. We've got another black and orange mechanical warning flag as well, so we'll keep an eye out for that. Yeah, a saw car with something dangling underneath. Uh, the gap has come down again, first and second, not yet into the 26s, 27.2, so it's come down another half second. Oh, I wonder if it's yep. the 81 car that's got something dangling because uh, oh, twice they've had to sort of uh, reattach the, uh, the, the the exhaust at the back there. So uh, maybe it's it's hanging back down again. Yeah, that's been a, a leader of the race at times, hasn't it, number 81? But uh, is now in the second, uh, 18th place. Yeah, out of the running. Yeah, of course, that was Darren Stapleton when he was leading yeah. the race for, for such a, a strong period of time because he was fighting away consistently with Johnny Milner, but unfortunately their race has unravelled somewhat uh, throughout uh, throughout then. And now, La uh, La Motorsport and Darren Macbeth, have, or Duncan Macbeth, pardon me, have picked up another place. They're up into 11th. Of course, that is as uh, Mike Murray's car is in the pit lane. 26.79 seconds, so we're into the 26s. It's, uh, again, only a few tenths taken off but it's continuing to come down. We've got just under 49 minutes of the race remaining. 
Ian Perkins last time through had a very slow lap, a 1 minute 26. 0.974. He's in fourth place, yeah. and the gap back to Wally Fernal now is down to 27 uh, seconds. However, keep an eye on the treble eight machine because that is Boston Racing. That is um, going to be Jacob Fells behind the wheel. What was the gap at the line? Two tenths of a second. <laughs> So there's very, very little between Ollie Fernal and uh, Jamie Fells. Whereabouts are they out on circuit? Let's try and figure that out. We will look over towards the uh, sort of final sector in towards Brooklands. I think they may have already picked their way through and passed. We'll wait and see once they reappear. Over the line there goes our race leader, uh, George Wright. Yes, Boston Racing have indeed. And uh, went their way through and passed Ollie Fernal. So Jacob Fells up into what is fifth place. Ollie Fernal down into eighth. George Wright having broken the beam last time through with a 1 minute 20.773. Uh, the first of the Pro Am cars, car number 12, still with Scott Thompson behind the wheel. What can he do about breaking now into what was it, 26 seconds? 20, 26, yes, yeah, so that's what we're uh, Let's see for. what he can do about uh, yeah, getting even further into those 26s, maybe even 25s. Over the line, a 20.356, 26.376, the gap now between George Wright and Scott Thompson. Another he's getting tenths. closer. Yes, he's getting closer. It, it is still tenths of a second. It's not yet even a half a second. It's less than that now uh, for the last few laps. But the gap continues to come down. 26.376 seconds, 47 and a half minutes of the race remain. Yeah, not long left at all when you look at it in comparison to how long uh, we've been racing already and working their way through Luffield now that's car number 95 so the WKD car with Marcus Clutton behind the wheel of course if you're, familiar, to? Uh, if you're familiar with GT racing Marcus Clutton is very quick indeed he's currently sat in 25th yeah, place yeah, of course that sure. car it, it's almost like theoretically a pro-am entry uh, because of course he is very much the pro in the car yeah. and he said both his teammates new to it a bit of coaching and and um, yeah i know you were a particular fan of the way he approached it just yeah. being so casual in the garage and not putting any pressure on the team unfortunately car number 81 back in the pit lane this time it looks a bit more terminal um, we will have to well, we'll have to try and get uh, chris down there to figure out exactly Which what it is that? that's going on car number 81 that's darren stapleton's oh, car dear and uh, Ian Mitchell. So George Rides has broken the beam. Here comes Scott Thompson. Will he close that gap down? Are we into the 25 second margin? No, it's come back out only by around about a tenth of a second, however, 26.477 yeah. the lead margin. Yeah, exactly a tenth of a second has uh, got, gone up by. Um, maybe traffic played a part in that, but it's uh, a small setback to uh, the progress of Scott Thompson, George Wright then uh, lapping consistently in the, in the high 120s. And on that lap, Scott Thompson, 120.8. George Wright, 120.7. And what about your other gaps, Jack? Have we got any of those? Uh, in, oh, we've got a 2.8 gap, haven't we? Between six and 125. We've got a 0.7 of a second gap. That's GMB oh. Finch further down the order. Yeah. So Steve Finch is doing a brilliant job. Last time he crossed the line, he was only seven tenths of a second behind original Checkers Racing. However, that car has come into the pit lane, unfortunately. So uh, Thomas Hendry, um, I'd imagine he will lose that place. And every time we spot a battle, it always <laughs> just seems to dissipate. Uh, well, we haven't got rid of the lead battle. We haven't got rid of the lead battle, but not yet. Give it, give it 45 minutes. I think we'll very much have a, have a battle on our hands. Um, but of course, they're the only two drivers that are out there um, on well, I don't want to say on the same lap, but of course those two are on the same lap, yeah. but there is a full lap between themselves and Autotech Motorsport yeah. 2 in third place. It's completely empty. Gap down to 25.454 seconds now, uh, as again, almost exactly one second between them, but a second slower than they were the last time around. So 121.688 for the leader, 120.665 for the second place car. The gap's now 25.4 seconds. It's down another second. First or second. Just a report. So the 81 car was indeed uh, the exhaust hanging down again, and I think the scrutineers are stood there trying to make sure they do uh, a job that's hopefully going to last them to the end of the race this time, because this is at least the third time they've had to strap it back up again, which is a huge shame. 67 goes out, that's changed. Driver's still in the 81 car, so they do plan to come out. The other side, the 44, the bright orange Graves Motorsport car is in, and that is doing a refueling. So they're planning to go out, although they are looking at the front left as though they're concerned okay. of something. 
55 is in, plus another one I can see trundling down the pit lane. Uh, also, I caught up with the uh, number 11 car. The whole team was round as they were putting it on the trailer, sadly, the 11 tenths racing. And uh, basically, the situation there was that the ball joint, front left, uh, front right, sorry, ball joint, had popped out, as had the drive shaft, would you believe? So uh, that was the, the reason why they were definitely out of the race. It wasn't worth trying to fix that level of stuff. But the good news is that is fixable, ready for the next round. Can you catch up while they're on the pit wall with... Uh the, uh, with Jack Wright or Johnny Milner, see where they're feeling the pressure now as uh, gradually well, Scott Thompson is reading. I'll reading tell you them what, in. let's do it really live and, and yep. door stop him so he can't get away. Jack, I'm going to let you see if I'm live when I watch you, you can't run away. Feeling the pressure? Um, not really. We're just doing all the calculations. <laughs> um, we're just thinking, we don't know if we're, how we're going to do for fuel. Safety car would be nice, but. <laughs> We'll see. <laughs> In fairness, you guys wouldn't have seen this, but not only was Jack with a the smirk there, the team was around him just having a little chuckle. It, I mean, it's exciting for us, but it's got to be murder for you guys watching this time just sort of sneaking down. Yeah, well, unfortunately, we are getting taken about half a second out of lap, but there's not long left. John, Johnny's going in. He's been out. He's been out there first thing, so he knows where where to point the car. So fingers crossed, he might be a bit, little bit quicker. So there is another stop to come then. Yeah, everybody's got to do another stop. We've got to do three driver changes. Yes, it's not three pit stops. It's three driver changes, isn't it? Yeah. So we obviously I'm done, but Dad's going to come in and Johnny's going to go back out. We did a, a tire change in our stop, so we've got that advantage. So fingers crossed. Keep looking at them times, we might be all right. So the number 12's got a pit again as well? Yeah, everybody's got, like I say, unless you've done three pits, three driver changes, you've got you've got to do another stop. That means you pay a lot of attention to who's in which, which car as well. You do, yeah, you've got, to, you've got to keep an eye on it all and see who's done what. See, we've been talking about how much fun this is, but listening to that, where you're keeping that much attention to who's been in, how many driver changes they've done, what they've, what they've changed on their car. I walked into the gar one of the garages earlier, and they've even got the, um, uh, the graphs lined up against each other, telemetry, and they're comparing who was braking too late and too early, and it's still serious as well. Oh, that is extreme. We, we, we are that fancy. We're just jumping and going, hoping for the best, but... You have got to see who's pitted and who hasn't because you don't want to be getting yourself mixed up in a battle that's not actually yours. So, um, yeah, you just got to keep an eye on it. Well, good luck, mate. It's great fun. We're enjoying this one. Uh, and I think I, initially I didn't believe in me and when he was talking about, uh, nah, not feeling the pressure, it's fine. But he was able to back it up with yeah. justification, I think. Yeah. Now, who's going to go into the number 12 car then? Is it going to be Richard Jepp? You were talking to earlier, weren't you? So is Richard Jepp going to be the... Uh, last driver, just that Johnny Milner's going to be the last driver in number 46 when it makes its next stop. Uh, and Scott Thompson at the moment in number 12, and the gap is down to 22.4 seconds, so it's still coming down. Uh, out of the... Again, Johnny Milner against De uh, Richard Jepp. I kind of, if you think back to the start of this race, the first hour or so, Johnny was in the leading trio, wasn't he? So, I don't know. We can only speculate, discuss, uh, and wonder who it is. So, it is going to be at the end. 22.4 seconds, then, is what the gap's come down to. But another pit stop has to be made for the third driver change. Yeah, we'll wait and see exactly what happens still plenty to uh, play out we've got uh, chris down in the pit lane yeah just to sort of uh, give you the update i grabbed uh, a quick word it is richard jet that's going out yeah. uh, and so brought him the news that it's he's back against uh, mr milner but what they actually believe is that uh, they're saying well surely they're going to have to put a little bit of fuel in so they know what everybody's <laughs> doing which jack kind of suggested they kind of needed a safety car yeah. but they don't need to in the number 12 and I, th I did report live from their pit stop saying it was two full jugs that they were dumping in so they absolutely absolutely brimmed it. Yeah. They seemed absolutely relaxed and confident. They're good to go for the rest of the race. Lead down to 21.3 seconds. Can you get a feel, Chris, for when the pit stops may come? <laughs> no, not really. Half an not hour really. to go, Well, certainly uh, Richard's just stood there. He's in his race suit and it is zipped up, but they're, they're nothing more than that. So it, okay. it's not particularly imminent. 
Well, 39 minutes to go. What do you reckon, Jack? Do you think we're going to have uh, pit stops in the next few minutes or perhaps with half an hour to go? Now, you see, if I was pro-am racing, I'd leave Scott in. Um, I would do the exact opposite of what <laughs> um, of what Milner Racing are, are doing because we know Scott's quick and we know that time is it just keeps coming down. So if Milner Racing stay out, keep Scott out, keep him in, the, in that car. But we know Richard Jepp's quick as well. So too is Johnny Milner. Uh, well, exactly. Johnny Milner is... Uh, Although mainly a rally driver, he's got uh, quite a bit of racing tarmac experience, uh, to say the least. Uh, so, as uh, you, you just missed then, Jack, that um, Jack Thompson was saying that, uh, Jack Wright, I mean, was yeah. saying that he's done. So it won't be him who's going to take the car over, take the car back. 21.545 seconds is the gap after 190 laps completed, and we've got 38 and a quarter minutes remaining. Yeah, so still plenty of time for various battles to develop. I'm looking down the uh, difference column on our TSL timing screen and the gaps have come out quite substantially, really. Um, the one that obviously we're keeping a, a very close eye on is our lead gap, which continues to come down, of course, down to 21.545, as you mentioned. However, we do have our race leader just picking his way through Brooklands in towards Luffield, but he's caught up in so much traffic at the yeah. moment, he's towards right. So you almost play it by ear. If you see you're going to ca be catching a lot of traffic, dive into the pit lane because it saves you that time. Um, in the long run and, and you're not having to fight through but staying out is George Wright at the moment so he comes through uh, Woodcut and will tick another lap in the book it will be 191 laps completed for him so breaks to being with a 121 421 I said he was compromised by traffic what can Scott Thompson do by way of response can he bring that gap down ever more so he's just worked his way through and past car number 81 that is of course GM performance Darren Stapleton and um, uh, Ian Mitchell's car. That car's been very quick at various points throughout this race. It's just all come unraveled. The lead gap, 20.9 seconds. So literally exactly 20.9 seconds, 20.900. Really started to come down now. And yeah, Scott Thompson, why would you take him out of the car just yet? Unless you absolutely have to keep him in. Well, we, we've heard it from uh, Jack that they're going to... Oh, it's Scott Thompson, yes. we. It's going to be Richard Jeff, isn't it? Yeah. Who's uh, all ready to take over. He was the one who started the race. Uh, and went well. He's uh, part of the leading group. And uh, other gaps are larger than they, they were. In fact, we've got no small gaps anymore. But things may change when we have the final pit stops, but the, the third driver change. Yeah, so still driver changes to be made, but Scott Thompson, obviously he knows how that car is feeling. He knows how, mm. uh, how the tyres are feeling yeah. as well. He's got a, a feel for the traffic and who's out there. So 100% do not take him out of the car. He just <laughs> breaks the beam. Uh, oh, that, sorry, that was Ollie Fernal going through, breaking the beam, uh, 122, 188, but he is trapped in a bit of traffic at the moment. Scott Thompson, he goes through, is the lead gap into the teens? No, not just yet, 20.636. I think we had Chris down in the pit lane. Yeah, just a very quick one. This is so cool. We are, uh, basically, you've got 10A, garage 10A is where we've got the uh, number 12 car. Garage, let me just double check what number that is, 11A. <laughs> is where we've got the 46 Milner racing. They are looking into each other's garages, sort of watching <laughs> to see where, who's blinking, who's going to do what at which point. So it, it is seriously <laughs> getting tense down here. This is when you see all the mechanics get ready and walk out as if they were waiting to expect the yeah. car. And, and the car carries on through anyway. It could all go up uh, in the air. But, but, but what I love watching is that they are doing that, but they're, they're all there with smirks on their faces. And, you know, so it's still kind of got that fun element to it. Uh, the 275 car has come in and none of the team is here. So there's uh, the other teams running back going, uh, guys, your car is in. So I'm assuming their radio's not working because there's an issue and the team manager was at the barbecue behind the garages. <laughs> uh, so, but yes, it's, so it's very tense. They're watching each other and trying to work out who's going to blink first, but they are doing it with these smirks and smiles on their face, which is just a wonderful mix between the two. Yeah, absolutely. And... Uh 
Well, uh, it, it, the thing is, you've always got an almost casual sense whilst you're, you're walking around the KA paddock. It really is a brilliant community of people. However, when it comes to racing, we all love it and we all take yeah. it very, very seriously. The gap came out that time, however. Scott Thompson with a 1 minute 21.134 compared to George yeah. Wright's 120.872. But what has happened there is he's caught the traffic. George Wright was affected by a few laps ago. Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah, 275 has just broken into the top 30. Uh, and uh, it's obviously been delayed with kinds of problems. And uh, it really doesn't matter if the team weren't there to receive the car when it came in that much as far as the uh, race result goes. So the uh, leader, as Jack has just said, nearly 21 seconds <coughs> ahead as a result of uh, lapping more quickly last time around than Scott Thompson in second place in number 12. So leader through 120 points. That's a good lap, 120.383 yeah. by George Wright. Yeah, he's just worked his way into a little bit of a, a, of a pack at the moment. I don't know whether that aerodynamic assistance that he's getting is just keeping him um, lapping around consistently. Now we've got um, Ollie Fernell into the pit lane, so it will be Gordy much, I would imagine, yeah, that's going to get behind the wheel of that car to bring that car home. So the lead gap has come out ever more yeah, now. Two successive laps. Absolutely. Had, uh, yeah. yeah, lead going up rather than coming down. 21.3 seconds now that gap so Ollie Fernell uh, out of the car and yep that is Gordy much getting in you can tell by the color of, uh, of the helmets um, Chris you'll have to try and grab a word with Ollie to see how he found his first experience in a uh, in an enduro car but uh, we've uh, we're about to get a quick car back out on circuit as well because Ollie's done a brilliant job getting that car up to sixth but we've now got Gordy much getting in and yeah. Gordy definitely knows what he's doing he was lapping around about a second quicker but of course the track has evolved the tires have worn um, no fuel going in, so they're comfortable that car will get to the end. Let's see what Gordy Much can do now. He takes back to the circuit, but of course that lead margin keeps coming out. And I think that's why, because um, looking at it, George Wright, he's in that little pack, but he's getting all, all of that draft assistance. Yeah. So he's not having to yeah. punch that, a hole in the air himself, unlike Scott Thompson, who's having to do that. Yeah, Gordy Much, remember, go back to the beginning of the race in that first hour. He was one of the trio, wasn't he, that yeah. were fighting for football. If they were fighting or cruising round in uh, best uh, slipstream fashion in the early stages. So what have we got now? 120.79, 121.780. So it's gone the other way. And for the first time, the gap between the first two is into just 20 sec or under 20 seconds. It's 19.29 start again 19.929 seconds is the gap first to second yeah absolutely so we're into those teens now and scott thompson may be heading down uh, uh, heading down the, the wellington straight or down the start finish straight you'll just maybe be able to pick through the crowd and go you're who i'm chasing uh, chris who have you got down in the pit lane the person you want me it's ollie i've grabbed a word with him and he's not even put his helmet down ollie how did you find that mate yeah loved it it was great absolutely brilliant first time of racing on the track and just immediately put into the action as well uh, it's, it's a lot of fun out there it's, it is a lot of fun yeah it's brilliant Love it. i could tell that because when you were chatting to the others you were saying about it's a lot of fun you were saying oh it's frustrating because this that, and the other but there was still a smile on your face even as you were saying the frustrating bits yeah it's the racing driver in me is just like because I, I came out and i was on pace and i was matching the leader and then I overtook him once and then i don't know what i must have overheated the tires just lack of experience and then start to lose quite a bit of time i think it just overheated the fronts but yeah, great experience, you know, fighting other cars and that, to do it real life and compared to the sim is pretty mega. Were you able to take anything from the sim racing into the real world here, though? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, if I didn't sim race, there's no chance I would have been as good as I am. Was a no chance. Well, help the, the viewers and the listeners that understand what that is you were able to take, because there's some that possibly don't appreciate that necessarily. Well, just like in a sim, in real life, there are breaking points, turning points, understeer, oversteer. You learn that all from the sim. And I know from front-wheel drive cars, uh, you know, it's understeer is an absolute killer. So you've got to, you know, find what the limit is and then go over it. Otherwise, you're understeer. And, you know, a sim can absolutely teach you that. Um, yeah, it's, it's absolutely brilliant. This is why I made a key point as I want people to sort of see that absolutely it's a good place to go. If you can't afford the real world racing, don't lose heart. Get started on that and you never know what the future can hold. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You, honestly, if you do a bit of sim racing, it really, really will help. There's a there's a reason all the pros do it. You know, they jump on the racing and stuff. Keep myself, you know, up to date. But yeah, it 100% helps. Uh, sim racers around the world need to be given more opportunities because there's far better drivers than me out there. 
you know, who deserve to be driving a car or whatever out there. So hopefully someone will give someone a punt at some point and, you know, because they deserve it. It's starting to happen more and more, and it? it's starting to, to happen. Uh, have you got the bug now for the real world? Oh, well, I always will. I always have, and yeah, I just this will be, this will not be my last time. That's what I wanted to hear. Yeah, this won't be my last time. Good no man, way. good man. Congratulations, Ollie. Well done, mate. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Thank you. So there we go. It's uh, yeah. basic Ollie, as we know from uh, from YouTube, uh, Oliver for now. Uh, it was lovely to hear the human human element there, wasn't it? Absolutely. Whilst you were talking to him, we had the, the situation of both the leading cars doing exactly the same lap time yeah. three laps ago. Their times were absolutely identical to the thousandths uh, at uh, 1 minute 20.404. Since then, the pendulum has swung, well, it swung both ways, actually. It went uh, in favour of the... Uh, leading car now it's gone the other way and for the first time we've got a lap under one minute 20 we've got a 119.659 by the second place car by scott thompson as against a 120.809 by the leader george wright and the gap is therefore down to under 20 seconds it's 19.46 19.469 seconds we've got just under half an hour remaining 28 minutes and six seconds yeah so we are slowly starting to run out of time however that gap is slowly starting to come down, isn't it? So uh, George Wright's still out there. Scott Thompson's still out there. I'm guessing it's going to be whoever is first to blink will um, will, will come out on top uh, with this one. But George Wright uh, still leading the race. Scott Thompson, he should just be appearing now. Yes, he is. So he appears through Woodcut and then onto the start finish straight. Do we see him get closer still? And breaks the beam. We're into the 18 second yeah. margin. 18.645 now. So eight tenths quicker um, on the lap. Uh, prior from Scott Thompson, so he is getting closer. And, and what do we do at this point? Because you can't you can't put your money on either of them because they're just going to be. I've got a feeling with an extra pit stop in between, that will win or lose this race. Depends how the pit stop goes, doesn't it? Because there's, uh, there's there's no balance of performance. I think that was that a bit of a that was, Yeah, that was Scott Thompson locking up the rear axle, and um, you could see lots of arm twirling in the cockpit, just trying to get that car back straight again. He did just about, but that's the last thing he will have wanted. That will cost him a lot of time, and it's dropped him behind two cars as well. So um, I've got a feeling the gap may be up towards 20 seconds once again. So uh, still lots of, uh, of twists. Is in the there tail. something underneath the car? Um, I don't on the left-hand side. On um, I know there's wheels. I, was, but I, was yeah, well, there's I wasn't going to say wheels. Out of place. <laughs> well, on Scott Thompson's car, are you? Or on um, number twelve? On George. Yeah, yeah Scott, Scott Thompson's, Thompson's car. car. Okay, we'll have to wait until we get um, some footage of, uh, of that one once again. We'll, uh, he might just be working his way through and past us in a few moments' time as well. Um, so, is he going to dive into the pit lane or is he going to stay out? No, he's staying out. I can't see anything under the car. Okay, um, it's my that imagination. Looks, that looks astray. Let's have a quick look this side. No, it all looks clear uh, when he's going down the Gap's start. Gap's gone up. That, that wobble delayed him. One, it's uh, 20.5 seconds. And uh, meanwhile, we see in the pits, number 60 being attended to. That's the Tango and Crash car. Which was summed under a black and orange flag, wasn't it? Is I remember, do I remember rightly? Uh, it was, yeah, yeah. I'm not exactly sure. Um, oh, it was for the fuel, wasn't it? Uh, the right, fuel just leaking it, out yeah. of the um, out of the filler neck um, on that car. So um, obviously they're not doing too badly, having had all of that thrown at them and still being in the, uh, the position they are gone. In third place is 65, driven by Taylor Norton, and that's lapping more quickly. So to, just yep. a lap at 190 than the two leaders. He's not going to catch the two leaders because he's laps behind, but. Um, in third place, lapping more quickly than the two leaders are. Yeah, so uh, a good show of pace late on in the race from Taylor Norton. Yeah. Of course, he's trying to run away from Ian Perkins, uh, who's 28 seconds back. Then you've got uh, Jacob Fells, who's currently behind the wheel of the Treble 8 Boston Racing Machine. He's only 5.6 seconds back. And where have Gordy much? Where's Gordy come back out? Car number eight in P8. He's doing a good job, he's Gordy. So last time through, one minute 28.5. I think the tyres are slowly starting to feel the pinch, but there is, of course, traffic he's got to deal with. Back over the line comes Scott Thompson. Does he bring the gap back down once again? 20.304. So by two tenths of a second, that yeah. little mistake has not knocked his confidence at all, has it? No. I just uh, Going back to Gordy much, he's in eighth place at the moment. Seventh is a real attractive pop we have it at the end of the lap that he's just started because he's only 0.799 of a second behind uh, the car in seventh place number 112 but I'm not sure he's going to get much further than that because the gap next up the road is quite a long one it is indeed and we've 
Uh, we are running out of time. We've got less than half an hour remaining now, so less than 25 minutes, in fact. What, 24 and 24 minutes and 20 seconds still to go. And Scott Thompson is still trying to pick his way through and past a little bit of traffic. At the moment, the car he's trying to work by is the 747 Lar Motorsport machine, still with Duncan McBeth. Uh, behind the wheel is he going to do it or is he going to get forced the long way around on the running towards Brooklyn it's the long way around the short way around because he's tried to pick his way through so much traffic joining him in that little battle is the AFK racing uh, car with Tim Parsons behind the wheel who sees that uh, Scott Thompson is coming peels the car over towards the left hand side providing him just a little bit of room we've got Chris down in the pit lane I think yeah just keeping you up to date is that it's starting to get near to blink time uh, the uh, <laughs> Mr. Milner has been sent to get suited and booted. I've walked down to 10A and it looks to me as though that's a balaclava being uh, loosened, ready by Mr. Jep. So uh, we're getting close to the time where, and I think they're possibly going to blink at the same time, you know. Yeah, you could, be, could well be right. Uh, the gap, uh, the, <coughs> based on their last laps, is still, it's gone back over 20 seconds. It's 20.459 seconds uh, as they move on to their 200, 202nd lap. Yeah, three Amigos into the pit lane as well. So Phil Hinson, uh, from what I remember, is behind the wheel. We'll have a quick look down at the timing screen. It's David Drinkwater, pardon me. So David Drinkwater, who started that car, is behind the wheel. So I'm guessing they have done uh, a, number, a fair number of pit stops now. Let's have a quick look. Three Amigos over. We go to three. Is this going to be a driver change? Left of the car in gear whilst he takes his foot off the clutch. The car jumps forward. So a quick, a quick splash and dash by the looks of it. No, fuel's been called off. Back out onto the circuit goes the number 60 uh, Tango and Crash car. The lead margin, uh, yeah, 20.459. So it's come out by around mm. about a tenth and a half um, going the way of George Wright. George Wright breaks the beam there all on his own now. He doesn't have aerodynamic assistance from the cars around him. So a 2 minute 21.179. I think that's almost identical to what he does that did the lap prior it is what of scott thompson he's still being chased by jacob fells he posts a one minute 20.564 uh -huh. we're <laughs> back into the teens 19.844 the lead margin but he's got to do it consistently yeah it, the, the, the alternate laps he won't do no absolutely we've still got richard jepp still to get in but then we've also got johnny mill there and we know that both of those are very very quick peddlers So 19.8 seconds is the gap, first to second. But it's got to come down into the, well, 18, 17, 16, 15, I think, uh, seconds gap, with 21 minutes and 40 seconds remaining. Race ends, as I'm sure everybody knows, first time the leader crosses the line uh, after the five hours have been completed. Yeah, so George Wright. Um, he's slowly losing that time, but as, uh, as Chris alluded to down in the pit lane, we've got um, pit stops still to be made and yeah. they're going to wait and see exactly what you do. If you're George Wright and you see you're approaching cars, jump into the pit lane. If you're Scott Thompson and you see you're approaching cars, which I think he will be doing, I'd imagine he will mm. do the same. But George Wright, what a response. A 1 minute 20.469. That's Good. exactly the response he would have wanted. Into the pit lane comes car number 64. However, staying out there is Scott Thompson. What does he do um, in regards to a lap time? A 1 minute 20.320. The gap has come down by another tenth of a second. Car number 64 in the pit lane. That's being uh, driven by Christopher Buckley. So presumably he will hand back over to um, Adam Nakar. But we've still got pit stops to be made. We've still got driver changes. Maybe splash and dash. It, it's all up in the air. It really is. And it's then whether um, certain teams change uh, front left tyres or, or some leave them alone. Jacob Fells is uh, lapping under the 120 mark. He's lapping quicker than the leaders. Uh, Jacob Fells in fifth place, the Boston racing car. Yeah, and of course, he was being chased by Gordy Mudge, but uh, Gordy is, uh, what, eight tenths of a second away from uh, uh, from Jacob Fell's lap time last time. Too. Yeah. So he's um, sat in an opening gap, he's Gordy, because the car behind with a 1 minute 21.6, the car in front with a 119.8, and him on a 120.9, I think it was 120.6 at the time. However, we've just had a personal fastest lap of the race and a lap posted that's only, what, eight tenths or eight hundreds away from the fastest overall lap of the race that's by nathan brown in the shine automotive car a 119.400 that's one and a half seconds quicker than the car up the road and like i say only eight hundredths of a second away from being the fastest overall lap of the race 
Right, the lead has gone through. Last lap of 121.045. What are we going to get? There we are, 120.366. So the gap's down to 19.016 seconds now, first to second. Milner Racing still leading the way, but 19 seconds, that gap has got... We've been slowly watching this come down from 40 seconds. It's been brilliant to watch. Um, who else do we have out there that's lapping very quickly indeed? Nobody as of yet that springs to mind, apart from Nathan Brown. Of course, we mentioned him uh, on the lap prior. Car number 65, currently sat in P3. That's Taylor Norton. He's just working his way through Cops Corner. And posted to 1 minute 21.299. So he's losing a little bit of time now uh, to a couple of cars behind, but I don't think it's anything he sort of specifically needs to worry about. We're within 20 minutes of the end of this race mm -hmm. and our top two still yet to dive into the pit lane. Yes, uh, leaving it to the very end. It is, as uh, I think Chris and you both been saying, it's who blinks first, this. Um, the pit stop lucky to be the determinant factor in who wins the race. Of course, there'll always be cars going ahead of you down the pit lanes, slower than you want it to be. Of course, there is a pit lane speed limit, but the pit entrance road doesn't have a limit applied up to a certain point. And the pedestrian road, likewise, yeah, beyond a certain point. I just saw there Scott Thompson trying to um, uh, let the cars know up the road that he wants to get through and fast because he lost half a second on that lap. 19.5 uh, seconds yeah. now the lead margin with a 121.455 for Scott Thompson. George Wright with a 120.944. Yeah. He was flashing the lights desperately just to try and get the uh, uh, the car up the road out of the way. Taylor Norton currently sat in third place. He's, uh, again, just floating in exactly the barrier he needs to do to hold on to what is third place at the moment. But 19 and a half seconds, two cars yet to pit, 17 and a half minutes still to go. It's, it's anyone's guess. The momentum's with George Wright, but it just takes one small mistake. Chris, what's the body language of the pits of the two teams? Are they, going to ha are they getting ready for a pit stop now? 3.33 is coming down the pit lane. Yeah, Ian that's, Perkins. That's in fourth place. So 3.33 making its final stop. This is uh, going to go back to Kiritis, isn't it? Costa Kiritis. Uh, yeah, I'd imagine Costa will uh, jump back in that car. So going through is George Wright, and I will await the arrival of Scott Thompson, who should be the next car that appears. Yes, he is. So Scott Thompson is staying out. So too is George Wright. We'll have to wait and see what um, Chris reports back and, and see what he says. But of course, triple three going in. That will promote Gordy much potentially into the top four now. So pro -Am Racing could have two cars in the top four, Chris. Well, I looks to me as though the uh, the leader is going to be in next time round because they're right. out with a, just a little splash of fuel and a tyre that they looks like they're going to be changing. So they're certainly ready. Both drivers have been ready with their helmets on and hands devices all ready to go for about the last two laps. So they're pushing to the limits, but uh, there's nothing that's coming over the line from the garage for the Pro-Am race in the number 12 that sat there in second. And that's what they were forecasting, is that they're going to be able to have a quicker pit stop without the need to do the splash and dash. Right, there's a note on the screen now. Please remember that you must have at least three driver changes. So uh, obviously the uh, clerk of the course getting a bit concerned that some cars haven't yet made that third driver change, but they're making them now. We, we, we've just seen 3.33 come in and the, I think the leader uh, and second place cars both uh, will be in very soon indeed if uh, not even at the end of this lap no, so carrying on on one more is george wright with a one minute 20.887 so doing exactly what he needs to do staying out is scott thompson as well he's got a little bit of traffic by way of the number six njm racing machine with um uh, david murphitt behind the wheel across the line the gap remains at around about 19 seconds yeah. this time two tenths to the good of scott thompson it's ebbing and flowing and yeah i think the race director slightly worried that a few drivers haven't necessarily um, uh, jumped in the car for the requisite amount of time yeah the gap not yet into the 18s it's 19.007 yeah so there's still uh, quite a sizable margin but of course we heard from Chris and he said Milner Racing may be taking a splash and dash and that they can't touch the car whilst that's going on no. that could be the difference between them having a quick a quick stop Taylor Norton into the pits yes. sorry. third place car into the pits yeah so Taylor Norton rumbling down the pit lane he comes to a stop both doors open no fuel going in however they were they did bring a jack with them i think yes. they were going to change a tire potentially and what's our race leader going to do he's pulling over towards the right hand side yeah. but no carries on stays out george wright 
um, out for another lap. What can he do in terms of lap time, Chris? Well, the 65 car, it's the jacked up the rear and they're, they're just sort of like spinning around that rear right. So they were obviously, uh, sorry, rear left. They were obviously unhappy with something. It's now been dropped down. Nothing's happened. They were just spinning it to make sure everything was okay. And so it's just the driver change is happening and they'll be pushing that back shortly. So I'm just looking at the gap as both our top two stay out. 18.736, so it's come down by another three tenths of a second. Scott Thompson, he's doing everything he can to close that gap. But like I say, I think this will be won or lost in the bit lane. <laughs> right, back into the race goes the number 65 car. And I think the reason they were looking, it just drove past us there, and it's quite a lot of noise, and that's not the first car we've heard, or team we've heard uh, reporting that, is it? With the bearing or something like that. Yeah, that's right. 18.7 seconds the gap I think the pendulum has swung in favor of the leader to be able to hang on to the lead now even though they both have got to make a pit stop for first and second place cars I did just see I don't know whether it was uh, maybe a, a slight reflection on the side of the car but it looked like when the number 46 mil air car of George Wright lent into the corner I, I'm guessing it was but it looked like there was just a bit of bodywork sort of flying around oh. but the, uh, the, this part of the circuit he, he was it could have just been the, the shadow flicking its way through some of the grandstands now right if you're Scott Thompson I would dive into the pit lane because look at the traffic he's approaching up the road already through and past this George Wright he's already gone through and broken the beam to place at 1 minute 20.986 what of uh, Scott Thompson he stays out so yeah. he's got to try and pick his way through all of that traffic one of those is the treble three machine of course it's got uh, Costa Critsis behind the wheel and uh, Costa uh, Critsis pardon me is uh, doing everything he needs to do in sixth place because he's found himself a nice bit of empty track so to speak yeah so surely next time around they're going to be coming in to make their final driver change stops and interestingly, for the uh, number 12 car, they have now bought a jack and uh, tyre out. But of course, what we've seen with some of these stops is that they are able to make that change while they're still uh, strapping the, 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 the new they driver that. in. That's right. It's, yeah. it's the fuel, refueling the car with the driver in the car. Because they literally cannot touch anything. They can't do anything to the car whilst they're refueling. So that is a definite loss of time by doing that. So, George Wright's last lap was a 120.986, 119.6 for Scott Thompson. 17.39 seconds is the gap. <laughs> Crikey. 11 and three quarter minutes remain on the clock. I'm just looking as well. He's still trapped there, is uh, Scott Thompson, isn't he? He can't quite work his way through. However, the gap has been coming down. Breaks the beam there, still trying to work his way through and past Costa Critis. And once the gap's update, 17.371 of a second, it's Much barely come down. Yeah. Very, very uh, minute margin there. So and there's still uh, little bits of time to be found. We've now got 11 minutes of the race remaining. Both our top two still yet to pit. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, we've certainly had some interest and excitement and. Uh, it's not yet resolved itself, but it's been a fascinating contest, and uh, they're always good fun. Oh, and that's a spin by number 14. Which is... That's Usher Motorsport, isn't it? That's uh, Philip Usher behind the wheel. It's on that screen there in uh, yeah, the second say, place. Yeah, I was going to say, it's yeah. a chance of a decent result. I've not really gone out of the window with that spin because it was uh, away from a decent result anyway. Right, so through goes 46, not visiting the pits this time. So George Wright staying out there. We're running out of time, really, aren't we? With 10 yeah. minutes still to go. And um, what about Scott Thompson? He stays out as well. But of course, when George Wright arrived, at the uh, uh, spinning Philip Usher. That might have been covered by a localized yeah. yellows. You'd, yeah. you'd have thought so. So has that cost him a bit of time? 17.2 seconds. So still come down, but not by much. Two tenths of a second, really, isn't yeah. it? So there's not too much there. Chris, do you have any news from the pit lane in terms of what, uh, what it's looking like for any of our top two? Well, they're, they're certainly stood here ready. We, I'm sort of trying to stand between the two. Uh, I feel like I should have a hard hat on something. Both drivers, <laughs> helmets, hands, devices. Uh, we've got uh, worn 
you know, slightly worn tyres going on for both of them onto that front left, just to make sure that uh, neither of them's going to be vulnerable to the other one. But like I say, it's just this this splash and dash. It's it's probably about three inches, maybe uh, four four inches, maybe of fuel in the uh, in the dump jug. That's all that is sat there that's going to be dropped down. So it's not going to take very long, and possibly not as long as the pro-am racing needed to take is my gut instinct i think they'll just about still have the have the nod mm. so we're talking about the pro-am racing car number 12 aren't we that needs a splash and dash. yeah um, i guess all will be revealed because we've now got nine minutes remaining and still a fair few cars yet to pit. It's obviously the message has been displayed we did have one i thought no just peeling out of the way that was kind of a 14 philip busher obviously after that spin through goes george right through goes scott thompson what's the gap this time 17.2 seconds so it's come out it's by a whole a tenth bit. of a second yeah. or, or not even that sort of five uh, thousandths of a second it's sort of 50 thousandths of a second pardon me it's come out however we've still got reese kello out there and he's lapping fairly consistently as well gordy much what about his progress one minute 20.430 he set last time through and he's holding on to fourth place quite well. So Pro-Am have got two cars in the top four. Have they got another stop? No, they haven't got another no, stop to make, no, have no. they? So they are all right. It's just that they're laps behind. So when the leading cars do make their stop, they're going to retain the, the, the first two places, aren't they? They're not going to lose being in the first two places. 46 and 12, probably still in that order. So we'll wait and see what happens of course Gordy much he's on uh, he's four laps down and yeah. completed 208 laps so there's no major improvement for me he, can, he can't get on to no. the uh, uh, I don't know actually 36 seconds it would take something rather monumental I don't think Gordy will be able to get that car onto yeah. the podium unfortunately but P4 is a brilliant result nonetheless um, Scott Thompson I'd imagine he will stay out um, I think the race leader has already gone through. Yes, he, he has. has and posted yes. a 1 minute 20.627. Scott Thompson still running around with Cross, uh, Costa Critis. And they break the beam. What's the time? A 1 minute 20.598. So it's come down by, again, a whole 30 well, thousandths of a second. Yeah, tiny reduction. Seven minutes and 14 seconds remain. To the pit lane comes car number six that's njm racing with david murfitt behind the wheel they've already completed their requisite number of uh, of pit stops running slightly wide there was uh, car number 12 of scott thompson so he's just trying to work his way through and past the tango and crash uh, dagenham dustbin winning car but also fo still following in the wheel tracks of um, costa critis i can't see exactly why um, the NJM racing car of David Murphy will have come into the pit lane because they have already done their driver swaps. Maybe it's for a quick splash and dash to make sure that car yep. gets to the end with six and a half minutes remaining. Go on, Chris. Yeah, they're putting some fuel in. Good stuff. So we've got uh, George Wright's back over the line. So he breaks the beam with a 1 minute 20.213. He's only getting quicker. Um, of course, still a pit stop to be made. And that car could be running slightly lower on fuel now as well if they are considering a splash and dash however look at the traffic scott thompson has got to get through you would just dive into the pits and accept you that you're not so, going to get through you? Yes. You? yeah yeah oh and another little twist to report down here the Go dump on. jug of fuel has disappeared from the front of the garage for our race leader i think they believe that they can now get to the end without any kind of fuel so just that um uh, just the driver change presumably to, to be done uh yeah and the tire change they're certainly there that could well be, of course, getting ready. So they'll have a look at I it and see whether it needs to a, be done. I don't think they would do a tyre change. I wouldn't five and a half minutes no, now. No. Unless the tyre is really desperately dangerous, but I uh, can't see it being that. 17.6 seconds then, first to second. They're coming in this time. Right. We'll Certainly the, uh, the number 12 Pro-Am is, and uh, they're there with the jack and the tyre ready. But no, not the jug. They never had the jug for the number 12. That was the uh, the, the race oh, leader 46. That's the one that have taken it away um, and uh, feel they don't need it. Right. But it does look race like leader into the pit lane, Chris, heading towards you. Ah, OK, so uh, both. both of them are coming in on exactly the same lap then. So uh, that makes complete sense. So the footage, I'm sure we'll switch to that. Yes, as they come. Yes, we've yep. got, the, got the picture showing it. You tell us about it. Into the pit lane comes number 12. 
the, the jug is back out, so they are going fuel. It was a little bit of a dummy thrown there just to sort of tease us all and get excited. I think they knew full well I was going to sort of uh, do something about that. The car stops. They undo the netting on the side, and out comes the, uh, the driver. Ooh, eventually, yep, George is uh, <laughs> sort of unceremoniously thrown. The fuel is in, and uh, the fuel is dumping down. In comes the number 12 car behind me. So they are out. They are looking at the tyre. Do they need to change it? The driver is in. They're deciding no, as you guys forecast. They're going, no, that's fine. I've got to tell you, it looks terrible, the tyre that's on there. But they feel <laughs> that it's going to last this little bit of time. Now we've got getting back into the car is John Milner. And uh, that is going to be so close between these guys. The number 46 car. Uh, Milner racing, Johnny Milner being strapped back in again. Equally, the number 12 is being strapped in. The doors are closing. No, oh, not quite ready. They've got not got the netting on. There goes the door. Push backwards. There goes the doors on the number 12, and they go out. Not quite changed positions, but incredibly close here. What a fabulous pit stops by both the teams there. Yes, they're very good pit stops indeed, and the, the gap has come right down, hasn't it? First to second. Is that doesn't? That's not a. Uh, 18 second gap. No, of course, uh, Milner racing and um, Johnny Milner having to take uh, that extra bit of fuel has cost yes. them a, a lot of time indeed. When they came into the pit lane, the gap was 13 seconds. It really did start to dissipate over those final couple of laps. We've got three minutes remaining. Let's have a look. Johnny Milner is heading onto the Wellington straight. You can't quite see Richard Jepp as of yet. So I think this is super, super close, but I think it's just beyond the realms of possibility when it comes to this. A quick flash of the indicator shown from Autotech Motorsport 1 to let Autotech Motorsport 2 um, know which way they are going to go. Richard Jepp is there. You can see him in the background coming down the Wellington straight. Over the crest he will go before he jumps on the brakes, flicks the car in, lifting that inside rear wheel. Johnny Milner, he can't afford to lift off really because Richard Jepp's quick and the pair of them have led the race at two separate points for a a number of occasions really haven't they there's one car between the leader and the second place car of course neither of them lost their places in the race they remained first and second the same order you saw it on the screen uh, and through wood therefore goes uh, number 12 now being driven uh, by Richard Jett and leading him what's the gap that time through two seconds two just 2.8 seconds yeah absolutely after nothing five at all. hours of racing absolutely nothing at all especially with only what two minutes and 10 seconds already but yeah 2.8 seconds after five hours of running around we've had a safety car period we've had um, all kinds of action on circuit but you're gonna say they're closing up um, are they uh, 2.8 that was the gap last time how many more laps are we going to get out of this so I got just we'll under two minutes to go we'll so one more lap one more lap after this do you reckon I think depending on what time they get to the line we could be going on to the final lap of the race this time yeah uh, that's what I, I, I suspect yeah I don't know they're going to get another one in after this so at the moment we're not watching the uh, two cars we need to see 46 and 12 uh, that's the battle for the lead where's it gone just spotted as well in the MSV TV um, uh, YouTube uh, chat. <laughs> they're rating the uh, uh, they're rating the race on 10 out of 10 and, uh, or out of 10. I, I'm going to put it in the 20s and 30s. It's been a brilliant race from right, start to end, are. and we are going yep. to go on to the final lap of the race. Yep. It is George Wright that is still leading the way. What about Richard Jeb? Not George Wright. It's Johnny Milner. Johnny what Milner, about yeah. Richard Jeb? They break the beam. 2.8 seconds, and this time it's four seconds. So he's just got, got to last one more Sorry. lap now. Does Johnny Milner? Yeah, well, uh, Johnny on tarmac. Well, he obviously quite a lot of the running he's done is on tarmac. So uh, up out of Cops Corner into Maggots and on the brakes for locking up. Oh, a bit of a wobble there. Car flicked briefly sideways, put on the opposite lock, straightened it out and uh, keeps going through Beckett's. Now onto the Wellington Strait. No real groups of traffic to have to worry about. One car ahead of him, is that 96 but, or 95? But the uh, leader coming down to Brooklands for the final time, Jack, there you are. Yeah, in towards Brooklands. Uh, look out the 
uh, the window of the commentary box and through Brooklands in towards Luffield for the final time goes the race leader Johnny Milner. Richard Jeff is still doing everything he can, but it's just not quite there. So we'll wait and see uh, what he can do coming through the final corner. Too little, too late, but Pro-Am Racing did everything they could. However, it was no match for Milner Racing through the final corner after five hours comes Johnny Milner to take the win here at Silverstone. Round one of the Enduro KA series goes the way of Milner Racing um, as well as Johnny Milner. Car number 46 shared with George Wright and Jack Wright at the line. Um, Richard Jepp was only able to uh, hold that gap to, what, 4.8 seconds. But yeah, after five hours of racing, 4.8 seconds is absolutely nothing. Shared that car with um, Will Hilliard and uh, Scott Thompson. And finishing in what will be third place is Reese Kello. He should just be working his way through the final corner um, in a few moments' time. Costa Kriitsis, after starting in 18th place, ended up uh, finishing that car in sixth. I did want to keep note of car number 96. Of course, they started from the pit lane. And at the moment, they've just taken the chequered flag in 19th place. That is a brilliant performance good, from those. Good effort. Yeah, yeah. From those guys, 100%. Yeah. Porsche Carrera Motorsport have done a, uh, a, a mega job. And um, Gordy Much, he should just be working his way through the final corners. Uh, now, of course, he shared that car with um, Ollie Fernal and Darren Midgley. That car should come across the line and finish in fourth place, of course. Gordy Much knows what he's doing. Ollie Fernal in his debut race, um, finishing fourth place. Pro-Am, two cars inside the top four. They've got a lot to be proud of. Uh, absolutely. So, Gordy Much then in the number eight Pro-Am car takes, will be taking fourth place. But uh, Johnny Milner winning then by for Milner Racing by 4.883 seconds. So, a close Silverstone type finish, I think we can call absolutely. that. Absolutely. After five hours, 100%. Given it was a five hour race, yes. Yes, and then um, everyone thereafter was a minimum of, uh, of two laps down. So, Reese Kello and Autotech Motorsport 2 finishing in third. Pro Am Racing, the second of the two cars driven by Gordy Much to the line, uh, finished uh, two laps down in fourth place. Fifth place was Catastrophe Racing car 112, three laps down. Then it was uh, Kahuna's race team in sixth. Three Amigos in seventh. Wingat Racing in eighth. Shine Automotive in ninth. And rounding out the top 10 was Boston Racing four laps down in the treble eight machine. Hopefully we can run you through the rest of the order as yeah. we get it um, on the live stream. But what a fabulous race uh, that was from the Enduro KA series. And that really just sets the tone for the rest of the year because yeah. that is what every single race is like in the MSV Track Days Enduro KA series. Well, excellent race. And uh, w there will be podium for this. So Absolutely. Uh, Chris will be presiding over that. There's the rest of the order. Yeah, so Cash Strapped Racing finishing in 11th place. Uh, then it is AFK Racing in 12th, KNF Racing in 13th, and uh, Glory Car finishing in uh, 14th place. The final of the cars finishing four laps down. La Motorsport finished in 15th, KM Racing in 16th, Calamity crossed the line to finish in 17th place. Autotech Motorsport crossed the line to finish in 18th place. 19th went the way of Porsche Carrera Motorsport, of course. The car that started with a standing start from the pit lane. Brilliant recovery from 35th up to 19th. And Burton Power Racing finished in 20th place, rounding out what's left of your top 20. 21st went the way of WKD Motorsport. GB, uh, GMB Finch Racing finished in 22nd. Orca Sport crossed the line in 23rd. GM Performance, 24th. Semprini Racing in 25th, followed then by Original Checkers Racing, Tango and Crash, Graves Motorsport, NJM Racing, and Team Lifeline round out your top 30. And then I think it was uh, NJM PDCs. Yes, it was NJM PDCs crossing, crossing the line in 31st, followed then by Osho Motorsport, Sukuru Racing, the final of the finish. Uh, no, Sukuru Racing finished in 33rd. LBR Performance Tuning, the final of the finishes, 38 laps down in 34th place and 11 tenths racing. The only retirement out of all of that, and we saw that car with yeah. the lower control arm um, failure, but um, one car missing with just a, a mechanical failure like that. It's not like it, it's been badly looked after or anything. And on the screen, you can see a great view there of yeah. all the cars that have finished the race. And as Jack has just said, almost all the cars that started did finish the race with a colorful collection of cars or KAs. Uh, and Chris, when you've uh, got the people uh, you need for the podium. I think we have a bit of an announcement to make. Johnny Milner, on my timing, he's got a two lap penalty which demotes him down into second place. So we may uh -huh. see Scott Thompson on the top step of the podium um, with Pro-Am Racing. So whatever's gone on there, on one timing screen, no, they're both the same now. I think Scott Thompson has taken the win. That's Pro-Am Racing 1-4. 
We'll we'll leave Chris to, to you, deliver you, that you news. You can sort that one out, Chris. <laughs> we'll leave Chris to deliver you, you that You brought news. it up. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I, I did that yesterday when I was uh, speaking to um, Josh Law and told him he'd got a, a penalty. Yeah. He was he was least impressed. The, the, the fact the fact that uh, the screen the, the TSL screen, which would only does it on official information received, uh, shows that uh, number seventy yep. number twelve I mean, uh, was the winner. Uh, the gap between them was two laps. Yeah, and that makes perfect sense with yeah. that two-lap penalty. So, such a shame to see it, see it come to that, especially uh, after the chequered flag, which is uh, which is a shame. But um, I think it makes the co our commentary actually better because we talk about it as it was on the track. Uh, disappointing yeah. that at the end of it all. If we knew uh, there was a two-lap two penalty, we wouldn't have had much to talk about, well, would we? Well, really? no, we're just saying. Yeah, every time we say they are first and second, but one of them is two has a two-lap penalty. So it's not really what you see. You saw what you saw, and uh, it doesn't reflect in the podium and we'll wait and see as to what happens I'm looking up to the podium I can see crystals yes. up there and of course brilliant footage showing the BRDC of course Silverstone the home of the BRDC and a, a brilliant facility it is Chris you're yeah on the just just quickly updating you as we're waiting for these cats to be herded you know what it's like is that uh, the reason for that two lap penalty was that last splash and dash that was done is that uh, there was goggles missing I saw, that at, oh. I saw yeah. that at the time I saw that at the time it was uh, yeah the guy so it was a last minute thing yeah, yeah. he had his um, had, had his goggles pretty much on his forehead and then was shouted out for it by the team saying get them down but of course um, it's yeah. heartbreak that isn't it it is it is and, and so being that person if you if you have forgotten your goggles you'd feel so so guilty and it'd be I'd imagine a rather quiet drive home in the Milner Racing Bun. <laughs> but um, honestly, finishing in second place, Johnny Milner, they gave it absolutely everything all race. They've got a lot to, to be proud of as well. So, um, yeah, that's uh, it's quite a nice way to close out a weekend, really, isn't it? Well, it, it is and it isn't. It's, it's, a, it's a disappointment when yeah. one driver for a, a, it has to be pe penalised in some way. Uh, from our point of view, we, it, it didn't happen. F so yeah. uh, it yeah, wasn't yeah. that we were keeping it from people listening yeah. because... Uh, it was only at the very end there that it was uh, uh, the offence was committed, uh, and it is important, obviously, that drivers wear goggles and that the netting is in place, which it was, but the goggles weren't. So, Chris, how are you doing with your? podium party i think we're getting close now we just need the 65 uh, car drivers rounded up stuart garland and his team are down there trying to get everybody nearly there ah here we go so we've got them now so they're going to be uh, behind us and we'll announce them up After all this fast driving. I'll tell you what, I am glad it was you rather than one of like the mechanics Jeez. or something. I am. <laughs> I wish you were one of them fuckers, I'll have somebody to blame then. Well, exactly, that's why it's better. <laughs> Oops, sorry, mate. <laughs> A nightmare. Yeah, we're yeah, just, just establishing there as well. <laughs> the, uh, I, I think it's uh, a, a relief in some kind of way is that uh, it was actually Jack Wright was the one that should have had the goggles down. So at least it's not a mechanic. So we've grasped him up. We've grasped him up. <laughs> I think you did it yourself, mate. Come on, come on. Uh, so they they were absolutely gutted after all that hard work, and it just came down to those tiny margins. Let me just have a quick look to see whether we got the uh, third place team up here yet. Right, let's get this podium underway. After what was five hours of incredible racing, it came down to just very little in those final few laps. That incredible splash and dash at the end that really bunched them back together even more. In third place after those five hours, it is the number 65 car with Taylor Norton, Reese Kello, Toby Owen, Autosec Motorsport 2. <laughs> Go on, guys, up on the third step. Up you go. In second place after that nightmare scenario with George Wright, Jack Wright, Johnny Milner, it's the 46 car of Milner Racing. <laughs> so there's Jack there with his dad and his uh, father-in-law the other side of him ready to beat him up. <laughs> 
So that means the victory goes. They were hunting them down for lap after lap. It is with Will Hilliard, Scott Thompson, Richard Jepp, number 12, Pro-Am Racing. <laughs> Congratulations, guys. Pick up your trophies and raise them up for the great photographs. And then as soon as you've, we've got the photographs, I'll jump in with a few words. Yeah, squeeze in. Make sure everybody's able to get the, uh, the uh, photographs with the mixed emotions, I'm sure. Right, stay there, guys. Don't go anywhere other than uh, give me space to jump up. Oh, that's a long way up. <laughs> uh, right, Scott, yes. I'm going to start with you because that was what we were loving watching. I mean, you were hunting, hunting, hunting. Were you aware that that time was coming down? Yeah, I've got, I've got Ben, our engineer on the radio, who's telling me what was going on. And yeah, it was... But we, we knew that they had to put some fuel in, so we knew it was going to be close. And I was just trying to get within at least 10, 10, 8, 10 seconds before the stop. Um, the front, we didn't do a tyre change. They did. They did their front left tyre. We didn't. So the, it was great. The fuel was coming down so we could pick some pace like that. But the front left tyre was hanging on for dear life. And we were contemplating, do we swap it the last stop? Do we not? So we pushed it right to the end. Um, and we had a look and we made the decision, just send them out and get that last two laps done. And... But I feel for the boys, like they were flying today. Um, and to do, to do a silly penalty like that and lose it that way, you don't wish it on anyone. We wouldn't want that either. So, you know, on to the next one. I'm sure they'll be uh, in front of us again and we'll be hunting them down again. So hopefully we can put a show on again. I love it. Wonderful, wonderful sentiments. Uh, and uh, Will, Will Hillard, I mean, you were there sort of having to sort of fight your bit, watch everybody else. I mean, that's the beauty of this racing is that you have fun in the car and outside watching the diamond. Yeah, I'm not sure which one I prefer, to be <laughs> honest. <laughs> it's just so stressful in the garage, waiting at the, you know, watching that final stint. But uh, yeah, commiserations to the Milner boys, they drove really well today. I was sitting in that toe in that stint and just thinking, you know, this is all going to come down to that final stop, and it did. So. And I mean, Richard, uh, we were speaking to you before, and it was that final one. But I mean, were you getting more and more aware that it was it more about the pit stop because you were literally going to have a couple of laps? There's not much you can do in that, is there? Yeah, there was that. And obviously, Scott was saying about the, the front left. We were suffering that last sort of half an hour. Um, we were biting away at the time, and then it sort of leveled out a little bit. It just, just couldn't quite get in that window. We, like we said, we needed they needed the fuel, but we couldn't quite get there. But Reservations to the guys. They, they drove brilliantly today to take it on a penalty. is a bit of a sort of a sour one, but yeah, we, we still come away with the win. We drove well today. So well done. Congratulations to our victors. I'm nervously stepping down to step number two. Um, Jack, I, <laughs> I think I am going to start with you. I'm going to be really brave. I'm going to like rip off that band aid and go with it. I mean, Johnny, in all honesty, I mean, it's, it's part of the excitement of this. It's super frustrating, but there's so much drama, isn't there, always? Oh, we to, we're right to the end, yes. Yeah, no, it was one of them things. I mean, I've, you, obviously, with me rallying, we've had bigger disappointments than this, and um, I won't remind him ever again every time I see him <laughs> and every time I WhatsApp him. We have a WhatsApp group. Um, yeah, so I think he might have a bit of jibbing yet, but eh, one of them things. Just that's life. Well done to Pro Am, but uh, we won on the track, but not uh, not to be. But yeah, anyway, that's move on to the next one. It is, and I mean, Jack, I, <laughs> I'm nervous to speak to you as well, but I mean, it is devastating. But you, there's a lot to take away from it as well, surely. Of course, there is. Yeah, um, I'm a bit 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 upset compared to our other two interviews we've had today, Hello. but. Yeah, um, unfortunately, these things happen. We had one last year, and it was the only one we had, so fingers crossed that's us done for the year, and we can try and uh, go for that top spot like, what we just missed out on. Absolutely, and uh, Papa right, George. Uh, I mean, we were, we were loving that when you were in the car, is that you must have been aware you were being hunted down as well, just about half a second to a second a lap. Yeah, it was very similar to Snetterton. Um, <clears throat> we had the same scenario where we were a lap ahead, and Pro-Am were just hunting us down. <laughs> Thankfully, it was the, them who had the bad luck because they just about ran out of fuel. So we pipped them this time, but um, stuff happens and I won't hold it against him. But if anybody's got a big house, I do have a son up for adoption. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, though, guys. A brilliant second place. Uh, and whew, I got away with that one, didn't I? Uh, right, so we move on to the 65 car. Uh, Autotech Motorsport 2. Reese, I did speak to you when you jumped out sweating from the heating being on. And, and we really felt that there was a chance that podium. And you got it. Yeah, we're happy with everyone. Everyone drove really well. The team, flawless. Um, we had a bit of a bearing issue towards the end. It was definitely in the car, but we, we pushed on for it. It, was, it went really well. It was, everyone drove perfectly. Yeah, I think there was a, there was a couple of cars that had a, an issue with that uh, that rear uh, bearing because we heard a couple of them noisy. Is that a common issue? 
Uh, I imagine so. It's just constant turning right, so yeah. it's a lot. It puts a lot of pressure on that side of the car. So I've yeah, just happy, just really happy about how today went. Really. No, well, so you should be. So you should be, uh, Toby. Um, I mean, <laughs> it was just a fraught race. I mean, from the get go, we had sort of ten fighting it out as if it was a sprint race, uh, and it was still sort of like ebbing and flowing. And you've really got to interpret the times, haven't you? Yeah, I mean, being part of that leading group in the early stages, it was so much fun. I mean, I love this series. It, it, is, it puts a smile on my face getting into these cars. It's been a long winter. Um, really good to be back, really good to be back on the podium as well. Um, and yeah, Taylor and, and Reese drove really well. Uh, agreed, Taylor, uh, over to you. I mean, we were loving that. At one stage, I think it was when you first jumped in the car, is that we could see that there was, for that third place, there was three cars in the shout, and you just made sure, no, no, there was one. Yeah, I just um, tried to be as consistent as I can, put in the laps and uh, bring it home in one piece. Um, just pass cars every time they approached, uh, you know, as I approached them. And yeah, just, uh, I don't know, just drove as fast as I can. <laughs> simple as that. You make it sound simple. I mean, and, and I think I've heard people before tell me that you don't necessarily always know who it is. You just literally race the car that is in front of you. It doesn't matter who it is and, and get past them as quick as they are and find out who it was after. Yeah, you just have to approach everyone with the same approach, really, and just try and overtake them, and that's it. Uh, you're going forward. Well, absolutely awesome. Listen, let's have a massive round of applause for your top three in the opening Enduro KA race of 2024. We'll see you at the next round. Gents, up in the commentary box, I'll hand back to you. Great stuff. Cheers, Chris. Yeah, great to hear from some of our drivers as well. And um, yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure to uh, to bring you all of the action uh, this weekend, albeit I was in the pit lane yesterday in the, in the commentary box today. And I've got to say, I've thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed them both. So um, at least for myself, I, I wish you a safe journey home. But Ian, I, I think you've got a bit of news regarding next weekend. Here, well, you? news, it's uh, just looking ahead to next week ahead to next weekend uh, the Vidji Sports Car Club have their spring starter meeting uh, and that offers some great racing cars of uh, the 1920s 30s 40s and 50s uh, are catered for by the Vidji Sports Car Club rather different from what we've seen today uh, but none the worse for that it's some great racing some of them will be down at Goodwood today I suppose this weekend so uh, try and make a date in your diary if you can to see something different uh, a regular event at Silverstone in April the uh, Vidji Sports Car Club spring meeting so drive home carefully everybody we'd like to see you back at silverstone very soon please uh, and i uh, hope you've enjoyed today uh, if you've been watching on the stream then uh, hope that's whetted your appetite for coming to uh, silverstone and seeing the racing live so uh, it's goodbye from me and goodbye from me and chris hopefully a quick goodbye from you as well <laughs>